Today we have a story time of a Gen Z kid who fakes being disabled for attention and clout. This kid literally pretends to be completely disabled from the waist down, but he gets exposed in a really funny and just awkward manner that I know you'll enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump right into the story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Gerald. So anyways, Gerald was starting the eighth grade and every single year in his school, there were new kids that would come in and, uh, you know, you're always supposed to give special attention and make sure that the new kids felt good at the new school. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, if you started a new school, especially not with a bunch of other people, you're one of the few new kids. It's very difficult as a lot of kids have already kind of formed groups and uh, cliques or whatever. So it becomes difficult to get friends, right? So this new kid, right, who we're gonna call the Gen Z kid, was not like most kids who showed up. So this kid showed up in a wheelchair, right? So on the very first day, it was very apparent that there was a new kid there because he didn't look like any of the other kids there. And everyone was really good about giving this guy extra special attention to make sure that he was, you know, doing all right. Extra special attention, I don't mean like staring and pointing attention. I mean asking, you know, if he needed, you know, needed help bringing stuff, you know, from a book bag, like his book bags around, needed help, uh, you know, guides to class, stuff like that, right? And on the very first day, uh, this kid actually, you know, a lot of people were giving him a lot of positive support, right? So Gerald was one of those kids. No, no one at this moment, literally no one at this moment, believed for a second that this kid was faking being in a wheelchair for attention. Nobody yet. Gerald would be one of the first ones to, you know, find some evidence that was suspicious, and then Gerald would be, you know, basically lambasted and made a pariah because everyone's thinking, wow, how could you accuse you know, this kid of something with such baseless accusations, you're a heartless man, but Gerald turns out to be correct. But anyways, right, so a couple weeks in the school, what happens is the Gen Z kid, since he got so much attention off the bat for one being a new kid, but also being in a wheelchair, that it almost, he almost like immediately climbed up the social ladder to like the most popular guy. Because basically the Gen Z kid, you know, he got a lot of attention from being in the wheelchair and he definitely abused it. And let me just say that a lot of times kids in school with disabilities, you know, they get picked on a lot and it's really, really unfortunate and you really do hate to see it. But the Gen Z kid was almost like a master manipulator in a sense. And so he kind of used, first of all, this is not a real, he's not actually in a wheelchair, but he kind of used his like positioning of getting a lot of attention in the very beginning and then use that to form like, you know, friendships and relationships with people that were kind of already known as the top dog or whatever. And then the wheel and then the Gen Z kid almost immediately became like the number one alpha whatever. And here's the thing, the Gen Z kid was one of the most brutal, meanest people there. However, here's the thing, right? He's already in like he's friends with everyone at the top or the top of the high school social ladder, which I mean, high school social ladder, it's kind of irrelevant or whatever. But the thing is, he was already friends with a lot of people. And the other thing is, like, if you were mean back to them, you would just be uh, immediately accosted by everyone around you because, bro, you're being mean to the person who has to, like, you know, who's going around in a wheelchair. Like, you're actually an a-hole, bro. Like, that's how people would perceive it. So the Gen Z kid was, like, actually a secret evil genius or whatever, or a super villain, basically. And uh, Gerald didn't really think about, like, didn't really think that much. Uh, but one day... About a month into school, he was having a sleepover with another friend. We're going to call this friend Ben. So Gerald and Ben went to the same school, and they both knew about the Gen Z kid. And uh, Gerald, you know, I don't know if you guys experience this, but when I have sleepovers with the boys, at a certain time, like, it's just, like, late enough at night, once you stop playing, I don't know, video games or going out and doing something, and you're just kind of chilling, you guys have those deep talks, if you guys know what I mean. So Gerald didn't want to be the guy who was, like, I don't know, dunking on the, on, the, on the kid in the wheelchair, bro. He didn't want to be that guy, right? So Gerald very sheepishly is like, oh, what do you think of uh, the Gen Z kid, right? And I say Gen Z kid not because, like, literally in the Gen Z generation. I just mean Gen Z in the fact that, like, wants extreme amounts of attention and will basically use other people's life situations to, to try and get more attention and for their own gain. That's what, some people are confused. They're like, oh, well, are you all in Gen Z's and a whole generation? That's what I mean. It's colloquial, not actually the, the, the direct exact term. But uh, yeah, so Gerald kind of like turns his friend Ben. He's like, yay. So, you know, the Gen Z kid, he's, he's pretty popular now. I mean, it's been a while since like a new student kind of rose the ranks that quickly. And Ben's like, yeah, 
he's cool. And Gerald's like, yeah. They were both very obviously trying to like skirt around the fact that they did not like this kid at all. Remember, not because of his any of his disabilities or anything, or quote unquote, huge quotations, disabilities. This kid was actually taken away from people who really have those disabilities and have to live their life with it without a choice, right? But at this point, everyone believed it was real, so let's speak as if it was real. But then Gerald was like, you know, I thought for a kid who's been through so much hardship that he would uh, that he would maybe be a little nicer to other people. And Ben's like, you know, I kind of agree. You know when you like you and your friend have this like slightly controversial opinion? Maybe it's not even that slightly controversial, but you you don't know if they share the same opinion and you know if they do, if they disagree with you, they're going to be really mad. So you slightly slowly kind of like kind of like ease towards that opinion, right? And then they slightly ease towards that opinion. It's almost like you're going in for a kiss, bro. Oh, wait, wait, kiss the homies? Wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, but anyways, eventually Gerald and Ben, they're talking and they just get straight to it. And they're like, I can't believe this kid's such a jerk to everyone. I mean, the Gen Z kid would literally start like being like, uh, like just calling people out for no good reason. He'd be like, you know, rolling with his like group of other popular people. And it would be like, I don't know, man, it'd be like, uh, he'd be rolling by with like the other people and they'd pass by some kid who was like, I don't know, a little scruffy looking. The Gen Z kid's like, when's the last time you took a shower? And would like point at some kid and all the kids rolling with him would be like laughing or whatever. And dude, if this kid was trying to clap back, you know, they'd all be like, wait a minute, man, this guy's in a wheelchair. You can't come for him. And that's the most messed up thing. The Gen Z kid was literally using other people's life struggles, other people's serious issues as a kind of shield to defend against him being a bad person and him being able to do what he wants, which is, you know, absolutely ridiculous, right? So at this point, Ben and Gerald have been talking for like an hour about how like insane it is that everyone just kind of lets this behavior go, that no one has an issue with this, on and on and on. But other than that little conversation that Gerald and Ben have, it's not as if they do that much. It's also not as if they're going to share that opinion. Because the thing is, people will kind of look at them the wrong way. Yeah, this kid was a jerk, but he was also fairly popular. And also, you know, the very, you know, the elephant in the room is people are going to be like, man, like, relax. Like, he has a tough life. Like, maybe he's just taking it out on people. So uh, Gerald and Ben, while they have this opinion and they do share it together, and it was almost like, it was almost like a relief that he was able to share that opinion. I don't know if you guys have ever, like, felt like, oh, I can't say what I'm thinking, and then you're able to, like, I- express that opinion with your best friend or with a friend. It's just such a relief, right? But anyways, um, so they get back to school, and for the next, like, couple weeks, it is just on and on and on of just, like, the kid's getting worse. Like, I, like, everyone's thinking, like, how could this kid possibly get worse? D- the Gen Z kid continues on his rampage. It's like he just refuses to stop. He just continues to be a big jerk. And he just will... It's like he's refusing to stop being a massive jerk to everyone. And it's kind of ridiculous. And he's getting worse and worse. And there's a little bit of growing sentiment against the Gen Z kid, right? But everyone is way too scared to, like, form any opinion. Look, this is only 8th grade... Or to share an opinion. Look, this is only 8th grade right? This is only eighth graders, but this kid might actually be like a, I don't know, a, a, a Marvel super villain. He's got that crazy planning, bro. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like he's somehow been able to orchestrate like a kind of a social defense system where he can be the worst kid ever and actually be a massive jerk, but no one can oppose him without being weird. So anyway, or being uh, ostracized by their community. Anyways, here's the thing. So this, uh, the, the downfall of the Gen Z kid all started one day. So Gerald was walking alone in the hallways. It was kind of close to after school. And he walks around and he tor- turns a corner and he sees the Gen Z kid. And for a split second, he thinks to himself, wait a minute, because he looks at the Gen Z kid and it looks like he sat down. It looks like the Gen Z kid just sat down into his wheelchair, which doesn't make sense. The lower half of his body doesn't move, but he was certain what he saw. But he also, while he was certain what he saw, he was thinking, well, maybe it was just some kind of an illusion. Maybe I just wasn't seeing things right. There was a lot of possibilities. And eventually, you know, Gerald does turn the corner and he's in the same hallway as the Gen Z kid. And uh, 
Gerald is like so distracted in thought that he kind of like trips over his own feet a little bit. He doesn't trip and fall on the ground, but I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. I definitely have where you're walking, but you're just not paying attention and you just kind of like trip over your own feet, but catch yourself pretty quickly. And as he's walking by the Gen Z kids like, oh, oh man, watch out. Your feet are there. Kind of as like a joke of like, you just tripped over nothing, bro. How do you trip over nothing? Like, seriously, how do you trip over nothing? Kind of like a joke like that. And, you know, I don't know. Gerald is kind of looking at him like, all right, man. And Gerald just keeps walking. And he just can't get over the fact that he knew what he saw. He was like, no, this, this can't be right. Because, like, while he, had, while he was thinking that the Gen Z kid was, a, you know, a pretty big jerk, and there was no question about that, at the same time, Gerald did not for a single second until this, or before this, ever thought that the Gen Z kid was faking, you know, being in a wheelchair. He just thought that, wow, like... This kid is like a jerk and also happens to be in a wheelchair. Like you can be both of those at the same time. You know what I mean? So uh, he, Gerald just can't get this out of his mind. He just is like, he, he just keeps walking, keeps thinking about it. And for the rest of the, like the day, he can't focus in class. Actually, no, not focus in class. Cause it was towards the end of the day for the rest of the time at home, trying to do homework. He was like struggling, bro. He was struggling to pay attention. Cause he was like, I know what I saw. I, I, I know what I saw. Yeah, so he gets back home, and this is where he does a little uh, investigating. So basically, the Gen Z kid told everyone a very specific story about what happened in his life and how he got there. Basically, the Gen Z kid said he got in a really bad car crash when he was four years old, and that, you know, uh, I, I don't know, like, after that point, he had to be in a wheelchair, and the bottom, like, his, his, like, uh, bo like his bottom half didn't work, right? Or it was, like, paralyzed or whatever. So that was the story that he told everybody. And uh, Gerald was just like, he's like, I, I, I'm just so, like he goes on this kid's Instagram. And sure enough, this kid has like one post and it's him like holding a fish or whatever. And he's in the wheelchair. And it was, it's very recent, right? It was a post made like while this kid was at school and he had no other posts. So what Gerald does is he goes to this kid's uh, tagged post. So on Instagram, by the way, follow me on Instagram at Connor Pugs. You can submit your stories there and also you can watch my shorts on there or reels or whatever it's called, right? Uh, I do little short stories on there. Anyways, right, so he goes in the kid's tagged photos. He's looking through the tagged photos and he's just, you know, finding like, I don't know, he's not finding that much. And he's finding like a lot of like memes or whatever that his friends posted on their Instagram and like tagged him in or whatever. I don't know, but like back when I was in eighth grade, I would just like screenshot funny memes and post them on my main Instagram. Like now I just don't post anything, bro. I'm just like, nah, I'm not posting anything. But that's how I'd use it back in the day. But he just kept scrolling and he found the photo at the very bottom of the tag. It was from five years ago. So quite a while ago. But the Gen Z kid was definitely older than four at this point. So it was a photo of a bunch of kids all standing up together. First of all, <laughs> I think you guys caught it. They're all standing up together. But it must have been either a camp or a school they used to go to or some kind of after school program or something. And uh, since they were in eighth grade, it was like four or five years ago or whatever. You know, the Gen Z kid was probably like third or fourth grade. When you're in fourth grade, you are significantly older than four, unless you're baby Einstein or whatever. But he was obviously much older than four. And Gerald is just staring at this photo. And he can't stop staring at the photo. Because he's looking at the photo, and every kid is standing upright. And there's a kid who looks like the Gen Z kid when he was like three or four years younger, probably. This kid was standing up. This kid was 100% standing up, no questions. No wheelchair in sight, no nothing. And Gerald is just like, oh my God. Like this kid cleaned up his profile. Like he must have like, he probably had photos from back in the day that he scrubbed and all this kind of stuff, right? And maybe if any of his older friends who still follow him commented on the post saying, wait, you're in a wheelchair now? Deleted those comments, right? He did a good job scrubbing his profile except for one photo. Here's the thing though, Gerald made a bit of a mistake. Instead of screenshotting the photo, he just assumed, oh, well, you know, this is in the tag, so I can just tell people to go check out the Gen Z kids tagged photos. So anyways, the next day in school, Gerald immediately is like, all right, well, I gotta spread the truth because, you know, even though I do have an agenda against this kid, I don't really like him. I, I, it's better that people know the truth and that's the most important thing. Anyways, though, so right, Gerald now has information. Gerald now has proof 
that the whole time the Gen Z kid has been faking it. Gerald doesn't totally understand why, Gerald doesn't understand how, Gerald doesn't understand a lot of details. However, what Gerald does know is that there is a photo on this kid's Instagram page that shows him very clearly standing up when, you know, he can't stand up. This kid cannot stand up, bro, at least from what he's been told or what he's told everyone else. So Gerald knows this and he knows he's, you know, this is what he's going to spread. So there was a very strict no phones policy at school. Everyone's phones had to be in their backpacks and like teachers would legitimately like take someone's phone for an entire week if they saw it. So the problem was, was that for the longest time, not, not, not the longest time, but for the duration of the day, you couldn't be on your phone. A few kids would occasionally like sneak them around, but just, just the whole risk of having your phone taken away for an entire week, you weren't even allowed to get it at the end of the day. You had to wait till the end of the week to get it, man. So a lot of kids were just like, all right, fine, whatever, we just won't go on our phones. So here's the problem, right? Gerald immediately starts telling everyone in person about what's happened. So instead of sending them the Instagram post over Instagram DMs the night before or waiting till he got back to send Instagram, like the Instagram post to people, what Gerald does, and he admits this was a mistake in retrospect, was he just simply tells people, if you go on, this, on the Gen Z kids Instagram tonight and you go to his tag section, you scroll all the way down, you will find a photo from three to four years ago in which the Gen Z kid is very clearly standing up. And if you remember his story, well, he was like paralyzed in a car crash at the age of three or four, not like 12 or 13. Huge discrepancy right there. So word spread extremely quickly. This is a relatively small school, so word tends to spread kind of quickly, but especially some allegation of this like magnitude. The other thing that happened was that Gerald's name was attached to this allegation. Basically, he said this, and everyone went around saying Gerald is saying that the Gen Z kid is faking it and he has proof. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment proof down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And while you're in the comment section, check out the pinned comment on the video. That's a link to the Spotify page in which I, in which I upload all these story times as podcasts on there. And also a link to three other channels I run and post daily on. So please subscribe to all three of those uh, to help me out. And yeah, let's get right back to it. So anyways, right, uh, word spread extremely quickly that Gerald was claiming that the Gen Z kid faked everything. So pretty big al uh, accusations, uh, allegations, whatever, right? And uh, here's the thing. So Gerald was, uh, he, you know, he told everyone people were talking about it and uh, no one really had access to their phones. A lot of people wanted to, but what ended up happening was the school day eventually ended and like every, this was like everybody was talking about it. And when I mean everybody, I mean everybody was talking about this, bro. Like everyone was talking about it. So uh, yeah, Gerald, uh, you know, he, he got back home or he's getting in the car with his mom and he goes into his backpack and he pulls out his phone. After about like five minutes, he receives a text notification from someone in his class. Not that he's like super close friends with, but I think they must have had like a uh, either a grade large group chat or maybe he needed to exchange numbers for a project they did in class. But for some reason, right, he had Gerald's personal number. And uh, so Gerald receives a text from some guy he's kind of friends with being like, and it says something along the lines of, bro, why did you make up that stuff about the Gen Z kid? So Gerald is like super confused at this point and he responds to the text, what do you mean? And the kid says, I went to the Gen Z kids page and I can't find the post. Like there's no post at all. And you know, Gerald's like, what? So Gerald opens up his Instagram and he goes to the post or he goes to the Gen Z kids account and he goes to the tag section and he scrolls all the way down and he keeps looking. He looks all for it. Like he's like, oh, maybe it's not the very last one and I remembered it wrong. Maybe it's like a couple posts down, but not the very last. Gerald looks through every single tagged post and it's gone. The, basically, the proof of the Gen Z kid faking it is gone. And that's when Gerald realizes that what must have happened was that because word spread so quickly and that Gerald didn't attach any actual proof with his, uh, with his accusations, he told people to go look for it, word must have got back to the Gen Z kid. The Gen Z kid brushed it off like, oh, no, no, no. Then the Gen Z kid must have immediately taken the risk and gone on his phone and removed himself from the tag post, right? Because you can go to Instagram and you can re remove yourself if you're tagged in a post. 
And the thing is, Gerald, I said this earlier, never got a screenshot, bro. He never got a screenshot. He never, he could not for the life of him remember the name of the account that like tagged him. Cause it was like, uh, it was like, uh, I don't know, uh, Megatron 48, 768 pi square. It's like some crazy username that you just won't remember. So at this point, Gerald's like, oh no. So yeah, within the next 30 minutes, Gerald probably receives 25 different messages, either on Snapchat, Instagram DMs, text message. Uh, probably got a few faxes coming in too, basically being like, dude, that's crazy for you to like. It was either along the lines of, that's messed up for you to make that stuff up about the Gen Z kid, or something like, dude, can you send me the post? I can't find it. Or just like, wait, are you sure that you saw what you saw? Like around, it was basically a bunch of variations of those three messages. Yeah, so Gerald was like, oh, crap, bro. There's no way. Uh, yeah, Gerald got bamboozled. The Gen Z kid, he should have realized he got, you got to get screenshots. You got to get the receipts, man, especially on something where the guy can get rid of the receipts. And the thing is, too, if the school didn't have such strict rules about having no phones or whatever, kid probably would have just pulled out his phone, checked and been like, yep, here's proof, right? But no, people just waited till they got back. But I guess the Gen Z kid realized that he needed to take the risk and go on his phone. And honestly, like, Gerald didn't even see this coming. I think he totally forgot about the fact that you can remove yourself from an Instagram post. So yeah, Gerald got completely frickin' bamboozled here, bro. He got absolutely owned. And let me just say that socially, he got really owned. So yeah, he received a ton of text messages that night along, you know, I already told you the three, basically the either being like, how dare you do this? Or the, I can't find the post or are you sure you saw it correct, bro? And uh, yeah, so Gerald, so like Gerald wasn't like, I don't know, the popular kid that, you know, oh no, his reputation's ruined. The only thing he has going for him is the fact that he's quote unquote popular in high school, which, oh yeah, that means so much, bro, of course. Yeah, but at the same time, like, Gerald, like, would have kind of, like, friends, people, I don't know if you guys have this, but, like, more casual friends in class, people he would be, there are some people Gerald was really close with, but there's also a lot of people that he was his kind of friends with, and, like, people he'd sit with, people he'd get lunch with, people he'd walk with, like, you know, he was a, he wasn't necessarily a popular guy in the sense he was, like, I don't know, on the hockey team, or had some kind of, like, social clout like that, but he was a very kind of, like, he was a very talkative person and he spoke to a lot of people and for that reason he was always like he had a lot of people that he was kind of casually friends with and not like two very close friends and that's it so yeah for the next week gerald has like one of the wo worst social experiences of his life he's completely ostracized as everyone thinks that he made this up about the gen z kid just to make him look bad which not only are you making some kid look bad based off you know factless or just like not true accusations you're also trying to like tear down the kid that like already has a difficult life because he's disabled and in a wheelchair it's a terrible 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 look for gerald yeah, so this is probably one of the hardest weeks because a lot, some people still hang out with him, some people don't really care. Like, obviously, or not, I shouldn't say obviously, but his closest friends are still friends with him. That didn't change, which is pretty cool. I shouldn't say obviously because, I don't know, sometimes close friends aren't actually as close as you think. And even some of his casual friends don't care and they're like, all right, bro, whatever. But a lot of his kind of like casual friends, while they weren't like, you can't sit with us, a lot of them would like, I don't know. There's a lot of like uh, things people can do to kind of, uh, you know, imply that they don't want to hang out with you, such as you sit down somewhere in your unassigned assigned seats and then they decide to sit somewhere different, even though they've sat in the exact same spot for half a year. I don't know, if you normally walk with someone, they quickly walk to their next class instead of waiting for you or they stay behind. Just a lot of like things that Gerald was noticing that people were definitely avoiding him, which partly he couldn't blame because he's like, dang, I don't know if I'd want to hang out with me too if like I believe the rumor going or I believed what people believe. And Gerald also didn't blame people for believing what they believed. I mean, people went to the Instagram page and nothing was there. Why would they believe him? Of course, all this did end up changing when the Gen Z kid exposes himself as a fraud in front of basically everyone at the school. And Gerald gets an instant redemption when that happens. So let me just kind of jump to that situation. So it's about two weeks and after Gerald, like two weeks of like turmoil for Gerald where no one wants to hang out with them. 
people are always like a lot of people are talking about him about he kind of he got exposed oh my god gerald seems like such a nice guy but he's making fun of the gen z kid making up rumors about him like wow gerald's actually a snake blah, blah, all this kind of stuff right and so it's a really tough week for gerald or two weeks or whatever and uh, this school doesn't have any fire drills i think they have like the most lame excuse for a fire drill you've ever seen like i think the school what they'll do is they'll like i don't know i think they'll put on like they'll be like all right guys if there's a fire what do you do and they say uh walk out or like i don't know walk outside and the teacher's like good okay let's get back to class so they never never really had an actual fire drill so uh when the fire alarm went off during the school meeting when everyone was there it was almost a bit of chaos that ensued yeah, so they were in just a meeting, and since they never had the fire alarm ever go off, because they never had a real fire drill, as I was just explaining, when the fire alarm goes off, everyone freaks out and panics. This is why you have fire drills. So when it actually goes off, and by the way, there was no fire. It was like, I don't know, some kind of bug got into the system, like an actual physical bug climbed in there and set it off or something. But uh, yeah, when there's, that's why you do drills. So when it actually happens, you don't panic, freak out, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, so anyways, right, uh, everyone freaks out, and everyone's sitting in the auditorium. So immediately the teacher runs up to the, to the speakers, like, everyone get up, file, single file out of here, go immediately to the front lawn, and people were, were cramming the door. It was an absolute disaster, bro. It was a blank show. It was not good right now. And I think afterwards they started implementing actual fire drill just because of how bad this was, even though it wasn't an actual fire. But anyways, everyone immediately gets up and starts running towards the door. Listen to my sentence, the words I just said very closely because I did not misspeak. Everyone gets up and starts running towards the door. Everyone. You know who was in that meeting? The Gen Z kid. So everyone, and at the moment, no one really notices. Maybe a few people are like, wait, what? I'm hallucinating, bro. But no one really notices as everyone is running very quickly to try and get out the door. And so they all get outside and they all kind of like, form a big clump or whatever in the grass, the fields outside, and the teachers are like, all right, uh, like, go by your, everyone, find your fifth period class, like, find your teacher for your fifth period class, they're going to take your attendance, make sure you're all here, fifth period was going to be right after school meeting anyways, so everyone gets in those lines, right, and Gerald is, like, kind of all frazzled or whatever as the energy was insane, and he was like, oh my god, like, everyone's going crazy, but he looks over, he's just kind of, like, casually looking around, and he looks at the Gen Z kid, who is standing in line, standing. And the people in the Gen Z's, like, kids' is, like, class or whatever, the fifth period class, are kind of looking at him. Looking at him with this weird look. And Gerald taps, like, the shoulder of his friend, Ben, who happens to be in the fifth grade class. The one, remember, way back when he had, a, like, a sleepover and him and Ben were like, oh, that kid's the worst. Taps his shoulder, points at the Gen Z kid. And she, he's standing. He's standing there. So slowly, everyone starts staring at the Gen Z kid. And the Gen Z kid doesn't even realize what just happened. And so, yeah, uh, everyone starts to realize that the Gen Z kid is standing there. And eventually, the Gen Z kid realizes what's up. And he, like, he just, st he freezes. Like, he was kind of, like, casually, like, standing there. But you could just tell that, like, Gerald could tell the moment that the Gen Z kid realized that he messed up. Because the Gen Z kid was just standing there, stiff as a freaking broomstick, frozen with fear, because he doesn't know how to get out of this situation. He's probably going through, like, a billion calculations in his head of, oh, what's the most optimal thing I can do to save myself? But he went through all of them, and none of them worked. Zero. There's no way to explain this. He starts, like, turning to his classmates and being like, oh my god, guys, I don't know how this happened, but I'm, I, I, must, I must have been cured. Like, I, I'm feeling so much better. And they're all just looking at him. Because they knew the rumors that he was faking it. And then they all were like, wow, he got accused of faking it and it's false? So everyone in the back of their mind was now kind of like open to the idea that he might be faking it because a rumor spread about that even though that rumor was proven to be false. So now that there was proof that all of them could see the Gen Z kid was faking it, now there was nothing the Gen Z kid would do. From that day on, the Gen Z kid did not come in with a wheelchair because he's not actually disabled, right? He's an he walks normally, immediately to the very bottom of the social structure. No one wanted to hang out with him. Even the kids that nobody liked didn't want to hang out with him. No one wanted to hang out with him. And Gerald immediately kind of got the whole, 
like, no one apologized to Gerald, which is pretty funny, but, like, the, you know how I was telling you earlier that some people who, like, stopped, wa- like, would, like, kind of, like, walk faster than him or wouldn't wait for him or would sit at different tables? All those people just started hanging out with Gerald again. Like, nothing just happened. One thing I will say is Gerald will always remember the people that stuck with him through thick and thin, the people that either believed him or not, but knew his character, so decided to kind of, like, Make a bet on him. Make a bet on him actually being good, a good person and not doing what people said that he did. Gerald will never forget those people. And still to this day, the Gen Z kid is super ostracized. And uh, Gerald said that actually by the end of that year, the Gen Z kid had moved schools and was going to another school. So by the time ninth grade rolls around, he will no longer be in the school with Jared. If you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is watch another video like the one on screen right now. Today we got a story time of a crazy furry couple that tries to stalk and harass the subscriber but ends up embarrassing themselves so incredibly hard on Zoom class that they completely drop out of the class. Anyways, so this happened more or less kind of recently. And uh, so Alex's class, uh, they, when they went back to school, they weren't on Zoom class normally. But what would happen in about a week would there be a flu that went around. So the school just told the kids to stay home for a couple days and take class on Zoom. But before all that happened, Alex had the misfortune of crossing paths with the furry couple. The first thing I want to say is, like, I know that some people who, you know, engage in the furry stuff watch my videos and enjoy it. I just want to let you know that I have nothing necessarily against it. You can do whatever you want to do in your free time, and genuinely, I don't really see anything wrong with it. However, if you act like these people in the video, well, then that's, that's where we start to draw a line of that there's actually something wrong with it. So anyways, Alex was minding his business one day. This is where it all started. And he was walking down the halls of his school. And he was walking down the halls of his school when he accidentally bumps into this kid. This kid's a little bit strange. He always wears the same green hoodie. Not a Minecraft hoodie, by the way. He's not also a Minecraft kid. You know, the last, uh, you know, he wears, you know, this green hoodie. It's all, I don't know, it's always stained and smudged up. He's got this very weird odor slash musk aroma that always comes off of him, and it definitely wasn't intentional. He has this very bad kind of, like, crappy mustache. Guys, if you're, like, a, if you're just, like, hitting puberty, don't grow out your mustache, man. It never looks good. Even now, like, I'm, like, 20 or something. I'm about to be 21. I can grow, like, a lot of facial hair. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Facial hair looks good, but only when it's fully formed. Anyways, this kid also had a little fur tail that he always kind of walked around in. So Alex doesn't know this kid personally, but he accidentally bumps into him in the hallway. And this kid, who we're going to call the, the furry boyfriend, um, was with the furry girlfriend. And the furry boyfriend must have thought that, like, oh my god, like, Alex bumped into me. He disrespected my honor in front of my girlfriend. I can't let this stand. So he's like, excuse me, what did you just do? So Alex is like, no, bro, sorry, like, I accidentally bumped into you, my fault. So Alex tries to do what every other normal person in the situation would do. He just tries to walk away. I mean, what's the point of actually trying to start anything with the furry guy? Like, you already know that nothing good is going to come out of this. However, the furry guy was not going to let this go. He's like, eh, bro, excuse me. Like, you can't just let me, you can't just bump into me and disrespect my honor in front of my girlfriend and then expect to get away with such madness and tweezion. And uh, Alex turns and, like, looks at him and uh, looks at, like, the girlfriend. And she was, like, she was low-key playing into this. She was enjoying this. She was kind of like, yeah, honey. Go get him. Like, you're really showing him who's boss. And Alex is like, all right, bro, I don't... Uh, Alex literally walks away from this. Like, he doesn't want to engage in this anymore. So Alex gets up and walks away. Because, you know, he's like, you know what, man? I'm not dealing with this. Not today. So he gets up and he leaves. And so, you know, he can kind of hear, like, the furry boyfriend yelling at him. Like, you can't just get up and leave. Like, you can't do that. But Alex is probably thinking to himself, yeah, and why can't I just get up and leave? Why can't I just do that? Like, dude, come on now. So, yeah, Alex doesn't think much of it. Alex kind of does genuinely think, um, okay, who cares, whatever. One thing that, you know, is true is Alex does have a class with the furry guy, with a furry boyfriend. Um, however, it's a really large class. There's probably about 50 people in this class. So it's, when I say it's a large class, I mean it's a really large class. So there's probably about 50 people in this class, and the furry boyfriend always sits in the very, very back. So while Alex was aware of him, aware of his presence, 
Uh, Alex never had a single conversation with this kid before. He didn't even think that the furry boyfriend knew who he was, let alone knew that they were in the same class together. However, this would be proven wrong because Alex would be stalked by the furry boyfriend in just a second. So let's, let's skip ahead to the next day. Alex gets into school. And as he's walking into school, he's walking through the front doors. He hear he like, he, you know that feeling when you feel like someone's watching you? Most of the time, it's, I don't know, it's just, you know, your brain's playing tricks on you or you're being really just like freaked out over nothing. But one thing I will say, and I think I say this throughout, throughout a lot of my videos, is sometimes, guys, you got to pay attention to your instincts because sometimes your instincts really do have something like, you know, it's your body's way of kind of like, thinking it's your body's evolution through all the times where we've been in like the jungle and there's been like predators and all this kind of stuff there's there's stuff that your you know conscious can't understand but your subconscious understands in this case it might not have been a mountain lion but alex's subconscious was 100 percent right because the furry kid was slowly stalking behind him so anyways, the furry kid is stalking, is like coming up behind him, stalking him, and Alex doesn't even really realize until it's too late. So he turns around, and the furry kid like literally takes, a bu like, takes this marker and does like a big slash on his sweatshirt. And Alex is like, dude, because it was like one of the black permanent uh, Sharpie markers, and the furry kid is like, this is the mark of the beast. It is coming from me. I am the beast, by the way. And, you know, Alex is like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you just, sla you just like, slashed a mark on my sweatshirt. Like, that's not cool, bro. He's like, you don't understand. It is a mark of the beast. Uh, you are officially my enemy. And Alex is like, what? Because he's kind of, like, forgotten at this point that he bumped into this kid and allegedly, quote-unquote, disrespected his honor or whatever this kid wants to say. So Alex is like, bro, like, can you just, like, leave me alone? Like... And the, the kid doesn't take this as, like, leave me alone because you're weird, takes this as, oh, my God, oh, good heavens, please leave me alone. I'm so scared of you. And the kid's like, I get it that you're afraid of uh, the beast right now. <laughs> Guys, never call yourself the beast. Unless you're literally Mr. Beast, do not call yourself the beast. Yeah, but this kid's like, you have, you have gone against the beast, and just the mark of the beast, and the beast will be after you. And he kind of, like, turns around, and he, like, shakes his butt as to, like, shake his tail. But his tail literally falls off when he does this, and it falls onto the ground. And Alex is like, you drop something. He's like, oh, my tail! I mean, hush. He literally, literally just hisses at him. Does, like, a Nikocado avocado hiss, bro. He takes his tail and, like, runs away. So Alex at this point is like, oh my god, like, jeez. Uh, so yeah, uh, Alex has to deal with a lot of nonsense for the next, like, couple weeks or so. For example, the uh, furry kid would, like, do a lot, nothing, like, too bad. Like, the furry kid never, like, stole anything, like, valuable. He never, like, physically assaulted him or anything. There was nothing really that bad that was ever going on. However, right, uh, the furry kid was being extremely annoying again and again. Like, this kid was actually being super annoying. He would do stuff, like, he would start barking at Alex as Alex was, like, walking down the school hallway. So, obviously, everyone was a little bit weirded out by this behavior. I mean, because it's weird behavior. That's why they were weirded out by this behavior, man, because it's freaking weird. Um, but anyways, yeah, Alex would just be like, oh, my God, I have to deal with this again or whatever. And uh, yeah, um, so this behavior came to a stop suddenly when a flu went around the school. So it's your very standard uh, yearly flu. And uh, ever since Zoom classes were introduced, some schools have been using them to their advantage. One thing that personally makes me a little bit sad is I've heard that there's actually like not going to be school day or snow days anymore because instead of coming into school, you can just go on Zoom. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, that makes me kind of sad because I feel like instead of going in, like on snow days, it was always so special, at least for me, being able to wake up, look outside, and see all the snow on the ground, knowing that I wouldn't go, like, be going into school. I could hang out with my friends for one day, but I feel like now they're just going to have you on Zoom, which is really sad to me, as that was a big, fun part of my childhood. Anyways, though, so there was a flu going around the school, and so that Monday they were informed that... For the next two days, they were going to go on Zoom class so that the sick kids could stay home and that the kids who didn't know that they were sick wouldn't come into school and spread it anymore. So anyways, they logged into Zoom class on that day. 
So little did Alex know that this Zoom class was probably going to be the most eventful Zoom class of his entire life. This Zoom class was about to be one of the cringiest, most embarrassing, most difficult Zoom classes that he's ever been a part of. This was going to be the Zoom class that the uh, furry kid and his and her and his girlfriend, the furry girlfriend, were about to embarrass themselves so bad on Zoom class that yeah, they were literally going to drop the class because of it, or at least the furry boyfriend. The girlfriend wasn't in the class. And because of that, the furry boyfriend would have actually com will actually completely leave Alex alone because he doesn't even want to associate. He's so embarrassed. So strap in because this is pretty crazy. So yeah, let's, you know what? Let's just jump to the fateful day. Let's just jump to the fateful class that will go down in infamy forever. So anyways, everyone logs into Zoom class like normal. And I'm sure you guys can remember Zoom class or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet or whatever you guys use. Basically, you would log in, you know, you'd have your camera, you'd have your mic or whatever. And as soon as you logged in, 90% of people would literally just log off and turn off their mic and turn off their camera so that there wouldn't be any video footage. Video is the secret word of the day. So if you made it this far into the video, com if you made it this far into the video, comment video down below in the comment section. And while you're down there, make sure to check out the pinned comment on this video as there's a link to the Spotify page in which I upload all these stories as a podcast, as you can listen on there. And also a link to my second channel in which I upload stories every day like I do here, except I upload them from Reddit instead of from you guys. So make sure to subscribe to that channel too. But anyways, in this in this Zoom class, right, they all log in. And the teacher's like, hey guys, can you please uh, turn on your cameras and uh, unmute your mic for a second? So everyone turns on their cameras and unmutes their mic. Because one thing over Zoom class, if you guys, I don't know if you guys had this happen, but everyone would literally just turn off their cameras and turn off their mics, and then they would just go off and literally do anything else besides class. So the teacher, at least at first, is like, guys, can you please say hello? So everybody turns off or, or turns on their cameras, turns on their mics, and he basically does attendance. So he's like, hey, is, and this takes like forever, bro. This takes like 10 minutes. Normally he does it as people come in, but I don't know why he was taking this long, but he did. Because it takes a long time to go through 50 people. Yeah, so everyone does that. And the thing is, right, this is, that was, that one action, the one action of telling people, hey guys, can you unmute your mics for a second? Literally doomed the furry kid. Because while the furry kid does turn off his camera, it must have just, he must have just forgotten to mute his mic. So anyways, they start class. And here's the thing, everyone else's mics are muted, everyone else's cameras are off, and most people aren't paying attention. So that's when, uh, and I think the teacher, Loki, wasn't paying attention either, because the teacher was like not paying, because like everyone else was muted, so I feel like the teacher, I think what the teacher did was had their camera pointed towards like a whiteboard or something. So the teacher wasn't even really listening to what people were saying. They were just going through lecture, whatever. So that's when, right, Alex is just minding his own business. He's kind of just chilling. He's just kind of like, you know, in the Zoom class. And that's when he hears, that's when he hears something a little bit, uh, a little bit strange. The, uh, the furry kid starts talking, right? And it's very obvious that he's not talking, asking a question. Like, it's... It, I don't know, you're just like, you say something in a certain tone of voice when you ask a teacher a question versus when you're talking to someone. I feel like it's pretty obvious to tell the difference between the two. So the furry kid was very clearly not talking to the teacher, meaning that he must have been talking to someone else and not realize his mic was off. However, if he was just having a normal conversation, who would have cared? Like, everyone forgets to turn off their mic sometimes, everyone forgets to do whatever, these things happen. However, this was very far from a normal conversation. Because the furry kid was having a conversation with the furry girlfriend, right? And it was not a normal conversation. All right, guys, I got to give you a cringe warning. So leave a like in the video or you will die of cringe. No joke. Not nah, like I'm not not trolling you guys. I actually got to leave a like or you will die of cringe. If you leave a like, though, that'll actually protect you from the cringe radiation that will be coming from this video. Yeah. So uh, basically um, what ends up happening is the furry kid is like, hey, baby. Yeah. And you hear on like the line, what's up my sugar fox? So at this point, Alex is like, oh God, bro. Oh, hell nah. Oh, hell nah. This like vine boom thud sound effect. Like the Among Us imposter sound, like like all this kind of stuff is going off in his head, bro. Like it is just a bad moment to be alive for Mr. For Mr. Alex. And the whole class is like, wait, yo, what just happened? 
The thing is, though, I think, like, the furry kid must have had his, like, his mic muted or something. Not his mic muted, but his, uh, his audio really down low. So he, just so he wouldn't have to pay attention to the teacher and could listen to his girlfriend, right? And he's like, hey, baby. Meow. There's, like, some kind of, like, crappy cringe meow sound. And everyone's like, oh, hell nah, bro. What the, uh-huh. Right? And he's like, hey, do you want to rub tails late? Because remember, they got, like, some furry stuff going on. And here's the thing, bro. I don't care if you want to rub tails with your significant other. Look, I don't know what that means, bro. I don't really care. But look, you can't be, like, attacking people, saying that you're part of the furry cult and will, like, eat them or whatever this kid did to Alex, and then expect to get away with something like this. Yeah, he's basically like, yeah, do you want to rub tails later? And she's like, yeah. And then we can stroke each other's tails. I'm like, yo, what? And Alex is like, hey, this person's sus. What is going on? Someone please stop them. So obviously, right, after this conversation goes on even for a few seconds, the entire class is like, yo, 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 someone, st someone stop them. Someone, please, God, please, no. Yeah, so I think someone, because they don't really know what to do, because no one is, like, close enough with the furry guy to, like, text him, because they don't have, so no one has his personal number, no one has him on Instagram, because he only has, like, Tumblr and what's Wattpad or whatever, right? Um, so, sure enough, they're just basically have no way to contact him, because they don't want to start yelling and interrupt the class, but at this point, they might as well do so. I think some people try to send him a message over on Zoom, but it's not like he's paying attention to that anyways because he's very busy in his role play with his girlfriend on Zoom class right now. So Alex, low-key, bro, he's not going to lie. He's kind of sitting back and eating popcorn while this whole thing's going on because he's like, you know what, man? Maybe I would have stepped in and done something, but uh, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't have been so weird to me too. Maybe you shouldn't have tried to make my life difficult because I bumped into you in the hallway once and then you want to become the big man for your girlfriend, bro. I don't know. Maybe if that didn't happen, I would have been nicer. Yeah, so then the furry guy went on to say, like, Oh, my kitten, mm, do you want to hear about how I bullied Alex in class? And Alex's eyes, like, kind of perk up. He's like, oh, God. And the furry girlfriend's like, yeah, say how you dominated him again. And Alex is like, yo, 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 chill, chill, chill. So the furry guy's like, yeah. I literally clawed him, and he was like, oh, please let me go, no. And that's when Alex is like, oh, hell nah, bro, I'm not letting this slide. So Alex literally, like, unmutes his mic. He's like, hey, class, interrupting everyone, right? Hey, class, that's not what happened. Uh, the furry kid came up to me, splashed some water in me, and I was like, can you go away? And then he hissed at me and ran away. That's what actually happened. So at this point, the whole class, like, breaks into laughter, not just because, like, Alex, like, exposed the kid, but also because Alex was, like, the one to break the awkward, cringe silence. And then once Alex broke the awkward, cringe silence, it was almost like Alex broke some dam to a massive waterway, and it all came pouring out. So, yeah, everyone was hysterically laughing at this point. They just couldn't keep it in, because, like, bro, I don't know about you, but I think I'd... I don't know how I'd act in this situation, but that's when the teacher's like, hey, hey, like, what's going on over here? And uh, the teacher comes over and, like, I guess, like, the furry kid must not have even noticed because his volume was down or whatever. And he's like, yeah, like, tell me about your day, baby. Describe yourself. What are you wearing right now? And the whole class just keeps laughing. So the teacher's yelling, like, furry kid, furry kid, obviously says his real name, but we're calling him furry kid for the sake of this video. Yeah, but uh, anyways, right, eventually the teacher is able to, like, get, like, is able to yell loud enough that the furry kid's like, oh, what? And he, like, realizes that his mic's been off the whole time. So the whole class is, like, laughing, and the teacher's like, furry kid, you've had your mic on the whole time. Can you please turn it off or be quiet? We can hear everything that you've said. Yeah, so I don't think the teacher even realized how bad the conversation the furry kid was having. I bet he just thought that the kid was having a phone call and was like, oh, I'm going to do this kid a favor and let him know that we can all hear it. Little did he know that, you know, the phone call was not your average phone call. It was about, like, stroking each other's furry tails and, like, talking about how he dominated Alex and then Alex came in and was like, no, you didn't, bro. So, yeah, um... After this, the furry kid literally just leaves the Zoom class, like just disappears. And the teacher's like, oh, uh, okay. 
I guess I'm going to have to mark this guy off for attendance then, but whatever. Um, so he goes back to teaching. And two days later, or the next Zoom class, uh, the furry kid doesn't show up. And Alex is like, well, you know what I mean? I get it. Like, you need some time to recover from such an epic self-own right there. Like, I totally don't blame this kid. I would probably do the same. Yeah, but what actually ended up happening was the furry kid didn't even come to class the next day and didn't come to class after that. So while the furry kid still attended the high school as he can't just like drop out because he wants to, he worked with the administration saying that something happened in the class and he physically cannot return. So yeah, the kid was able to drop the class. It's actually really hard to drop classes in high school, especially once you've done them for a little bit. A lot easier in college, but yeah, the kid drops the class and after this, he stops messing with Alex because he realizes that, you know, he just admitted something that wasn't true to the entire class and he heard from other people that Alex, like, owned him or whatever. So, yeah, he leaves Alex alone. Alex basically never sees this kid again except once or twice, like, very far away in the lunchroom. He sees him at the back of the cafeteria. And, uh, yeah, happily ever after, I guess. Leave a like for nothing. I mean, dude, I'm honest, so leave a like. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just for a second, imagine you're just chilling in class. You're having a pretty good old time, right? And then all of a sudden, right, this Roblox kid goes to the front of the classroom and just confesses his love via a Roblox video of him doing certain things. Yeah, I, I can't even really get into it. I know this sounds very vague, but uh, it's really bad. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new. And let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call a subscriber who submitted this story, Bryce. So anyways, there's this kid in Bryce's class who was always playing Roblox. Like, he always sat in the back of the class, and he always had his computer out. He was playing Roblox. I think the teacher kind of knew that this was the case, but there are so many kids in the class. And the teacher was kind of with the mindset, like, if they want to learn, they'll learn. And if not, like, I'm not going to interfere which I don't know if that's a good mindset or a bad mindset, but either way, it just was how it was. So anyways, he was kind of known as the Roblox kid because every single day, without fail, he would be playing Roblox. Like, if you ever saw him, he would be playing Roblox, and sometimes he'd even have the sound on, which is kind of funny, but whatever, right? And occasionally, he would wear, like, a Roblox hoodie or something, but the reason is, every single day, without fail, this kid was playing Roblox. Like, literally, no matter what, he was always playing Roblox. So, uh, we're skipping towards the... We're literally skipping right towards the juicy part. I mean, the whole thing's the juicy part, but we're getting to it right away. They had a presentation this Thursday, and we're actually going to jump to Thursday. It was a pre This was a history class, and they were studying, uh, you know, the Civil War, and each of them was supposed to go up and present a slideshow of important... Th of just, like, something that happened in the Civil War. It could be a battle, it could be a general overview, it could be a character piece, like, you could do one about the life of Abraham Lincoln. These kids were given weeks to do it, right? So anyways, the subscriber Bryce goes up, and he speaks about the Battle of Gettysburg or whatever. A little fun fact, in 8th grade, I actually went to go, like, to see, like, the, like, Gettysburg and, like, the battlefields and all that cool stuff with my class. It was a really cool time. But anyways, right, you know, Bryce goes up there, he does a good job with his presentation, and the next person to be called up is the Roblox kid. And normally I save, like, very interesting stuff like this for later on. I'm blessing you guys because we're jumping straight into the cringe. Actually, I don't know if I'm blessing you guys or if I'm cursing you guys because we are jumping, we're jumping straight into the cringe. And when I say straight into the cringe, I mean legitimately straight into the cringe. Like, this is bad. This is, so just prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually because this is going to be quite the experience to say the least. So anyways, the Roblox kid goes up to the front of the classroom and everyone's kind of just looking at him, right? And he flips on his presentation, and from the very start, actually, no, in the very start, it looked normal because it was an image with text on it that says, like, the life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox Kid. He obviously said his real name, but for the sake of this, the life of Abraham Lincoln by Roblox Kid. The immediately, the first slide is, like, the goofiest thing ever. So Bryce is looking at it, and on the first slide, it is, it is a Roblox character with a top hat on, and there's an arrow pointing to him, and then text that says Lincoln. And then there's more text that says, Lincoln was a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then, and, and the Roblox kid went up there and is literally just reading out, Lincoln is a good guy. Lincoln was a president. And then he goes to the next slide, and it is, <laughs> dude, this is the funniest thing ever. 
It is the Roblox character of Lincoln, but his head is on the ground. It's like decapitated from his body. And the next slide says, Lincoln died. <laughs> it literally just said, Lincoln died. Okay, at least he didn't say like L, like Lincoln took the ratio, young boys better than Lincoln. At least he wasn't like going like that, right? But he was like, Lincoln died. Literally, no context. Who was he shot by? He was shot after Revolutionary War. Did it happen in a movie theater or like not a movie theater? You know what I mean? A theater well, was like, who was the name of it? No, just Lincoln died. And then it was a photo of a Roblox character with his head on the ground decapitated and an arrow pointing to him saying, it literally an arrow pointed to it and said died. Not here lies Lincoln from whatever, right? It just says died. So the entire class is like holding back laughter because this is like the worst presentation on planet Earth. Because like, oh look, these kids are like in sixth or seventh grade or something. So it's not like they're coming out with a college PhD thesis type things. These are not dissertations that are being dissected by other professors, right? Sure, whatever. It's a little slideshow presentation. However, most people had pictures and a lot of text and the pictures were not roblox characters with arrows pointing to them saying lincoln or not lincoln but here's the thing it gets so so much worse so much worse that you guys probably won't even be able to comprehend how bad it is right so the next slide <laughs> I, I i don't even know if i comprehend how bad this is the next slide is just text so just a little recap we've had three slides so far the first one saying the life of Abraham Lincoln, the second one being a Roblox character with a top hat saying, this is Lincoln, he was cool, he was chill, he was a chiller, right? The next slide was the Roblox character with his head on the floor saying, he died, lol. And then the next slide says, okay, okay, let's talk about something much more important. So at this point, Bryce was sitting in the classroom. He's like, bro, much more important. This is your presentation, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, are you trying to sabotage yourself here? Because it definitely feels like it. And, uh, you know, everyone in the class was kind of confused. And for some reason, the teacher wasn't stopping the Roblox kid. I think the teacher was kind of hoping that the Roblox kid, like the first couple of slides were like a, a joke. And while the teacher didn't find it very funny, the teacher was hoping that the Roblox kid was going to make a bit of a recovery. So I bet the teacher at this point thought, oh, OK, well, the Roblox kid was obviously kidding. Like he's saying, let's talk about something more important. He's probably going to like go over to talking about like the life of Abraham Lincoln. No, the teacher and everyone else was unfortunately wrong because the Roblox kid goes on to just do the, the most insane thing I've ever seen. And you guys, look, I told you before to buckle in, like buckle in for the cringe. You guys got to strap in for the cringe. Like this is an atomic blast of the cringe. So you have to lay straight down on the floor, make sure it doesn't destroy your lungs and eyes and everything. All your internal organs don't turn inside out with this. So just prepare yourselves. So anyways, the, the Roblox kid clicks onto the next slide and it is a video. So you know how in like Google Slides you can click onto a video? It is an unlisted YouTube link. So he clicks into it and it goes over to YouTube. And all of a sudden, <laughs> oh my God, I don't know if I can do it. Guys, guys, I think I'm, I'm gonna pass away from the cringe, guys. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel to help me survive. Anyways, so all of a sudden, uh, you know the song like What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction? Yeah, that starts playing. And everyone is super confused because Bryce knows for a fact that this was definitely not music to fit the timepiece. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is like Civil War Abraham Lincoln music. I don't know, man. This just doesn't really seem like it. And all of a sudden, while that song, the you know What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction is playing, a video appears on screen. Of the, of the Roblox kid, Roblox character. And it's like a screen recording of him running around this map with like text appearing on the screen. You know how it's like, you can have like your Roblox character have like a text bubble. I, I don't know if that's actually true. I don't really play it myself, but I've seen like meme images or whatever. So at first, he, the Roblox character is just like saying the words of the lyrics. So he's like, you're insecure, not sure what's for. Dude, I'm not looking at their lyrics right now. Like, uh, turn in heads when you walk through the door or something like that. Okay, you, you know the song I'm talking about. I butchered the lyrics, but in all fairness, I'm trying to get them from the top of my head. And I haven't heard that song in like a year or last night, either one. Um, but yeah, so everyone is super confused. Bryce kind of turns to his friends. The teacher is just like, okay, like I'm going to let this play because like I don't know where this is going. But everyone is realizing that this is going downhill extremely quickly. 
and no one realizes like why this like where this is actually going until like after like a little bit of the roblox characters like dancing on screen and like singing the lyrics to the one direction song eventually right eventually like the roblox character like it, it zooms in on him and the music's still playing in the background but the text is no longer like the text of the song it is so there's a girl who we're gonna call eve in this class and she's sitting in the front row rest in peace eve bro because she's about to get slammed by the roblox kid completely embarrassed in front of everyone so uh yeah uh the the text on screen of the roblox kids presentation turns from saying the one direction lyrics to saying like i have a super important question for you and then eve her name appears on screen and everyone dude i feel bad for this girl because like as soon as her name appeared on screen in this dumpster fire of a presentation literally everyone including the teacher turned their heads to look directly at her which is a, such a tough situation because like bro was just existing bro was just chilling trying to like live life or whatever and then all of a sudden she just gets completely destroyed gets a left hook to the face like you just simply hate to see it right and all of a sudden, like, it, the text on screen turns to, like, Eve, will you go out with me? And it says this for, like, five seconds. And Bryce, it, like, even though it was only on screen for, like, five seconds, Bryce says that this is probably the longest five seconds of his life. He's never seen a five-second duration go by any slower. And all of a sudden, right, the Roblox character on screen starts doing, like, a break dance. Like, it is the worst thing I've ever seen. I will say that there are worse ways to... <laughs> to ask out girls and if this video gets 1000 likes I, I i clear a thousand likes all the time but if this gets 1000 likes in the first 24 hours i will tell you the worst story of how to ask out a girl and it's from me it is a personal story so you better smash like right now and i will do it i'm a man of my word it is embarrassing it is terrible it is awful but it is funny and if it gets more engagement on the video then i'll sell my soul for anything anyways so yeah, the Roblox character is like breakdancing in the background. And <laughs> remember, this is during a history class presentation on the frickin' Civil War. And all of a sudden, there's this a Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid, literally, I don't know if dude thinks he was asking to marry her, because the Roblox kid gets on one knee, and everyone's like, what is this kid doing? Roblox kid gets on one knee, and like... <laughs> I don't know why he was on one knee, but he was. I think he saw, like, a movie where someone proposed, and he's like, oh, this is how it works. He's like, Eve, will you be my girlfriend? And while this is happening, like, a really, like, poorly audio, like, poorly edited in audio, so it's really grainy audio of, like, what makes you beautiful by One Direction is looping in the background while there's a video of this Roblox character breakdancing on screen. Like, it is the biggest dumpster fire anyone has ever seen. Everyone at this point is completely shocked. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Roblox down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart a bunch of the comments. I can't always because, look, full-time college student as well. Also trying to have a life. However, it's not that hard for me to go through and heart a bunch of them. So if you comment Roblox, I'll do my best to do that. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is after you're done watching this video, go ahead and binge watch a bunch of videos and please let me know in the comment section how many videos you watched today or this week because when you watch my old videos it helps the channel get promoted more which helps our community grow and it's awesome it's great i just want to say thank you so let me know in the comment section if you are doing that so i can say thank you personally yeah so just a little recap of what is happening and by the way prepare yourself for the cringe because it's pretty bad at this point but anyways the roblox kid has gone up to give a presentation on Abraham Lincoln. The first two slides were crappily edited in Roblox characters, where the first one just has a top hat, and the second one just has his head falling off, right? So not super great. Um, and then it converts to like, let's talk about something more important. And then it's a video of his Roblox character running around, screaming out the lyrics to One Direction's like, what makes you beautiful. And then it turns to the Roblox character breakdancing while the Roblox kid goes on one knee and asks this girl out in front of everyone. So yeah, at this point, like Bryce is sitting into uh, Bryce is just like so shocked and confused because dude, this all happened within the span of like two minutes, and the Roblox kid is like, 
Yeah, so at this point, you know, I, I don't know. Bryce just wasn't expecting anything like this to happen. Like, he's just like, this all happens so quickly, just for context. Like, one second in, this happens. The next second in, like, or, like, one second in, they're all doing, like, Civil War presentations. The next second in, this Roblox kid is trying to ask out this girl with a Roblox dancing icon, and he's down on one knee. And it's just, like, a huge mess. It's just like, dude, what is even going on at this point? And, uh, yeah, it is the most awkward... Oh, my God, it's Connor Pugs. I've never seen your face in real life. You're so sexy. Dude, how do these fans keep getting in? <laughs> security! Security! Anyways, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways, so at this point, the teacher is starting to realize what is going on. Like, the teacher, like, is kind of snaps to it. And remember, the Roblox kid is literally sitting, standing, or not standing, is literally on one knee, and is just like... Will you go out on a date with me? And, uh, poor Eve, bro. Like, everyone's just looking at her. And the teacher goes up to him. is just like, what is, like, what is wrong with you? Like, the teacher full-on says, what is wrong with you? Which, like, the, teacher, <laughs> the teacher's not wrong, dude. Like, what is wrong with this kid, bro? Like, can't be going up to people in class and just, like, asking them out when you're supposed to be doing the life of Abraham Lincoln. Like, it's a little bit different. And the Roblox kid is like, you're a hater of my love. You're a hater like John Wilkes Booth or whichever one shot Lincoln. You're a hater just like him. I'm like Lincoln. You're like John Wilkes Booth. And you're shooting me in the head metaphorically. And the teacher's like, why didn't you say that in your thing? It's like, because <laughs> the teacher started to like freak out because the Roblox kid actually knew the history. He actually knew who shot Abraham Lincoln. He knew the context. But bro decided not to put it in his presentation because he was too busy doing like... Dude, he was too busy doing Roblox dances to ask out this girl. So at this point, the Roblox kid is like, you can't stop me. You can't stop me and my love. And at this point, Eve just has her head down on the desk like, oh my God, dude. Oh my God. And everyone feels so bad for her. But they're also just so curious, like, what is going on with the Roblox, the mind, uh, Roblox kid, right? So at this point, the Roblox kid, like, the teacher starts walking towards the Roblox kid because the, the teacher is going to escort him to the front office. But the Roblox kid says, no, no, I must have an answer. You can't take me away. So the Roblox kid starts to run around the classroom. So the desks are kind of in a, uh, just imagine a normal classroom. So the Roblox kid starts weaving in and out between the desks. He's just, doo, 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 just kind of like dodging in between the desks sliding under chairs, knocking stuff over. And while he's doing this, right? Cause like the teacher's starting to close in on him, but the teacher's not gonna like, the teacher's not gonna slide tackle him, dude. He knows better. But while he's doing this, he, he's shouting like, Eve, Eve, do you hear me? Eve, Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend? Eve, Eve, will you be my Roblox girlfriend? And at this point, Bryce is like, oh my God, what is going on right now, dude? What is going on in the Minecraft? Uh, Sorry, the Roblox kid is just kind of like jumping around, jumping, jumping. And at this point, right, you know, I think Eve is starting to realize that if she doesn't say, like, this is a terrible position and I feel really bad for her because, like, dude, right, you definitely don't want to. Yeah, my balls are my balls are actually. Yeah, I got my set of balls in on Amazon. Wait, they can't hear this. No. We've had a lot of lore in today's video, like a lot of, uh, anyways, though. So at this point, the teacher is just like, he's running after the Roblox kid. The Roblox kid is running back and forth. And I think Evie at this point kind of just knows that she needs to say, like, she needs to say something. So she kind of like stands up, which is tough for her. Cause like, this is obviously super embarrassing. She stands up and says, I'm sorry. Like, I don't think we should like go on a date or something. Or like, I have to decline. However, she said it, she said it very politely. She said it very nicely. And uh, you know, the Roblox kid stops running. And that's when the teacher catches up to him and kind of grabs him. And the Roblox kid literally slumps on the floor. Almost like he was shot with like a tranquilizer dart, dude. Like he just slumps on the fricking floor. Like he's just down, down for the count. And uh, you know, everyone is kind of looking around cause it's like, uh. What, what, what do we do about this? And the teacher is like, come on, get up, get up. And the Roblox kid's like, no. When my heart is broken, my legs are broken too. Like, kid is being super melodramatic. Apparently, like, he's never even talked to this girl, the one that he asked out in front of the whole class. He's never spoken to her once. He just saw her once and was like, oh, this girl's pretty. Let me ask her out during my Abraham Lincoln presentation because that makes a lot of sense, right? And the kid's literally slumped on the floor. He's like, no, my broken heart has paralyzed my entire body. Yeah. And the teacher's like, dude, get up. He's like, no, I will get up 
when she says yes. And at this point, the teacher's like, ah, oh, hell no. Because, like, the teacher, it, look, it was already in a terrible, she's already in a terrible situation. You got some weirdo in front of everyone being like, go on a date with me now or else. And then all of a sudden, this kid decides that he is also going to pull a, if she doesn't go on a date with me, I'm just going to be collapsed on the floor forever. <laughs> Feel bad for me, guys. Like, no, that's definitely like, he's cut, he's drawing the line there. We're, we're not letting this one slide. Uh, yeah. <laughs> basically right so the teacher pulls him up because the teacher you know he can't be too physical with this kid because he can get in trouble and lawsuits and whatever but he grabs the kid by the scruff of his collar and like yanks him up and is like you've had a you've like you've been distracting enough today like you caused enough drama you've caused enough trouble you're going to the front office with me so he drags him out to the front office and it, afterwards the classroom is just dead silent until one guy who's sitting next to Eve kind of speaks up and says, I'm so sorry. And literally after that kid says, I'm so sorry, the whole class, the whole classroom dude, including Bryce, chimes in to say, yeah, I'm so, like, that's so sorry. Like, that's so tough. I'm so sorry about that. If you need anything, like everyone was being so nice to her because they realized this like, dude, like this is day of a presentation. This is already kind of a stressful day, but everyone kind of knew that like, yeah, no, I mean, no one wanted this, and she definitely did not ask for this, and, like, if the, if this happened to any of them, they would have known that they would have just, like, they would have had the worst day ever. So, yeah, everyone was super nice to Eve after that point. Uh, the Roblox kid did get in trouble. He obviously, he, he would have failed his presentation, um, but the, the teacher said, I'm gonna give you another chance to redo the presentation, and he did, and the presentation actually wasn't that bad, but the kid didn't get a great grade because the teacher's like, I'm not gonna give you a great grade even if the presentation's really good, but just feel lucky I'm giving you a chance to try at least again. So yeah, moral of the story is don't ask out uh, your crush via your Abraham Lincoln presentation and with a Roblox video dancing to One Direction, going on one knee and run. Dude, I think the moral of the story click is Click on the video clear. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. In today's subscriber story, this Roblox kid who is being a jerk to a lot of people gets absolutely destroyed when he tries to be a jerk to this girl. And it was hilarious. So there's this kid, right? And he's known as the Roblox kid. And he's not known as the Roblox kid because he, you know, is just a big fan of Roblox, just plays the game a lot, enjoys the game. You're totally free to play the game and enjoy the game and not be called a Roblox kid. For example, I'm not going to call you a Minecraft kid just because you play Minecraft, man. That's just not how it works, right? Roblox kid has a certain connotation to it that, like, you're doing a lot of stuff along with like in Roblox. For the duration of this story, I'm just gonna call this guy Roblox Kid, right? So Roblox Kid had had a history of terrorizing people in my subscriber's class. If you don't know, a subscriber sent in the story, you can always do that, link in description, all that information's down there. Anyways, right, so this guy, known as like the Roblox Kid, had been terrorizing my subscriber's class ever since he transferred to his school about a month ago. This story took place in like the very beginning of the year and this new kid transferred in and no one really knew what, you know, he was going to be like. And the thing is, when you have like a kid transferring in and like he doesn't know a lot of people, of course you want to be nice to them. If anything, I encourage you to be nice to them. So everyone in my subscribers class, including my subscriber, you know, he was very nice to this new kid and like they didn't know him as the Roblox kid who like was menacing and terrorized people yet. They just knew him as like, you know, you know, just, just a kid, right? Just a new guy who probably doesn't know a lot of people, who probably feel isn't feeling so good, right? And it's only within the first couple days that they start to realize that something is up. The first thing the Roblox kid did wasn't really necessarily a bad thing that made him a menace. It just started off on the wrong foot, right? So all these kids, they wanted to follow this guy on Instagram because, you know, you want to connect with him even if you don't see him a lot out of school. You want to make him know that, like, everyone in the new school that he just transferred to is, like, really open to him and is really open to, you know, new people coming in. They want to make him feel welcome. So they all decide to go follow him on Instagram. So they look up his name, and obviously his name's not Roblox Kid, even though I will be calling him that, and they find his Instagram account, but what they find on the account is a little bit weird, I'm just gonna be honest. So you know those kind of like Roblox, like Roblox Kid cringe videos that like Poncho and Pegasus and Tagswag and those people would do? You know those types of posts, like those in like those like TikTok posts that like they they reacted to? Uh, those were the type of posts that this kid posted unironically. And uh, ever since then, he kind of gained the reputation as 
the you know the the the, the roblox kid because he would post stuff that was just like oh boy like he posted one of those videos where it was like i'm talking in my real voice and he's obviously not talking in his real voice he's talking in some kind of like fake deep voice to make him sound all cool and like oh my god the ladies are gonna love me now man because i'm talking in this weird voice so like here's the thing while that was all pretty cringe to them they're like oh my god right it doesn't mean that he was a bad guy it was what he did next that definitely solidified himself as being known as a bad guy so right after, you know, some people follow him on Instagram, they see like some kind of weird posts or whatever, they aren't necessarily like going to not try and make him feel welcome. They still decide like, okay, this might be a little weird, but we don't really care. Like, sure, man can like enjoy posting weird stuff, but we're still going to be nice to him, right? So it's a couple days in the class and, you know, over the first couple days, Roblox Kid was kind of just kept to himself, right? He was just kind of like shy. He wasn't really saying anything. But he definitely grew comfortable really quickly, which normally is a good thing, but in this case was not a good thing. Yeah, so basically, right, within a week of Roblox Kid being in class, the teacher would say something and he would just laugh. And the teacher would look back and say like, oh, you know, what's so funny? Like, what, what joke did I miss? And the Roblox Kid would say, nothing. And people just were like, okay, that's a little strange, right? That's a little weird. And he just kept doing that. But then he started to do it when, like, someone would, like, say an answer. Like, the teacher would be like, does anyone know what whatever is, right? And someone would answer, and the answer would be wrong. And he would le let out a little laugh, right? And the teacher would be like, what's so funny? He's like, nothing. And he would just keep doing that, right? And he definitely, he especially did it when people were, like, somehow a little bit vulnerable. Like, you know, you, you said an answer and it was wrong. And he would make sure to just have a sneak a little laugh in there. Quickly, if you enjoy story time videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That's it, back to the story. The level of snarkiness coming from Roblox Kid only increased every single day he was there. And at one point, someone came in with like an outfit. I think it was some guy and he was wearing green on green, which you know, yeah, neon green, like top with a neon green bottom normally isn't the move. Look, I'm not a guy who like knows a lot about fashion, but even I know that like probably, you know, wearing neon green on neon green probably isn't the, you know, the hottest look ever and all the ladies aren't going to be fawning over you. But when this guy came in, Roblox kid looks at him kind of like, like it gives this little laugh and then is like, uh, and he turns to the guy and he's like, do you need to have your eyes checked, buddy? And then the guy's like, uh, what do you mean? He's like, uh, looks at the outfit. He's like, uh, do you see what you're wearing? The guy's like, uh, I was like, I got out of bed late. I just threw on what I had on. And then people kind of like looked back and they're like, oh, that's that, that was a little aggressive, man. Like that was a little aggressive for literally no reason, dude. Like, yeah, the guy didn't have the greatest outfit of all time. Like, lock him up. Like, okay, it's just class, bro. Like, no one else is, no one else cares. Why do you have to have such an attitude? What did he do to you? And just after that point, the snarkiness and, like, backsided comments and just kind of, like, Roblox Kid being, like, a massive jerk, it just kind of, like, went up every single day and it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. For example, a couple weeks in, like, the after he had that last comment to the kid and was just being snarky and laughing at people, right? So in the very beginning of class, before class started, kids were kind of, kids kind of, like, sat down and, like, the teacher was kind of getting the stuff together. But Roblox Kid was sitting, sitting kind of near this girl and he kind of like looks over and says, hey. And she's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, are you wearing makeup right now? And she's like, uh, no, I'm not wearing makeup right now. And he's like, maybe you should. So that comment was like, first of all, I just want to say to the guys out there, never say anything like that to like a girl or really don't say anything like that to anyone in general. Like common decency, but like, I don't care if you think you're funny, man. Like it's going to really have a negative impact on someone. And in this case, it did. Like, the, when he said that to the girl, like, she already was having, like, her own insecurities. Look, a lot of people, like, around their age, I, I don't know exactly, like, what grade this guy, the subscriber who sent in the story was. I'm probably going to say, like, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Probably, like, late middle school, early high school. That's when you're most... Honestly, bro, that's when you're like your most insecure over everything. When you think all these things matter and words like this, is, it's really going to go a long way. This girl ends up running out of the classroom, like crying and like some like her friends go running after her. And this is the first time that the teacher actually does have to get involved and like 
talk to the Roblox kid. He's like, Roblox kid, obviously he says his name, but we're going to say, Roblox kid, like, go down and see the principal, like, the go to the principal's office, like, yeah, uh, what I, I heard what you said, it was unacceptable because he was close enough to the front of the classroom now where he sat because he didn't sit in the same seat every day. He decided to terrorize a new person every single day by sitting in a new seat and also disrupting the unassigned assigned seats. If you know what that is, then you know that that's criminal behavior. But anyways, he was close enough to the front of the classroom that the teacher's like, I heard what you said, go to the principals. So when Roblox Kid went to the principal, apparently the principal said, since this is your first offense, like, we're not going to give you a punishment, but basically, no, you're on very, very thin ice. And next time we hear of something like this, you know, you're going to be suspended. And so the Roblox kid's like, okay, like, I'm so sorry. It was just a little mistake. Like, I'm having a bad day. Trying to, like, weasel out of it and also pretending like he has not been doing this for months on end to basically everyone. But anyways, right, from this point on, you might be thinking, okay, did Roblox kid actually improve? Did he become a better person? No. He was just more careful when he was being a jerk to people, right? He didn't do it in front of the teacher. And he was also a little bit more careful who he did it to. But this didn't mean that he wasn't, like, continuing on his tirades of terrorizing people, you know, as being a jerk, right? He started sitting more in the back of the class, and he started making his comments then. He also started making comments in the hallway of people. For example, someone would walk out of, like, a class, like, his class with him, and they would have gotten, like, a, a pretty bad grade on the test. And as they were walking out, the Roblox kid would be like to all the people around him, like, he'd say really loudly, he's like, I can't believe you got a, you know, a whatever score on that test. Maybe study next time. Roblox Kid probably f failed the test, dude. Like, we're gonna be honest. He was too busy making those hey there baby girl Roblox edits to get, like, three likes on TikTok. But, like, he needed to make sure that it was everyone else's business that the guy next to him failed the test. Right, so you might be thinking, like, Connor, this story is kind of depressing. Like, this guy just is, like, a terrible person to everyone, and he just keeps on getting away with it. And let me just say that, like, if this, if there was no good ending to the story, if there was not, like, a satisfying conclusion, I would not be telling the story, right? Just hold out a little bit longer. Trust me. The ending is good, and karma, baby, karma is sweet. But before we get to the sweet, sweet ending, I'm gonna interrupt this video to tell you that the secret phrase of the day is tree. So if you made it this far into the video, comment tree down below. I wanna see how many people actually made it this far, and I appreciate you if you do. So there was this girl in the subscribers class. Uh, let's call her uh, Ashley, right? So Ashley was known as like, you know, a being like very nice, very like kind and respectful at least when you were being kind and respectful to her. But she was also known for, like, standing up to herself and standing up to herself firmly and, like, really well. Like, if you tried to come and, like, roast her, man, you were gonna come out scorched. That is not a flame fight you want to enter into. That's all I'm trying to say, bro. Ashley was something else, but she was also very kind and respectful and was a good, very solid friend that, like, she was just an overall very good person, as long as you were a good person to her. She really had a whole eye-for-eye eye mentality when it came to stuff. And let me just say that Roblox Kid, since he was still kind of new to the school, he didn't know Ashley's reputation. But he also kind of like got a sense that she was a little, had a little bit tougher skin. So he decided that she would be the next victim of like his like, you know, his heart is basically his his being a jerk, right? His trolling, right? She was going to be the next victim because she probably wouldn't break down crying and get him in trouble and get him suspended. But she would also be like, you know, she would be a perfect target. Little did he know this was a huge mistake. But one day, the Roblox kid went up to Ashley when they're leaving class, and he just like kind of looked at her, and he's like, hey, ugly, and she didn't respond, and she's like, and he's like, oh, I'm talking to you. Oh, it's just like something really stupid and lame, but like just like really just trying to come for her. And she kind of looked at him, and she kind of like smirked and said, you're going to regret that, buddy. And he kind of like was like taken aback a little bit because like people had either been like, like, like go away or like they'd start crying or they'd just be like, bro, they never like smirked and said, you're going to regret that. He didn't think much of it after that, at least for a while. But let me just say that, like, that was the beginning of his downfall. He should not have messed with Ashley, bro. So coincidentally, wink, wink, nod, nod, right? The Roblox kid starts talking about his, like, his new girlfriend, right, that he meets on Roblox. And he's talking about how, like, 
oh man, I met someone who's perfect for me. Like you guys suck. You're all single. L L plus ratio plus young boy better. Like saying that in real life, like something you would actually do, right? Like was this every single day was telling everyone he possibly could about the girlfriend he met on Roblox and how he's so much better now than them because he had a, he's in a relationship and they're not. So one day, right, he comes into class and just like, he's just going off on someone. He's calling someone ugly. He's calling someone stupid, right? And then he's also bragging about not being single. And then Ashley comes up to him, right? Out of nowhere, after about three weeks since their last encounter. So Roblox Kid has not thought for a second about what, you know, about Ashley. And he's like, oh, oh, what's up, ugly? Because uh -huh, he remembered his joke. And she said, what's up? And then said something very specific. And his face just went super cold. And the subscriber doesn't remember exactly what she said, but apparently, right, what he had said, what she had said was word for word what his Roblox girlfriend said to him like the night before. And he's like, oh, what? And then before he could say anything, Ashley kind of turned to people, like turned to the class before the teacher was there because they got there a little bit earlier before the teacher some days, and this was one of those days. And she turns to everyone and she's like, you know this girlfriend that he been, he's been talking about for the last like week? Well, that was me. Get trolled. Get roasted. And the Roblox kid is like, that's not true. And she said, all right, open up Roblox. He boots it up. He's like, oh, 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 right. And then he boots it up. She opens up her like laptop or I don't know if you can have an app for Roblox. She, let's just say she opens up her laptop. I think that's what she did, right? This, this is what I'm told. And basically she just sends him a message and he receives it. He's like, <sighs> packs up his stuff. Just, just walks out of the class, walks out of the class. He's not back for the entire day. And apparently the next day he came back and he was as silent. And for the rest of that week, he was silent. And for the rest of that year, he wasn't silent. Like he spoke in class and tried to speak to people a little bit, tried to make friends. But basically he was done being a jerk to people because he got absolutely decimated. If you enjoyed today's story video, consider watching another one. Watching old story videos after watching this video really helps the channel. And if you want an easy place to find all the story videos I've made, top link in the description is a link to my story time playlist, which will have all the stories. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Today we have a story about an arrogant kid who got absolutely humbled incredibly quickly by his crush. Enjoy. Subscribers said in this story, uh, we're gonna call him Mason, right? So Mason was in class, and there's this kid in his class, we're just gonna call him Roblox Kid. And by the way, disclaimer, right? I, I know there's already people typing in the comment section right now, Connor, I play Roblox, does that mean I'm a Roblox Kid? Uh, I hate you, I'm gonna unsubscribe. Once again, similar to when I call people Minecraft kids, look, I love Minecraft, and if you love Minecraft, cool, me too. You're not a Minecraft kid. If you like Roblox, you're not a Roblox kid. If you want to know who a Roblox kid is, look up the videos that, like Poncho or Pegasus made. Those are Roblox kids. And this kid was a Roblox kid. Anyways, right, he wasn't just a Roblox kid. He was super arrogant. He was super full of himself. And he just loved telling the entire class about how many women he got, how he was just the king of women. And here's the thing, guys. Sit down. Sit down on my lap. Uh, actually, don't. That could be weird. Sit down on my metaphorical lap. Uh, or chair next to me, that's a lot less weird. Sit next to the metaphorical chair next to me, right? And learn a little lesson, right? If someone keeps bragging about their game, if someone can't stop talking about how many women they get, uh, but you've never seen them actually, you know, uh, even talk to someone, even talk to like another guy, not even a woman, like it has never even spoken to another human being before, right? If there's literally not a single moment of evidence besides what they say, uh, I'm going to give you a little spoiler. I'm going to cut to the chase for all of you guys. Yeah, they probably are just full of it, like 100% full of it. Anyways, right, so Mason is in class, right, one day, and he happens to sit down in the Roblox kid. He sits down next to Mason, and Mason is, like, friendly enough with the Roblox kid. Mason's a good kid. He's not going to be a jerk for no reason. So anyways, right, Mason's like, yo, what's up? Like, whatever, and the Roblox kid's like, hey... Just done bagging some tens, bagging some hotties. Complete cringe. Don't don't say that, okay? Don't unironically say that. Even ironically saying it is like kind of skirting the line of like complete cringe. I don't know. He's like, yeah, I just I was just like oh, typical day, man. Just got another ten. Like they can't stop hitting me up. By the way, these kids were in like seventh grade or whatever when this happened, which is pretty funny. Um, 
I'm not saying, I, I know I got a lot of people that are probably in seventh grade watching. I, I'm not like coming for you. I was in seventh grade, actually a wonderful period of my life. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't care if you're in seventh grade. I don't care if you're in 12th grade. I don't care if you're in college. I don't care if you're the CEO of JP Morgan Chase. I don't care if you're like a grandfather. Please do not say, I've been bagging hotties. I've been getting tens. Uh, just, just don't say that for me. If you're not going to say it for you, don't say it for me, dude. Anyways, right, so the Roblox kid is like completely mouthing off to Mason about how he's so many women are just flooding his DMs, man. He, he just can't hold them back. Like, the, 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 the female, the female species is just, they're just lustful to him. They're just always on top of him. They can't let him go. At this point, Mason's like, hey, bro, like, for real? Like, that, that definitely isn't real. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, nah. The Roblox kid looks Mason square in the eyes, and he, like, leans in a little bit, and he looks around the classroom, and he's like, Mason, look around you. Mason looks around him, sees like all of his classmates, and he's like, hey, Mason, these lustful, lustful women, Mason, they won't leave me alone. They want me. They want me, Mason. At this point, Mason's like, hey, yo, bro, like, stop, stop. Plus, there was also this girl, uh, we're just gonna call him Roblox Kids Crush. I don't really feel like giving her a name. Uh, I, I, I just want to juggle too many names. I mix them up, and, uh, you guys always remind me in the comment section. Uh, so, uh, I just don't feel like it. We got one name. We got Mason. We got Roblox Kid. We got Roblox Kids Crush. So, we're just gonna call her The Crush. Anyways, right, so the Roblox kid starts, you know, starts talking about this girl specifically, the crush. And, you know, uh, you know, Mason is actually, like, he's not friends with the Roblox kid necessarily. I would say he's acquaintances. He's not buddies. He's, like, he, he's working friends. Like, he's work friends. Or school friends, because they're not at work, right? But sometimes school friends implies that you're closer than you actually are. I feel like work friends adequately implies that, like, you just get along with each other because you're in the same place doing the same thing you don't really want to be doing. But anyways, right, he's kind of known about the Roblox kid's crush for a while, and, you know, he doesn't know her that well, but he definitely knows that, like, uh, you know, no offense to Roblox kid, but she is definitely out of his league. Uh, unfortunately, right, a Roblox kid starts to go on this tangent to, 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 to Mason, poor Mason, right? Roblox kid starts talking about how his crush, right, how we could totally pull her, dude. Like, uh, no questions, no questions asked, no problems, no issues at all, actually. 100% guaranteed, 1,000%, 100% guaranteed win for a Roblox kid. Like, I'm not even kidding, dude. 100% win. And he keeps going off about how he can totally get his crush and how his crush, he actually starts, like, changing it. He doesn't just talk about how he, you know... You know, his crushy will totally love him, right? Will totally fall for him if he, like, says anything or even starts talking to her. Because, right, at this point, Roblox Kid had not even spoken to this woman, right? But he starts, he changes the conversation a little bit. You know what he starts doing, guys? You know what he starts saying? He starts talking about how she is actually secretly in love with him. Yeah, no, I'm not even, I wish I was joking, I wish I was kidding, I wish this wasn't real life, I wish the Illuminati had reprogrammed my mind to just interpret reality backwards, but no, no, this is real life. Uh, he actually started going off about how uh, the, his crush, someone who's completely out of his league, who he's never spoken to, etc., right, uh, is actually in love with him. At this point, right, Mason, Mason isn't, a, Mason isn't about to correct this kid, right? Mason's not about to correct this kid because... You know, he needs to be humbled, man. And uh, Mason kind of believes at this point that reality will catch up with him and will humble him. Mason doesn't need to have any blood on his hands. He doesn't need to do any of the dirty work. He doesn't need Roblox Kid plotting against him because he hurt his feelings. Reality will take all of that. We'll take care of all of that for him. Anyways, right, so uh, the Roblox Kid starts to explain, starts to explain to Mason about his master plan, about not the Technoblade master plan, not one that's actually going to work, right? But the master plan, the master plan to uh, get this girl to fall in love with him, which, like, why does he need a master plan when she's already in love with him? Uh, don't ask me, dude. Anyways, right, so what you need to know is in this class, they had a very, like, a, not a very large, but they had a, a project due the next day. 
In that project, they had to present in front of the entire class. And so basically, right, the Roblox kid, he explains to Mason, the subscriber who sent in the story, you can send in stories too to my Instagram in the description. He explained to Mason that he was going to basically ask his crush out via his class presentation. And Mason was like, dude, you know you're going to fail the presentation if you do that. He's like, yeah, totally worth it though. Like, I already have 100% in this class. Also a lie, but whatever. So the Roblox kid explains to Mason the details of what he plans to do. And I'm not going to explain to you the details because I just want to tell you what actually happens without spoiling it. But let me just say that, you know, Mason was sitting there and was like, no shot this kid actually does this. Like, that's insane. But he also thinks to himself, if this kid actually, the Roblox kid, if he actually does this, right? If he actually does this, this is, this is the instant humble. This is the instant karma. This is the thing that will bring him back to earth. This is what he needs, man. Just a little public humiliation is good for the soul. So Mason does something that maybe you guys might not be the biggest fan of. Maybe Mason wasn't the greatest guy on planet earth for doing this, but I honestly don't blame him and it does make it for a better story. Mason tells the Roblox kid, hey man, that's a great idea. That's a great, do it, dude. Like, I'm 100% behind you. Yeah, you could argue that, you know, maybe kind of like set him up for failure, but look, I think this kid was going to do it either way. I don't blame Mason. And it makes it a better story, so even better content. You love to see it. Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around, and it's the project. And Mason is like one of the first people to present. He goes up and he gives his presentation. And he feels like he does a pretty good job. So anyways, he goes back to his seat. And since he's sitting next to the Roblox kid, he's like, hey, dude, are you, are, are you actually like going through with it? And the Roblox kid's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and Mason's like, all right, dude, good luck. <laughs> kind of a little, little mean, but whatever, right? It's, it's funny. It's funnier. It's better if it's funny. And also Roblox kid, Loki needed to be humbled a little bit. So probably for the better anyways. Anyways, so like, you know, Mason's sitting there listening to his class, you know, go up there, give some presentations, whatever. And yeah, eventually the teacher calls up the Roblox kid and all of a sudden it's the moment of truth. So the Roblox kid goes up there, connects his computer to like the projector and uh, what the, uh, what Mason sees on screen, oh boy. Oh boy, that's all I can say. Today's phrase is Roblox. So if you made it this far into the video, I'd like you guys to comment Roblox in the comment section down below. I'm gonna try and heart as many comments as I can that say Roblox in them, or just say Roblox. That's actually easier if you just say Roblox so I don't have to read it. Make sure you guys aren't saying something evil or whatever, I don't really know. Uh, just know uh, I'll probably be unpacking or moving into a new dorm slash flying on a plane tomorrow. So I won't be able to get, and that's when this video is going up. So I won't be able to heart a ton of comments. I'm gonna do my best but don't take it personally if I don't get to yours. Also, today, today's your lucky day. Today's your lucky day, man. I, I don't know how to break it to you, but today is your lucky day. Because for every single person who leaves a like on today's video, they will actually receive their very own nothing in the mail. Two to three, two to three days shipping, by the way. So once you leave a like on this video, you will receive your nothing in two to three days. Amazon shipping it. So if you have any complaints, bring it up to them, not me. Leave a like, 5,000 likes, and I'll cry myself to sleep. With that being said, back to the story. Anyways, right, so Roblox Kid, he goes up to there, connects his computer, opens up his presentation, and you know what? For the sake of the story, I actually do need to give his crush a name. Let's call her Abby. Let's hope I remember that name. I do not have it written down right now. So he opens up his screen, and the first slide, it says, Hello, class. And he stands up. He's like, Hello, class. I have a very important announcement. And then he turns around, and he goes to his computer, and he clicks the next button. And on screen, it's a photo of Abby. The whole class is like, hey, yo, what the fuck? Vlogs kid goes up there and he's like, looks at the photo of Abby. He's like, Abby, this is for you. And everyone's like, hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's like, Abby, you're so beautiful. I think you're the prettiest girl in the entire world. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Will you? You. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sick. I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, Abby. You're so beautiful. And I'm so handsome. We're perfect together. And he goes to another slide, and it's like a photo of him. And it's like, under it, it says like 10 out of 10. At this point, Mason's like, dude, okay, um, I, 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 know, I, I know I said yes. I know I greenlit this, but I somehow feel responsible for this tragedy. Not, not for Roblox Kid, right? Mason didn't feel bad for Roblox Kid. He felt bad for everyone else in the room at that point. Which, like, honestly, honestly, everyone else has a right to blame Mason partly for this. Eventually, Roblox Kid, 
he clicks to the final slide. And he, he, all it says on the slide is, it's like, will you be my dot, dot, dot? And then he's like, Abby, will you be my? And then he clicks onto like another, okay, it wasn't final slide. Sorry, I lied. He clicks on the final slide and it says like girlfriend, but it's in this like really weird, like fire font, like something that'd be like, ha ha, so lit guys. Like something you'd say in like, I don't know, fourth grade or something with like one of like the, the emojis with like the sunglasses and something. It's like, it says girlfriend. He's like, girlfriend. And he's like, so Abby, uh, you want to go out with me? And look, Abby, here's the thing. Very nice girl. Uh, but she's, she also like, will definitely speak her mind. She doesn't have a lot of filter. She doesn't have much of a filter. That, that's okay, you know? Especially if something like this just happened to you. I think you kind of have the right to say literally whatever you want. So small but very important detail I forgot to say earlier. Um, Roblox kid kind of stank. Like, I don't know how else to say it, but he was a uh, unhygienic young man. His cleanliness was definitely a 0 out of 10, even though his confidence was an 11 out of 10. And uh, Abby kind of just ripped into him. Abby stands up in front of the whole class and goes, I will never ever go on a date with your stinky, unwashed little self. And Roblox Kid was like, Abby, and I'm just kidding. At this point, right, Mason is just like, yeah, I'm partially responsible for this, man. <laughs> like, this is partially on me. This is partially on me, dude. I feel kind of responsible. But no, the whole class is sitting there just like, mouths wide open, like, oh my god, what? Huh? At this point, right, Roblox Kid is stunned. He's just, he's a deer in the headlights right now. And, and then he turns to Abby, and he shuts his computer, and he's like, Emmy, you're actually very mid. You're ugly. Uh, L, L, L ratio. And then he just like runs out of the class. Yep. Yeah, and uh, kid failed um, the, the assignment, and uh, he had to go to the principals because the, you're not allowed to do stuff like that. Like, that's crazy. And uh, yeah, he, he got humbled pretty fast, to say the least. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now go click on another video. Like, there's some videos on screen. Click them. Why have you not clicked? From a kid who tries to use Robux in real life to a kid telling the teacher that Roblox was a country, these are the craziest Roblox kids ever. So in this first story, right, there is a Roblox kid who tells all of a sudden, right, tells all of his friends that he is taking them out to the mall for a treat. This adventure to the mall will be on him, and it's going to be a big surprise, and it's going to be really cool for all of them. So obviously the subscriber and all of his friends are pretty excited for this because, I don't know, I mean, the kid says, like, there's a big surprise at the mall for all of them. I mean, if I was a kid his age, I'd be pretty excited myself. But anyways, right, so sure enough, the subscriber and all of his friends are excited to see why the Roblox kid has invited them to the mall. And they all tell their parents that the Roblox kid has invited them to the mall, so their parents drive them to the mall and drop them off. They're about like 12 to 13, so they're at the age where their parents are kind of okay with them being away by themselves for a little bit, but definitely not for too long of a time. So anyways, right, uh, sure enough, the Roblox kid comes up to the subscriber and all of his friends and is like, hey guys, like... I want to let you guys know that I have been, I've been doing a lot of business, a lot of mogul moves. I'm quite a businessman myself, and I wanted to let you guys know that uh, you see that toy store over there, and they point to like, I don't know, like a, a Toys R Us before they went bankrupt or something like that, some kind of toy store, right? And all the kids are like, yeah. And the, and the, the Roblox kid is like, you guys can pick any toy in there, and I will pay for it. So first of all, right, the subscriber and all of his friends are immediately super excited. They're immediately super happy because, I mean, they're now able to get whatever toy that they want. This is a pretty good deal. This is pretty cool. But then immediately the subscriber afterwards kind of thinks to himself, this is really cool, but is this like too good to be true cool? Like this is great and all, but this just feels a little bit just a little bit too good to be true. But at the end of the day, if someone's offering you a free toy and you're a kid, what are you gonna do? Say no? So yeah, sure enough, the subscriber and all of his friends, they rush, they all rush into the, uh, you know, the toy store. They're going around, the subscriber finds something he likes, and they all make it to the front desk. 
So sure enough, they're all like walking up to the front of the uh, the toy store. They all find the Roblox kid, and the Roblox kid is looking so smug. He's looking so full of himself because you know he's the generous one today. He's the one who is buying all of them a gift because. Out of his generosity, he feels like it, he, it's time for him to give back, guys. It's time for him to give back. When in reality, he is, uh, you'll see. So sure enough, they all get to the register, and they start ringing it up. And the subscriber watches as, like, 15 kids ring up toys. And they're not ringing up, like, a pack of Pokemon cards, which is, like, $5, which is still $5 is a lot for a pack of cards. They're ringing up like legit 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 dollar toys. Like they they find the craziest toys that their parents would never buy them. And if the I, I don't know, man, if the Roblox kid says, "Hey man, I'm going to buy them." Then they're like, "Okay, dude. Then here we go." So sure enough, they all go to the front and they ring up all these toys. The total is like legitimately $1,500. I don't think there's ever been a case at this store that a single person has rung up this much money, this many items. So sure enough, like the guy behind the cash register is kind of looking at them very suspiciously. Because I don't know about you, but I would definitely be suspicious if a bunch of like 12 year olds came up to the front of a toy shop and rung up $1,500 dollars worth of items like i don't know about you but i would be at least a little bit suspicious so yeah sure enough right you know you know the the, the cash register the cash the kid the cash register the cashier is like okay um that's gonna be fifteen hundred dollars and he says it with kind of a confused look because it is fifteen hundred dollars and he looks at the kids and he's like okay so are your parents here to pay for it and all the kids, including the subscriber, they all turn over and they look at the kid, uh, the Roblox kid, who promised that, you know, he would be paying for all of this. And sure enough, the Roblox kid is like, no, 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 that will be no problem. I will be paying for this. And the cashier kind of looks at the Roblox kid, looking at him like, um, bro, are you really going to be paying like 1500 Are you sure? Are you positive that you will be paying $1,500 for these toys? Like, are you 100% certain that you will be paying $1,500? And the kid looks at him. He's like, yep, this will be me. And he goes in and he pulls out a iPad. And on the iPad, he brought his like backpack to the store. On his iPad, he has Roblox. And he opens up Roblox, and everyone is so confused right now because they're like, okay, this kid literally just told us that we can have whatever item we wanted, and when he goes to pay, instead of paying, he pulls out his Roblox game. Like, bro, this might, this might not be the time to be playing video games. This might be the time to, I don't know, pay for the thing you said you'd pay for. But sure enough, right, the Roblox kid... What he ends up doing is he pulls up his Roblox account and it says that he has 2,000 Robux. And he goes and shows the cashier and he's like, hey man, so I have 2,000 Robux. Well, th this should be more than enough to cover it. And everyone is looking, all the kids are looking at the, the Roblox kid and they're just assuming, oh, this is a joke, right? Like he doesn't actually expect the cashier to accept Robux as a legal tendency, ten, legal tendency, as legal tender. The, the, he doesn't actually expect the cashier to accept his Robux to pay for the $1,600 worth of toys, right? And that's when it all made sense to the subscriber. This kid didn't have $1,500. He had 1,500 Robux. And I think the kid must have assumed that there was a one-to-one -one conversion between this fake virtual currency that you can buy stuff on Roblox on and uh, in actual, like, in, like, the actual, like, U.S. dollar. So sure enough, the cashier looks at this kid and kind of just gives him a long look of, like, I know you don't know any better, but still, seriously? Like, seriously? So the cashier has to inform this kid that, no, he cannot pay with Robux. Sorry to break it to you. Robux is not legal tender, and he cannot pay with it. So the, you know, the kid starts to realize that he cannot pay with his Robux. So he has to turn around and tell everyone that, uh, hey guys, sorry to break it to you, but you gotta turn around and put all the stuff you just got back. Yeah, all that stuff you just got out, you gotta turn around and put it back. 
I'm sorry to say, it's almost like that episode of Scott's Tots from The Office. It's that one episode you watch once and you can never watch again. Yeah, so sure enough, uh, he had to tell every kid to walk back and put back the toys. And yeah, for the rest of the 20 minutes before the parents came and picked them up, it was mad silent because everyone was pretty mad at the kid. I think the subscriber wasn't that mad because he realized it was a genuine mistake, but everyone else was pretty mad at this kid, and it was pretty funny. But if you thought that this Roblox kid was crazy, you weren't ready for the next one. So this all started one day in class. So basically, for some reason, there was a discussion going on. And the discussion entailed, uh, I, I don't even know how this conversation came up. The subscriber doesn't remember how this conversation came up. But basically, the question of, is Roblox real or not? And basically, there is a kid in the class who we're going to call the Roblox kid, who is basically arguing with the teacher that Roblox was a country. So yeah, they were talking about countries, and they were going over countries in Europe. And the Roblox kid was convinced that Roblox, the game he played, was based on a real country in Europe. So anyways, they were going on the map and the teacher's like, hey guys, can it, does anyone want to come up to the board and like write down three countries that you know exist in Europe? So someone would come up and they would write, I don't know, France, Italy, Slovenia, I, I, I don't know, something like that. And that's when the Roblox kid went up and was like, uh, I don't know, Italy, Germany, Roblox. So everyone looked at the Roblox kid and kind of gave him a double take of like, are you sure you meant to write that, bro? Like, are you positive? When the kid wrote down that Roblox was one of his answers, because uh, I don't know if you guys know this. But uh, Roblox is not a country. It is, in fact, a name of a video game. But sure enough, the kid was very confident with his answer and kind of like walked back down like nothing happened. Half the class looked at the board confused. The other half kind of burst out a little bit into laughter. And the teacher must have had a son who played Roblox. He's like, hey, don't write down like funny jokes on the board. This is serious. Like write down three countries, like erase this and write down a third country if you can. And the Roblox kid legitimately looks at the teacher with this look of confusion, saying, I wrote down three countries. And the class laughs again, or at least the class, the part of the class that laughed before. And the teacher's like, that's not funny. Like, Roblox is a video game. It's not a country. Come on now. I have a son who plays it. Don't think you'd be able to pull this a fast one beyond me. And the kid legitimately looks at this guy and is like, I don't know what to say. I like I, Roblox is a country. Like I know it's a video game, but it's based off a real country in Europe. And this, and the teacher is just looking at this kid, and the subscriber is just trying to realize he's he. The subscriber first thought this kid was like pulling a, a prank on everyone by just how goofy this was. But apparently, this kid legitimately believed that Roblox was a real country in Europe. So sure enough, um, the teacher and the kid have this back and forth that legitimately lasts like five minutes of Roblox is not a country, bro. And then the kid's like, dude, Roblox is a country. And then the teacher's like, Roblox is not a country last time I checked. And once again, the, t the kid's like, no, Roblox is a country and it, that is final and that is a fact. And the teacher's like, no, it kind of goes back and forth like this for a while. And this is when the kid starts to get angry. And he starts yelling at the teacher, no, Roblox is a country. And at this point, the teacher's like, don't raise your voice at me. Look, you know what? How about this? If we go on the globe right now, because the teacher had a globe, like, you know, those like real life spinning globes or whatever. The teacher had a globe. So the teacher's like, you know what? All right, let's have a bet. If I go on here and I find that, you know, Roblox is actually on the globe, or if you can find Roblox is actually on the globe, then guess what? You get, to, you get recess for the rest of class. And the kid's like, okay. And then, like, what do you get? And the guy and the teacher's like, okay, if we look on this globe and we find that, uh, you know, Roblox is actually not a thing, not an actual country, then guess what? For the rest of class, you need to write up a paper about how you're sorry for wasting the classes and my time. And the kid is like, yeah, okay, get ready to lose, bud. This kid was so confident for some reason, and he goes up to the front of the class. And he goes up to the, to the globe, and he's looking at the globe, and he goes over to Europe, and he's like, I'm pretty sure it's next to France. And he looks next to France, and sure enough, Roblox, the country, does not exist. So he's like, actually... 
I was just kidding with you guys. Roblox is right next to Germany. He looks next to Germany. He's like, uh, I mean, Roblox is actually a Nordic country. And he goes up to like the Netherlands and I like those places. He's like, uh, actually, Roblox is a island off of, uh, in the UK. It's off of Wales. He looks over there and sure enough, Roblox is not an island off of Wales. He's like, um, I mean, uh, Roblox is actually in Asia. And he's like, teacher, do you, I, 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 I totally messed up. So the, the Roblox kid looks at his teacher and says, teacher, I totally messed up. And the teacher's looking at him with this kind of smug look of, yeah, okay, bro, I know Roblox is not a real country. And the kid's like, um, so basically Roblox is actually in Asia. I'm sorry. Can I amend my bet? And the teacher's like, sure. Amend your bet to say that Roblox is actually a real country in Asia. Go ahead. So the kid is frantically looking all around Asia, and he doesn't find, he's like, actually, Roblox is a real country in Africa. My fault. The teacher's like, look there as well. And eventually, the Roblox kid, he doesn't say it's a real country in Australia or a real country in Antarctica, Antarctica or something like that, or North America. Eventually, the Roblox kid realizes that he's been wrong the entire time. And the Roblox kid sees that there's like, you know, 10 minutes left of class. And he's like... Uh, I, I think this globe is outdated. And the teacher's like, nope, look at the date. And sure enough, the globe was bought like two years ago. So the Roblox kid is like starting to like be in a stage of denial. He's like, uh, no, you changed this globe last minute so that it wouldn't have Roblox the country. And uh, so the teacher's like, all right, well, we can use my computer and look up Roblox the country. We can look up global maps that are updated daily and that I don't control. And if Roblox isn't there, then I win. And at this point, I think the Roblox kid realized that Roblox was not actually a real country, but he was just super stubborn. So he said, um, you probably just hacked the internet. And the teacher is looking at him. He's like, really? I hacked the internet? And this kid was just looking at the teacher. And this teacher was just looking at the kid and they were just looking at each other and the kid literally bursts out crying and runs out of the class. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. So spoiled kids are extremely annoying. They're super entitled. And today, a spoiled kid just starts getting away with so much and just is so annoying that he actually makes the teacher who's been teaching for like 15 years quit their job. Yeah, this is a pretty crazy one, so buckle up, subscribe if you're new to the channel and enjoy story videos, and let's just jump right on into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the today's story, Luke. So anyways, in Luke's class, there was a kid who we're just gonna call the spoiled kid, and they had a pretty major assessment that was coming up. So the teacher decides to put Luke and all the other classmates, including the spoiled kid, into small groups to review. So basically, they've had an entire week to study for this test, it's like one of the major tests that will have a pretty big impact on the grade. So they're put into small groups to kind of just go over material, just kind of like go over stuff that they need to do. And so they're in the small groups and Luke happens to be put into a group with the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid almost immediately starts, I don't know if it's bragging or just, I, I don't know what this is. I think it's bragging, but I'm not sure. He starts telling everyone in a bragging tone that he is not studied at all. So all the kids, including Luke, look at him a little bit uh, confused and also a little bit concerned because this wasn't some easy class that you could kind of figure out. I think this was like biology or something. It's one of those classes where it is really memorization based and in maybe some, I don't know, other types of classes, you can kind of wing it. However, in memorization like heavy classes, it's a lot harder to wing, wing it because it's less about common sense and more about information recall, which you can't really wing information recall unless you're literally attached to the internet through like Elon Musk's Neuralink or whatever, right? So uh, yeah, the kids in Luke's group with the spoiled kid kind of looked at the spoiled kid with this look of concern, it, like genuinely just concerned about him because they're like, bro, how are you actually going to make it through this exam? Because like Luke and all the other kids in the class had actually been studying for this for a while. So I think this was actually an AP class. I think this was AP high school biology, which is known for being a very difficult class. I mean, different classes, different schools can teach it at different levels of difficulty, but it is overall a very difficult class. So Luke pipes up and says, bro, like you should probably start studying like for your own good and your own like success. You should really consider like 
studying, bro. Like, you really should consider studying. And the spoiled kid looks at them and says, no, not have I only not studied, but I don't plan to study at all. And guess what, guys? I'm going to get an A, and I guarantee it. So all of them look at the kid like he's completely delusional, which, I mean, he is a little bit. But also, he knows a thing that they don't know. His daddy's a big shot freaking lawyer, bro. Yeah, so basically the spoiled kid had a father who was a lawyer and was like one of the most successful lawyers in like their state. Like he was always like representing private, he was doing all these things, right? And he also ended up owning his own law firm. Like he was very powerful, very successful. And here's the thing, there are children of successful people and sometimes they turn out to be, you know, really great driven individuals who are humble and grounded and they just happen to have more resources at their disposal. So sometimes they use that just to, you know, to elevate themselves and to be able to do even more. However, other kids sometimes will let the kind of like the resources and power that, you know, their parents and family have go to their heads as if they were the ones who rightfully earned it, right? As if they didn't just luckily spawn into existence into the right family, dude. Yeah, so this sort of entitlement definitely followed around Luke. And unfortunately, Luke's parent, not Luke, sorry, the spoiled kid. And unfortunately, the spoiled kid's parents completely encouraged this type of behavior. They would, you know, whenever the spoiled kid would have a tantrum, they would basically back him up. So because of that, he was super inflated, like inflated ego, inflated confidence, inflated just like everything like that. So the spoiled kid was basically bragging about how the fact that he hasn't studied and he doesn't need to study. The thing is, though, Luke and everyone else in the group with the spoiled kid, they don't realize that the spoiled kid is going to pull the daddy is a lawyer card. They just think that this kid's going to freaking fail. So they keep trying to tell him, dude, like, this is really hard. Like, we've been studying for even more than a week. Like, we've been preparing for this even before we knew that we had a test. Because they were told about that they were going to have a test in a week, but it was kind of clear what the material was going to be on because or what the test was going to have on it because it was it followed this very sequential uh a very sequential order of everything right so a lot of them including luke had actually just been reviewing after every single class because not only this they wanted to do on well the ap test too and so it makes a lot of sense to review as you go along not even just for tests it'll make studying for the ap a lot easier have you guys ever taken an ap class in high school if you have let me know down below I took a few, but uh, anyways, right, so Luke is looking at this kid in this kind of, like, feeling of, like, oh, jeez, bro, bro's actually gloating about failing. Yeah, so little did he know that the spoiled kid had a trick up his sleeve. So anyways, after the spoiled kid brags about not studying and not planning on studying, but thinking that he was going to do super well, everyone in the group just assumed that, okay, we tried to warn this kid that this is a hard exam, he's not heeding our warning, so, like, at the end of the day, what can we actually do? Like, what can we actually do about it? The answer is probably nothing. So they decide that they're going to go ahead and continue on doing what they're supposed to be doing in the first place, which is studying for the big exam. So yeah, sure enough, they, they study for the rest of the period, and the spoiled kid just completely goes on his phone, not even paying attention. So in other stories, like uh, the schools have been stricter about going on your phone. However, this school, it's kind of less enforced. It like, there is a rule against blatantly going on your phone in class, or at least teachers are given the ability to enforce the rule really strictly. However, this teacher really did kind of abide by the, if you want to learn, you'll learn. If you want to like goof off or whatever, you can goof off. Especially since this is an AP test, it's like the teacher probably is thinking, if you don't want to study for the AP test that you're paying for and need for college, I mean, go for it. Like, if you want to do all the studying on your own or, like, not pay attention to my class, like, I'm not going to, like, force you to. So the spoiled kid was literally just on his phone the entire time while everyone else was preparing for the exam. So finally, the next day, Friday comes in, and it is the first exam. It's really difficult, or at least that's what Tom says. And even the people who put in a lot of effort, including himself, and studied, it would, they did pretty tough. Like, it was really hard. And by, like, the, the average was like a B minus, which a B minus is not a bad grade, but it's definitely, like, on, I'd say average grades for a lot of things are, like, Bs, high Bs, not really A's, not really C's, unless you're in, like, a college physics class or something. Hey, guys, the average is a 24%. Congratulations, you all did amazing. It's not like that. This is still high school. However, let me just say that the spoiled kid 
was the very lowest score. So basically, the teacher goes on the board before handing out the tests and says, all right, guys, so before I hand back the tests, I kind of just want to show you how this, like, scatters out. I know some teachers who do this, and it's always kind of interesting, but also a little, a little humiliating if you learn that you actually did the worst. So he says, all right, so he goes on the board, and he says, the high on this test was a 90, um, and the lowest score was a 12. And he said, and then he kind of like drew a kind of like, you know, one of those like bell curves, but he didn't do it like a standard distribution. He kind of like had the curve go way up around the 70 to 80 range. He said, okay, the majority of the test scores were in the 70 to 80 range. We had a few in the 50s, few in the 60s, majority in the 70s, and a few and a lot in the low 80s. And 190, which was like, not 190, but 190 percent, he says that was the highest. So the teacher then goes ahead and walks around handing out the tests. And as soon as the spoiled kid gets his test, he looks at it, but he doesn't have a look of, like, shock. Like, sometimes when spoiled kids are really arrogant and think that they'll just be a genius and be able to pass their test because of their sheer genius ability and epic mind because they were always told by their parents that they were geniuses. No, no, no. So, and not in this case. The spoiled kid, in this case, knew that he wasn't going to do well. So instead of having a shocked reaction, he looks at it and simply very calmly raises his hand. So the teacher, expecting like a little bit of commenting from the kid who got an 11%, right? Uh, but didn't really expect the commentary to come as a class question. The teacher kind of expected the spoiled kid to ask to meet with him after class or during a free period, and they'd go over the test together and how the spoiled kid can salvage his grade in this class. However, it looks like the spoiled kid wanted to get attention for this in front of the entire class. So, you know, the teacher's like, however, you know, whatever, right? So the teacher looks at him and says, yes, spoiled kid, what is it? So the spoiled kid looks at him and says, you know, we're going to call him Mr. Davenport. Some of you guys have been asking, why is every teacher name Mr. or Mrs. Davenport? I used the name once and then similar to me using Ben as the secondary character. I'm just not creative and I like routine. So I've just been using it every time. So we're going to call the teacher Mr. Davenport. And Mr. Davenport looks at the spoiled kid and is like, yes. And the student, the spoiled kid, stands up and looks at Mr. Davenport and says this in a forceful yet calm manner. This spoiled kid is a lot more, uh, I don't know, uh, it, I don't want to say competent, but a lot more confident and a lot more tactical when he like goes about being a spoiled brat. He looks at this teacher and says, if you do not change my grade to an A, I will sue you and the school. So the entire class was like not quiet, not, not, not like speaking super loud, you know, they weren't all talking, but what the, the, the light hum of kind of like a little bit of talking, a little bit of movement that was present before this kid said that cuts out immediately and it is dead empty silence. So everyone is just kind of like, oh damn, did this kid actually just say that bro? So yeah, um, the teacher has a very, Mr. Davenport has a very stunned look on his face because I don't know about you, but if I was a teacher and some kid very calmly stood up and said, hey, I, if you don't change my grade from a fail to an A, I'm gonna, uh, I don't know, sue you and the entire school. Yeah. So the teacher kind of like laughs a little bit because genuinely, how do you react in a situation like this? And is this like, uh, <laughs> come again? So the spoiled kid looks at him and says, yeah, I think you heard me the first time, but if you don't change my grade from an 11% to a 90%, basically from a fail to an A, I'm not only going to sue you, but I'm going to sue the entire school, and this school will come crumbling down. So at this point, this is when the subscriber, Luke, realized that the spoiled kid did have no intention of studying, but he didn't have any intention on doing well in the test, from like the first time around, the spoiled kid had no intention of studying because he was going to basically threaten his way to an A. Look, there's a lot of strategies of doing well in high school. I do not suggest this one, guys. I, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys could pull this off. I know I certainly couldn't, but I really don't suggest this. Yeah, so uh, sure enough, um, Luke and everyone else in the class, they're just like, oh my God, like what did this kid just say? And, you know, the teacher's looking at the spoiled kid. 
And the teacher, like the small, the kind of like the smirk, laugh, smile the teacher had on his face. That wasn't really because he thought it was funny, but just because he was completely taken off guard. Slowly dissipates as he realizes that the spoiled kid did just say what he thought he said, and also said it with completely seriously. So the teacher kind of makes his tone serious as well and says, you know, I will not take such threats in my class. Like, you're going to sit down and nothing's about your grade is going to change. Like, you didn't put in the work, you performed poorly, and because of that, you threatened to sue me. Like, that's insulting. Like, just sit down. I'm not hearing anything else from you for the rest of class. So the class is, like, super silent as this kid sits down, as this is pretty crazy. Like, this is like, whoa, because this teacher was pretty chill. I mean, I don't know. He was, uh, he wasn't like, I'm going to be your best friend, but you kind of don't want your teacher to be your best friend. You don't want them to be so ridiculously out of touch that they, like, I, I, I don't know, like, that they can't actually, like, relate or they make things really hard not realizing because they're just so out of touch. But you also don't want your teacher to be your best friend. Because, you know, they're, also, they're supposed to be, have a figure of authority over you. They're supposed to be your teacher, not your friend. However, while this guy was very chill, they've never seen him lash out at anyone. So it was pretty uncomfortable for them to see this, uh, even though it totally, even though everyone agreed this was a totally justified response. Because I don't know about you, but if I was a teacher and some kid threatened to sue me, I don't think I would just be like, oh, okay, that's fine. That's a totally normal thing that normal people say. I think I would recognize how insane of a thing that just that was said just was. Like, I think I would, I, I don't know. I think I'd be upset as well. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. You can let me know in the comments if you'd like. So here's the thing. Luke and everyone else in the class kind of assumed that the spoiled kid was pulling a massive bluff. They kind of assumed that the spoiled kid did not actually believe that he was going to be able to sue the school or that anything like that, or even try. So ever, some people, not Luke, but Luke learned a little bit later on, but other people knew that the spoiled kid came from a really powerful lawyer type family that owned a law firm, and his dad was specifically one of the top lawyers, whatever, in the state. But at the same time, they were just like, no way that his dad is actually going to go along with it. Like, even if the spoiled kid, right, the spoiled kid might say, I'm going to sue you. But at the end of the day, the spoiled kid is not going to sue the teacher nor the school. It would really be the parents who own the law firm or to sue them individually. Who even knows, right? And no one in the class thought that the parents would actually stoop that low. However, this is where they were wrong. Because, yeah, um, let's just say that the spoiled kid threatening to sue was not the most ridiculous thing. Sue. Sue is the secret word of the day. So if you made it this far into the video, comment Sue, which is S-U-E, uh, in down below in the comment section. I'd love to see how many people made it this far into the video. And while you're down in the comment section, uh, make sure to check the pinned comment. In the pinned comment is a link to my Spotify account in which I have all these story times uploaded on Spotify. So if you want to just listen to them as a podcast and help me out as well, go ahead and do that. And also in the pinned comment, final thing is there are two channels, one which I post meme kind of type videos, and the other one are story times, but they're specifically Reddit story time videos. If you can go ahead and subscribe to both those channels and perhaps watch those videos, it would help them out a lot as they're a lot smaller and your, wa your viewership goes a long, long way, especially when I'm st when whenever you're trying to start a new channel. So anyways, let's get back into it. So sure enough, um, basically what happens is the spoiled kid his family gets in contact with the school. Yeah, so basically his family gets in contact with the school and they, uh, I don't know exactly how they do it. I don't know exactly what they say. They don't, okay, there's no way that they actually say, hey, you're st like my son failed an exam because he's an idiot, but because we have money, we're gonna th and threaten to sue you unless you change it back. They basically said probably something along the lines of some kind of BS like, emotional damage, unfair, something, something, um, a bunch of other stuff, legal jargon, basically saying that we're going to drag you through the mud because we have the money and resources too, but we'll totally let this go if you uh, make things right with our son. Correct his emotional damage by forcing an A in the class, right? So the thing is, the teacher, this is literally the worst news ever, and it is delivered to the teacher in the worst way possible. So the next day in class, everyone's sitting there, spoiled kid is sitting there, you know, 
Spoiled Kid's pretty confident, even though at this point, I don't think he even knows that he is going to win this. Yeah, guys, the Spoiled Kid actually wins for once, which is terrible, I know. And so the teacher is in midway through teaching something about biology. Uh, I'm not sure what he's teaching. I, I took biology such a long time ago, man. I think it was a good class. But uh, anyways, one of the f- faculty slash staff members walk into the room. They say, hey, Mr. Davenport, um, can I just talk to you for a second? And Mr. Davenport's like, okay. Mr. Davenport walks outside, has a conversation. So the thing is, um, the, subscriber, the subscriber, Luke, doesn't 100% sure know that this was a conversation exactly when Mr. Davenport learned the truth, or not the truth, but what he had to do. But uh, either way, he eventually learns. However, when Mr. Davenport walks back into the classroom, he is very clearly a little bit shaken up and also quite a bit angry slash upset because either he was just told or, I don't know, maybe he was informed that he really had to. He thought it was a joke. That basically, he had to change the spoiled kid's grade from an 11% to a 100% from a fail to an A plus or an A, however you want to go about it, simply because the school genuinely just saw that, that this family would drag them through the mud and burn them through all their resources for a case that wouldn't even amount to anything. If the, and the only thing they had to do was basically change this kid's grade back. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. I'm not going to lie. And the teacher, Mr. Davenport, also thought it was pretty messed up. Yeah, so Mr. Davenport was just super weird for the rest of the day, probably because he learned that he needed to basically give someone a fake grade, something that they didn't earn after threatening, which is after doing something insane, basically awarding their worst behavior ever and also giving someone a grade that they didn't deserve, all because the school was scared of this family, right? So the next day in class, the spoiled kid walked in 15 minutes late. And Mr. Davenport, while being pretty chill, was not a fan of, like, not showing up on time. He didn't care if you were a minute late. I mean, maybe if you're, like, three minutes late every single day, no matter what, like, he'd be like, dude, just, like, leave, like, walk a little faster, maybe don't take the same. I I, I don't know. He would, like, figure it out, or if there's a genuine reason, I don't think he'd care. But this, he didn't like kids when they were late, right? He'd always give them a hard time. So the spoiled kid shows up 15 minutes late. And the reason why the spoiled kid showed up so late was not because, I don't know, he got out of class late or even because, like, a genuine reason. The reason was, was because the spoiled kid learned from his parents that the school had instructed Mr. Davenport to change his 11% to 100% and that he was going to have to go through with it. So at this point, the spoiled kid basically learns that he won and that Mr. Davenport will be forced to do whatever he says, practically. So the spoiled kid walks in 15 minutes late. Mr. Davenport turns to him and says, why are you 15 minutes late? The spoiled kid says, eh, I didn't feel like coming here on time. I came, I I come on my own schedule. Mr. Davenport's like, like, no, that'll be deducted from your grade. Like, you gotta be like showing up on time. You can't be like showing up 15 minutes late. The spoiled kid's like, I don't know, Mr. Davenport. I kind of think I can do whatever I want. So yeah, he sits down and Mr. Davenport is very, Very obviously, very angry and steaming. However, he also seems a little reserved, a little bit held back. And Luke has no idea that the school has told Mr. Davenport that he needs to change his grade. So at this point, Luke is like massively confused because he's like, wait a minute, this kid just blatantly disrespected Mr. Davenport. And he looks and sounds extremely angry, but he didn't pursue this. This makes literally no sense. So Mr. Davenport just starts teaching, tries to get through it, and that's when the spoiled kid basically just keeps taunting him. Spoiled kid raises his hand, because Mr. Davenport asks a question. The spoiled kid raises his hand and says, doesn't really matter for me, might matter for those guys. I don't know the answer, and I don't really care. And everyone in the class is just so confused by this answer. They turn around, and they look at him. They're just like, what? And then after turning around and looking at the spoiled kid, they immediately turn to Mr. Davenport because they're like, oh my God, Mr. Davenport's going to chew him out again. Like some of them are rooting on for Mr. Davenport to just rip him a new one because they're like, this kid is literally the worst. He sucks. And I really like seeing a spoiled kid getting owned by their teacher, right? However, Mr. Davenport looked at him. and Mr. Davenport gave a long 
cold stare. But he didn't say anything. And, and Luke was so, so confused. Luke was going to learn the truth in a couple of minutes. Stick around as Mr. Davenport does kind of blow up on him in class. It's very entertaining. But anyways, Luke is just really confused at this point. He doesn't know what's going on. And he's like, what? Like, why is he putting up with this? So finally, the spoiled kid, after Mr. Davenport goes back to teaching again, the spoiled kid basically breaks the last straw. It's the last straw on the camel's, that broke the camel's back at this point. So the spoiled kid just starts playing a video on his computer. So kids weren't even really supposed to have their computers out, but you know, for some classes, you bring a computer in, and for other classes, the teacher would be like, hey, can you not have your computers out? And biology was one of the classes where the teacher asked very nicely, like, don't have your computer out, we don't have any need for it, and I know it's just gonna be a distraction, because let's be real, guys. If you have your computer out in class, if you're not playing Jump or the Dinosaur Jump game or Slither.io, or if you're not just like doing stuff on it, bro, what are you doing on that computer? I, I guarantee you, bro, I, have, I sometimes sit in the back and I see I have, I have a full perspective of everyone's computers. No one is doing what they're supposed to be doing, which in most cases is just paying attention. They're not paying attention, bro. If I'm a teacher, those computers are shut because I know for a fact no one's paying attention to me if their computers are open. That's kind of how it goes. But the spoiled kid not only takes out his computer, but he starts really loudly watching a movie. Like you hear the 21st Century Fox thing, like the da 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 like very loudly. It's very clearly a movie. So the whole class turns around again and sees the spoiled kid put his feet up on his desk, recline back, and literally opens up his backpack and pulls out a thing of popcorn. Yeah, the spoiled kid was planning his moves to be as disrespectful as possible. He literally popped popcorn in advance just so that he could be disrespectful to Mr. Davenport. Yeah, I'm not even kidding here. So at this point, Mr. Davenport stops what he's doing and he asks nicely, like, spoiled kid, could you please not play a movie in class? And once again, Luke and everyone else in the class is like, huh? Like, why is Mr. Davenport not going in? Like, he would go in on anyone else, and some of the kids were probably getting a little bit mad. Like, what is the special treatment of such a jerk of a kid, right? And the kid's like, nah, I don't think so. And he literally just continues to watch, and he pops more popcorn. And that's when Mr. Davenport just freezes. He doesn't say anything for literally 60 seconds. I think Ms. Davenport, Mr. Davenport was having just, like, was really thinking, and what I'm about to do, is it really worth it? And eventually, Mr. Davenport came to the conclusion, yes, what I'm about to say is worth it. So Mr. Davenport takes his, like, go, walks over to his desk, has all these papers on it, and literally swipes all the papers off angrily and forcefully. Papers go flying, and as he does it, he says, I'm done. And the whole class is like, oh my God. He's like, that's it. I quit. Mr. Davenport has been a teacher for over 10 years. And one thing that the kids don't know about Mr. Davenport is that he isn't like a lot of teachers. A lot of teachers, they need their jobs, um, or not they need their jobs, but they don't get paid a lot as teachers, right? Unfortunately, one of the most important professions gets paid somewhat near the least, especially when you compare it to how important it is, right? So the thing is, um, Mr. Davenport was not like most teachers. Mr. Davenport wasn't originally a teacher. He actually made a lot of money being like a stock guy before he was at in head fund and stuff like that. However, he made enough money and then wanted to pursue something that he felt was more meaningful and where it didn't really matter how much he got paid. And that happened to be, you know, that happened to be teaching. So Mr. Davenport was actually like a multi-millionaire, multi right? And he happened to work with the spoiled kid's dad. So he knows all about it, right? So Mr. Davenport, at this point, is really just teaching for fun. However, this, like, this recent thing that happened, which having to give a kid a false grade and letting him boss him around was a little bit too much. And Mr. Davenport decided that it wasn't worth it. So the whole class is completely silent because Mr. Davenport just like slammed all the papers off his desk and screamed that he quit, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, so uh, that's when Mr. Davenport decides to go in on the spoil kid. So the spoil kid kind of like, kind of straightens up his back, takes his feet off of his desk, and pauses the movie, because he's, Mr. Davenport has gotten his attention, to say the very least. 
So Mr. Davenport starts walking in on the spoiled kid. He's like, everyone, I want you to know something. This kid's family threatened to sue the school that if I, if to, like, threaten to school, sue the school unless I change his grade from a pitiful 11% to 100%. And guess what? One of the faculty informed me that I needed to do this. And so everyone's like, oh my God. So everyone starts freaking out. They're like, oh my God, right? And the spoiled kid has a little sense of like arrogance and smirk or whatever. And that's when the, you know, the teacher goes in, Mr. Davenport's like, spoiled kid, you're so confident. You're so full of yourself. It's like, do you really believe that you've done anything? And the spoiled kid is like, my family, dot, 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 whatever. But Mr. Davenport catches him off. He says, yeah, your family, not you. You've done nothing. You've achieved nothing. And everything in your life is not because of you. You've contributed nothing. You're a little leech who's bitten, digged his little fangs into the side of our society and sucked and sucked and sucked it dry. And the spoiled kid was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because the spoiled kid had never been spoken to like that before. And the spoiled kid's like, I don't think who you know you're messing with. And the teacher screams back at him because remember, this teacher used to be a super successful, like, hedge fund, millionaire, whatever, and he's kept his identity pretty low-key. However, he's also still kept up in the world. The teacher screams back at him, I don't know who you think you're messing with. Spoiled kid did not know this, right? So the teacher goes on to say, class, I'm sorry. I cannot do this anymore. As much as, you know, I love teaching, the school is corrupt if they'd let something like this happen. The school is corrupt, the system is corrupt, and from this day on, I quit. And the teacher begins to pack up his stuff. And the spoiled kid has a little bit of a smile on his face because the spoiled kid believes that he's won. And that's when the teacher says, oh, spoiled kid, I, I gotta let you know something. D just so you know, you didn't get away with this. You didn't get away with this. And the spoiled kid kind of speaks up like, spoiled kid's a little shaken up at this point because this is like a crazy turn of events, right? But the spoiled kid speaks up a little shakenly but a little bit more confidently than he would have been a couple, like a minute ago. Is like, how did I not win this? Like, I got my A and you quit. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, do you think I've been a teacher for my entire life? And the spoiled kid's like, um, yeah. And he's like, no, there's some things you don't know about me. I never had to be a teacher in the first place. In fact, for a, like, <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Might as well let it all go. I'm no longer a teacher after this point, so it doesn't matter. I, in fact, am a multi-millionaire. I used to live a completely different life and I left it all and I left my job behind to pursue teaching. I haven't needed to teach a single day, but I came in every single day to do so. And he looks at the spoiled kid and he's like, you know what also, you know what happened when I worked in the world of finance and business? I, I met a lot of people because we, we consulted with a lot of really big organizations. And some of these big organizations were schools, in fact, I've met with almost every board of a pension fund of every major college in the United States. And at this point, the spoiled kid's like, uh-oh. And the teacher's like, I just want to let you know something. I will individually reach out to them and let each and every one of the colleges know who you are, what you stand for, and what you've done. And I guarantee you, doesn't matter what SAT score your parents pay for. It doesn't matter what extracurriculars that you make up. It doesn't matter what other fake grades you get from bullying other teachers. You will not get into any of those schools. And for once in your life, you will have, you will get into a school. You will get something that you actually deserve, my friend. And with that, <laughs> the teacher, dead, the class is dead silent right now because this is like, the most mic droppiest mic drop of all freaking time. And so he walks back, the teacher walks back, closes up his suitcase, clicks it, walks out the door. The kids are literally silent for the last 10 minutes of class. How's it going everyone? Today we have a story time of probably one of the most spoiled kids on planet Earth. You guys probably know that kid who's pretty spoiled or entitled, but take that kid, imagine him, and make him twice as worse, and that is the spoiled kid we have today. So subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber James, who submitted this story. So anyways, 
James was on a class trip, and in this class trip, uh, they were going to a kind of like a museum type thing. It was something that they would do every single year, or at least the fourth grade would do every single year. So James and his classmates were pretty excited for this, as it was a pretty big deal. So yeah, the, anyways, they get onto the bus, and you were you didn't you already had like assigned seats just so that everyone would be organized or whatever. Because whenever you have like a really long like trek out or whatever, like it, it's going to be a lot of cases where the school just wants to be as organized as possible so that they, so that they don't you know lose anyone. And because of this, you not only had assigned seats, but you also had an assigned buddy that you had to spend the entire time with. And because they wanted everyone to be with their their buddies or whatever, just to keep people together. So Jack, the subscriber who submitted this, right? Uh, he was really hoping that you know because he was really chill with the majority of people in the class. However, there's this one kid who we're going to call the spoiled kid who is just known as being a really entitled jerk. And Jack was like, oh God, please don't put me with this kid. Whatever you do, put me with someone else and don't put me with this kid specifically. So yeah, Jack was waiting outside the bus as, as well with everyone else, waiting for the teachers to read out the names. And Jack is like, please don't be spoiled kid. Please don't be spoiled kid. Please don't be spoiled kid. And the teacher was like, all right, Sam and Ben, Aiden and Steve, whatever, Jack and, and it almost felt like there was an intentional pause. There probably wasn't, but I think it was just because Jack was so like in the mode of anticipation, really hoping that it wasn't the spoiled kid that, you know, it almost felt like there was a pause where there wasn't. And the teacher's like, and spoiled kid. And Jack is like, how, 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 how? Like, what are the odds that that's actually how it went? Like, genuinely, like, what are the odds that out of everyone possible, that is actually the freaking spoiled kid I get par like I get partnered with? Like, that is 100% my luck. Like, how is this even possible? There was like 100 kids in his class, and somehow he got partnered with the one kid that he didn't want to be partnered with. But I'm pretty sure that's like Murphy's Law, where it's like, the it, whenever, like, uh, yeah, something like that will always happen. And it's like, it's the one thing you don't expect to happen will always happen, so be prepared for it. But anyways, eventually they, uh, you know, Jack is told and everyone else is told to go find your buddy. So Jack finds the spoiled kid and, uh, you know, the spoiled kid's like, what's up? And Jack's like, yo. And so they go on the bus and they sit down. And immediately, once they get to their seats, the first problem of many, the first of many problems arises. Because the spoiled kid is like, I want window seat. And, like, the thing was, like, Jack was in front of him, so it was just easier for Jack to slide in. And it also didn't really matter. And Jack wouldn't have really cared if the spoiled kid was like, hey man, can I have the window seat? Like, that'd be totally fine, right? Who cares? But it's the way that the spoiled kid was like, give me the window seat now! Just so unnecessarily rude and aggressive, really for just a 20 minute bus ride for who has the window versus aisle seat. Like, it was so dumb. So anyways, Jack's like, whatever. So he steps aside and the spoiled kid like pushes him on his way to get to the seat. Like he literally pushes him, bro. So Jack is immediately already knows that this is about to be quite, um, quite something to say the least. Like Jack already knows that this is about to be uh, quite the adventure he's about to go on or uh, the experience I should say, because the spoiled kid is continuing to be a spoiled kid, right? He's continuing to do what spoiled kids always do. And so the kid is sitting there and he takes out his phone. And the one thing, a pretty strong rule was no one was allowed to have their phones no one was even allowed to really have their phones on them. They had to be zipped away in their backpacks. And you could like turn it on so you could hear if you were getting a phone call, cause like, I don't know, maybe your parents need to contact you. Maybe there's an emergency, but really what should happen is the parents contact the school that contacts the teacher that contacts you. Uh, and, but whatever, right? So the spoiled kid was on his phone playing some video game or something. And uh, you know, that's when he gets bored of the video game and Jack is like talking to some of the people, right? Some of the classmates. Because when you have the aisle seat on the bus, it's a lot easier. I don't know if you guys experienced this, but whenever I got the window seat, it was very difficult to talk to people because you'd either have to turn around, which is uncomfortable, and talk to the person behind you, or you talk to the person in front of you, but they would have to turn around and most of the time you don't want to do that. And uh, the people that are like across from you, you're kind of like blocked by the person sitting on the aisle. So when you sit on the aisle seat when you're taking a bus, it's just so much easier to talk to a lot of people. So remember, the spoiled kid demanded that he had the window seat. Like he demanded that he got the window seat. And so Jack was like, whatever. And he sat down in the aisle seat. And Jack was like having a good time talking with people. And the spoiled kid like punches him in the arm. Doesn't like full blown like smack him in the arm, but kind of punches him in the arm to get his attention, which 
just like hurt a little bit and seemed super unnecessary. Like, could you literally not tap me, bro? Like, were you not like physically capable of just tapping my arm instead? So sure enough, Jack, it like turns around, he's like, yes. And spoil kid's like, give me the aisle seat right now. Stop hogging all the attention. And Jack is like, bro, what? Like, what do you mean I'm hogging all the, because <laughs> Jack is so confused because he remembers how, in how like intense the spoil kid was acting and how like intent he was on getting the window seat that he was like super rude earlier and still left a bad taste in Jack's mouth. And now, 10 minutes later, when the spoiled kid gets bored of his video games that he wasn't even supposed to be playing, he now demands to have like the seat where he can talk to other people. So at this point, you know, Jack kind of just doesn't want to like switch seats. He's like, bro, it would be such a hassle to switch seats and I'm not trying to stand up. They don't want us to stand up on the bus. And the spoiled kid starts punching Jack in the arm. He's like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And, you know, he's like, stop, Jack's like, stop, stop. What are you doing right now? And the spoiled kid's like, I'm going to make your life a living hell unless you switch seats right now. So at this point, Jack is like, oh, okay, whatever, bro. Like, I really don't care. Like, fine, fine, dude, sure, whatever. So Jack stands up. And immediately hears, Jack, sit back down. So Jack sits back down, because it's one of the teachers in the front. Because you can't be standing up while the bus is moving, just in case it has to stop abruptly. You would go, like, you'd fall over, maybe you'd hurt yourself, just for liability's sake. So he sits back down, and the spoiled kid starts punching him in the arm. He's like, bro, why do you sit down? Like, I'm trying to sit in that seat. And Jack's like, dude, I was just told by the teachers that I need to sit down right now. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you're going to have to climb over me. So the spoiled kid is like, fine. So Jack starts sliding in towards the window and the spoiled kid starts climbing over Jack and the spoiled kid legitimately like falls. Like he's trying to climb over and he loses his balance and then just falls on top of Jack. And Jack's like, dude, get off of me. And the spoiled kid's like, you get off of me, bro. Which is like, did you really just say you get off of me, bro, when you're literally sprawled on top of Jack? Like you are on top of Jack right now. You are sprawled on top of this guy. How is he supposed to get off of you when you have him pinned down? So eventually the spoiled kid gets the aisle seat. And uh, here's the thing. I think the spoiled kid just imagined that anybody, literally anybody, if you sit in the aisle seat, you will have people to talk to. But the thing was, uh, most people didn't like the spoiled kid because... I don't know, uh, he's pretty clearly a big, massive jerk, right? And it feels pretty obvious right now. So the spoiled kid, when he actually got the aisle seat, people, like, weren't talking with him. So the spoiled kid starts to get mad and t turns over to Jack, because Jack is now just looking out the window. Jack is not talking with anyone because he's not in the aisle seat. He's looking out the window, and he hears, bump, 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 or he doesn't hear. He feels up, like, a punching against his arm. He's like... I swear to God, this kid is going to get KO'd from me if he doesn't stop it. So he turns around, he's like, what? And the spoiled kid's like, you tricked me into giving me you your, like, window seat. Like, I want it back now. And Jack looks at him and is like, dude, can you please just choose? It's literally, we have five minutes left in our drive. Like, can you not chill out for one freaking second, dude? And spoiled kid's like, you tricked me. Like, you were making it seem so fun in the aisle seat so that you could have my window seat. Like, I want it back. And Jack's like, dude, okay, if I give this back to you, we're not going to switch again. Like, I'm not going to switch with you again. If we switch, we're, we're never going to switch again, okay? And the spoiled kid's like, yeah, fine, whatever. So when Jack and the spoiled kid finally switch seats, Jack gets back to sitting, right? And he sits there. And remember, now the people that are sitting in the aisle, they see that Jack is sitting there. So they're like, oh, we like this guy. So they start talking to him again. And the spoiled kid starts to get super angry. And he taps Jack again. He's like, dude, why did you trick me again? And Jack turns around and is trying to keep his rage together. Because I don't know about you, but I would be pretty angry myself as well. But Jack is like, what do you mean now? And he's like, dude, like, you, you're, you, you tricked me again. Like, we got to switch. And Jack's like, no, I'm not going to switch. And so the spoiled kid's like, starts punching him. He's like, ah, ah, like, we got to switch now. And Jack literally just clocks him in the arm as hard as possible. And the spoiled kid's like, Ehh. and Jack's like, oh my God. So sure enough, the bus stops. And as the teacher gets up to take attendance, the teacher sees the spoiled kid just having a complete fit or whatever. So yeah, eventually the teacher comes over. 
um, Jack is like, is asked like what happened and the spoiled kid's like, Jack hit me in the arm. And the teacher's like, Jack. And then and so Jack was like, like he was beating me in the arm again and again and again. I just did it back to make him stop. And the teacher's like, well, obviously he wasn't doing it super hard to you and you played way too hard back. No rough housing. Apologize to the spoiled kid. And Jack is like, oh my God, I need to apologize to this kid. Dude, like, I don't think I can, I don't think I can stomach apologizing to this kid. I just hate him so much, bro. Like, I just hate this so much, bro. Like, I can't take this anymore, dude. And so, yeah, um, the spoiled kid, um, you know, Jack is like, sorry. The spoiled kid's like, it's okay. That's fine. I'll recover eventually. Maybe I'll have to amputate this arm, but I don't know. We'll see. Mm. And Jack is like, oh my God, I just want to beat this kid oh my god oh my god and the teacher's like all right well everyone get with your buddies and go off to the you know the museum or whatever so uh they they get up and jack notices the spoiled kid stops crying immediately like he doesn't kind of like you know sometimes a kid will cry and they'll, they'll mean it they'll actually be truly upset but they'll slowly like stop crying they'll cry less and less and less until they basically stop right this was not that the spoiled kid was putting on an act and jack realized it because he literally shut off his tears and any emotion the second they got up the second the teacher walked away he was a totally different kid yeah so uh tears is the secret word of the day so if you made it this far into the video comment tears down below uh, that'll be the secret word. I want to see how many people made it. And while you're in the comment section, check the pinned comment. There's a link to my Spotify page where you can listen to these stories on Spotify as podcasts. As well, there are two links to my two other channels that very soon I'll be posting daily on. So please subscribe to them. It will help me out. And if you're listening on Spotify, please rate five stars on the main page. And anyways, let's get back to it. So sure enough, the spoiled kid and Jack, they start walking into the museum. And I wasn't told exactly what type of museum this is. So let's just say that... I don't know, it's a history museum. That's a pretty, pretty common type of museum because museums are like historical or whatever. Some type of like historical museum, whatever. And this was a pretty popular museum. Like a lot of people would come to go see it. So when Jack and the spoiled kid were walking in, Jack hears the spoiled kid go, oh my God. <sighs> and Jack's like, what? And he turns around and the spoiled kid looks like he just saw a freaking ghost. So Jack is actually kind of curious. He's like, dude, like, what is it? He's like, look at all those people. What? Look at all the diseases they must have. And he like points at them. And Jack's like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, the lower classes, they're, they're everywhere. And Jack's like, wait, what? He's like, yes, the lower incomes, they're all around me. I might catch their disease and be like them. I can't have that happen. Oh. And Jack's like, dude, shut up. Like, what are you saying? He's like, don't say shut up to me. I'm worried for you too, Jack. Even though you're probably one of the poors anyways. But you might become more like them. <sighs> and Jack's like, dude, shut up. Oh my God, please. So the spoiled kid was like, Jack, I need you to tell me. You are around the pores all the time, and you are one as well. Will they eat me if they see me? <laughs> and Jack's like, dude, shut up. What are you even saying right now, bro? Huh? And he's like, the, the, the under, the pores, I think they want to eat me and take all my stuff. And Jack's like, dude, shut up. And he just like grabs the spoiled kid and drags it, man. The spoiled kid's like, no, 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 Jack, no, you're betraying me. No, and eventually they get in. I think the spoiled kid realized that the quote unquote pores are not going to eat him. And he's like, oh, I'm safe for now. They must think I'm one of them. Oh, gross. And Jack's like, dude, shut up. Oh my God. Yeah, so Jack kind of realized that being with the spoiled kid was going to suck, but, like, he didn't realize it was going to be this bad. Like, he knew it was going to be bad, but he's like, is he didn't expect it to be this bad. Like, this is a whole new level of terrible. Like, this is a whole new level of, oh my god, like, damn, bro. Like, it gets this bad? Yeah, so, anyways, they're walking around the museum or whatever, and the spoiled kid starts touching something, and... Uh, in the museum, you're not really allowed to touch stuff. At least in a lot of cases, there'll be signs being like, hey, can you please not touch the whatever exhibit? Like, you're just not supposed to. And a spoiled kid is just freaking full-on gripping this thing, right? He's just, like, feeling it or whatever. God, don't take this out of context. He's just like, <laughs> let's say it's a rock. Let's say it's a historical rock or something. He's just, like, feeling this historical rock or whatever 
grip in the historical rock. I'm going to shut up. Um, and anyway, so one of the uh, people who work at the museum comes over is like, hey, buddy, can you like, can you not touch it? And the spoiled kid is like, wait, man, I can't touch it. Like, I, I get that like the, the masses can't touch it. And he's like, but I, I, I'm VIP. And <laughs> the, the guy working at the museum is like, sorry, no one can touch it. Like, I can't really touch it either. Like, I'm not supposed to. I'm just supposed to tell people that they shouldn't be touching it, right? And spoiled kid's like, no, no, I don't think you understand. I'm actually VIP. And the guy's like, uh, uh, no, I don't think you understand. Like, first of all, there is no VIP here. He's like, no, no, you don't, you don't understand, bro. I'm, I'm VIP. I'm VIP. I'm a kid. I'm the best. And the guy's like, sorry, there's no VIP. Um, that's not a thing. And also, even if you were, you would not be allowed to touch the historical things. Like, you just, that's just not a thing. Like, there's no, we don't let anyone do that. It's like for the, it's kind of the protect the integrity of it. If too many people t- touch it, it'll kind of like rub down. It won't be as like nice as it was. And also, like, uh, if one person, like, touches it too hard and breaks it, like, we want to make sure that everyone can enjoy it, so please don't touch it, right? Yeah, so the spoiled kid doesn't, like, Ed, like most spoiled kids, he doesn't take no for an answer very well. So the spoiled kid is like, what, 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 what are you saying right now? You're saying, I, I can't, you're saying no? He says, you know what, well, then, mister, I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna take it. So the spoiled kid literally picks up the rock out of, like, the exhibit thing or, like, the museum thing and grabs onto it. Okay, so that's when the security guard's like, all right, we got to take this seriously. So basically, the security guard takes the thing out of his hand, puts it back, and says, where, like, your, like, parental figures or whatever. So Jack is like, okay. So Jack, like, calls over one of the teachers. The security guard explains that, you know, the spoiled kid can no longer be in the museum anymore. Like, he's caused too much of a ruckus. He needs to be removed and says, like, as long as he isn't in the parts of the museum where there's actual exhibits, it's fine. So, uh, yeah, the teachers are like, oh, geez, because they can't drive him back personally. So they're like, hey, can we just plop him in the gift store? And the, and the guy's like, yeah, that's fine. And so Jack is like, okay, well, that sucks for him. haha. <laughs> and Jack's about to walk away. And the teacher's like, Jack, where are you going? And Jack's like, wait, what? And the teacher's like, yeah, Jack, I mean, you're his buddy. I'm sorry to say, but you have to stick with him at all times. And Jack's like, no, dude, what? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Jack now has to stay with the spoiled kid in the gift store for, like, the next hour because the spoiled kid is just an idiot and can't keep his, him, his hands to himself. So Jack is walking to the store with the spoiled kid, and it's, like, dead silent for a second because Jack is, like, really upset. And the spoiled kid's, like, after, like, a little bit, tries to break the silence. He's like, dude, can you believe them, bro? Like... That's actually so crazy, dude. Like, I can't believe that they would, like, so unrightfully throw me out. Like, that's crazy, dude. Like, that's that's unheard of, bro. And, like, Jack just kind of looks at him. Just kind of gives him this look. Because he's like, of course the spoiled kid would refuse to take accountability for his actions. Of course the spoiled kid would believe that actually everyone else is in the wrong and he's in the right here. Because, oh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that he would be allowed to literally pick up the things that are, like, on display that no one is allowed to touch and they're only allowed to see. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense for him to be allowed to pick it up and mess with it and be totally fine. And Jack just kind of looks at him and gives him this look and then keeps going. This boy is like, bro, do you not agree? Like, do you not agree with me? Like, bro, what? And Jack looks at him and is like, dude, you're going to go in one side of the store and I'm going to go in the other side of the store. Just because I have to be in the same room with you doesn't mean I have to be next to you. Doesn't mean I have to deal with you any longer. He says, you go to that side of the gift store, I will be on the other side at all times. We're in the same place, but I don't want to deal with you anymore. So Jack basically storms off, which I totally understand. I feel like if I was in this position, I'd be pretty angry too. I might just like, I don't know, I might just suck it up because I'm not the most confrontational person ever. So I might just be like, or whatever, and like just deal with it. But I totally understand why Jack wants to kind of distance himself from the spoiled kid because, yeah, I can't, I can't really blame him. The spoiled kid is not being the, Christ right, the best right now, right? So here's the thing. I guess the spoiled kid, I mean, we all kind of know the spoiled kid's worldview is pretty messed up and it's really weird and it's like the spoiled kid's insane. But apparently he also believes that paying for stuff is for poor people, which, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to repeat myself. Paying for items is for poor people. So, yeah, I think the spoiled kid for some reason believed that he was like, it was, it would be totally big chillin' if he was to steal stuff from the store. That he could just pick stuff up, and since he was so VIP and, like, exclusive and, like, the best guy ever, 
the smartest, wealthiest, most handsome, whatever, that he would just be allowed to like just steal from the stuff from the store practically. Yeah, because basically Jack is trying to stay on the other side of the gift shop as the spoiled kid. But occasionally he'll look over to see where the spoiled kid is just to see like where he is so he can keep the most distance. And he watches as the spoiled kid picks up something and puts it in his pocket. Like, you know, when you see someone, I don't know if you've seen this, but like someone, if they want to like steal something from like a, I don't know, a thrift store or a convenience store or just like a store with a lot of like little things or whatever at the mall, they'll find something small and they'll normally just put it into their pocket, put it into their purse, whatever, right? And uh, yeah, so, so the spoiled kid is doing this, but he's not, do okay, so some people are kind of like, will be sneaky about it. They'll take one thing, they'll take the tag off, it won't get caught, whatever, right? I mean, still, that's not a thing you should do. The repercussions could be really bad, and it would it's not worth it, guys. Don't do that. Um, but the spoiled kid was literally just filling all of his pockets with all the toys and random stuff he could see. His pockets were literally bulging with merchandise and apparel. It was like the most, it was like top 10 dumbest criminals ever. He would be number one at this point. He basically was just filling his pockets to the brim. Like, they were probably, there were probably toys and merchandise flying out of his pockets, just falling out of his pockets, right? And, like, bro was not being nonchalant at all about it. Um, so, yeah. I, I guess maybe someone in the store would have assumed that he was just filling his pockets to come to the front and then pay for it, and he just didn't want to hold on to it all. But eventually, uh, like, 30 minutes later, the teachers come by and be like, all right, like, we're going, like, where, like, Jack, where is the spoiled kid? And uh, Jack's like, oh, um, I don't know. And he's like, I thought he was in the store. And so sure enough, they look around and they watch as the spoiled kid is walking out of the store, pockets full of stuff, and you hear beep, 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 beep. Yeah, he sets off the detector and uh, these two security guards walk over and they're like, son, do you have any unpaid merchandise? And the spoiled kid's like, uh-uh, I don't. And then like all this crap falls out of his pants. Yeah, so basically the spoiled kid starts to get taken, like is like taken away by these security guards. So the teacher runs over there and is like, stop, stop, stop. And they're like, is this your son? And they're like, no, this is, this is my student. I thought I'd just leave him in here because he was banned from somewhere else. Like, I'm sorry, like, what can I do to like bring him home? And they're like, well, we don't really care. Like, we were just gonna like hold him somewhere till we found his parents anyways. Um, they're like, all right, like, can you empty your pockets and the spoil kid? And they like, the teacher goes through and makes sure he empties his pockets correctly, but his pockets are emptied out or whatever. And that's when like the security guard's like, all right, well, he can't really come back here, at least on a school trip, on your supervision. Uh, let his mom know about this. Like, that's really what we're just going to do. Like, this kid's obviously a kid. Um, we're not going to, like, actually, like, I don't know, <laughs> enforce the full extent of the law on him. We just want to want to make sure this isn't a pattern that consists into his teen and ad or early adulthood when it can actually affect him. And so the teacher's like, yes, yes, of course. I'm so sorry. So they're walking out, and the teacher, angry, is like, Angrily is like yelling at the spoiled kid, like, what are you thinking? First, you try and like destroy something in the museum and then you try and rob the museum. The spoiled kid literally has a blank face. Like the spoiled kid legit doesn't care, which is pretty crazy. But then the teacher says one of the most insane things ever. And I don't think Jack has been more mad in his life. The teacher turns to Jack and is like, how could you let this happen? And Jack's like, what? Today, we have a story time of a spoiled kid who literally gets so angry that he doesn't get what he wants that he goes on an unhinged rampage and actually says that his dad could buy the subscriber. Yeah, that's a little sus, bro. So stand back, or not stand back, sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Brett. So anyways, Brett and the spoiled kid. There's also a kid in his class who we're just going to call the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid was a very standard, typical spoiled kid. He was the type of kid who literally got anything he ever wanted. If he wanted something, he would ask and he would receive. So while it's like a good thing to give your kids things that they want sometimes, this kid literally got everything and anything that he ever wanted. So he kind of had this bit of entitlement in which he believed that he was actually deserved everything ever and like that he actually did deserve to like receive everything. So when he didn't get something, that just didn't make sense to him. So here's the thing. There's a girl that both Brett and the spoiled kid were both very into. And uh, we're going to call her Caroline because that's kind of becoming the very standard girl name I've been using. So anyways, Brett had a thing for Caroline. The spoiled kid had a thing for Caroline. However, the spoiled kid was known as being a big jerk. And uh, Brett was actually kind of a, you know, he's a chill guy, 
was, uh, you know, very talkative, not very talkative, but like could hold a good conversation. And uh, the spoiled kid and Brett would basically duke it out. And uh, this is how it goes. So anyways, almost everyone knows about this little quote unquote rivalry they have. Even the girl, even Caroline knows. And she is actually trying to make up her mind. So, you know, at this point, Caroline's in a pretty good position because she's like, well, I got suitors. Like, I got a lot of guys fighting for me right now. And so anyways, she kind of is just like kind of sitting back and seeing what they do. It's pretty clearly that she's leaning towards the Brett over the spoiled kid because the spoiled kid is kind of a kind of a jerkwad. But let's just jump into their first interaction. So anyways, they're sitting down at lunch and uh, Caroline is sitting there with her friends. And basically what happens is, uh, you know, she gets up to go and get more food. So Brett is sitting with his friends and they're talking about like, oh man, like has been going with Caroline, right? And he's like, actually pretty good. We've been talking a little bit. I got her Snapchat or whatever. And they're like, oh, but like you've heard that like spoiled kids trying to go for her too. It kind of became like a thing around the school to talk about, oh my God, who's going to get Caroline? All that kind of stuff, right? Like, oh, it's going to be so crazy. Who's actually going to get it? And, uh, you know, so sure enough, you know, Brett is kind of, he's a little worried, but at the same time, he's not crazy worried because it is the spoiled kid at the end of the day. So, uh, but the thing is though, they watch or Brett and his friends are sitting at the table and they watch as the spoiled kid walks up to where Caroline is in line. So they start to realize that, okay, looks like he's up to something. So the spoiled kid walks up to Caroline and he walks up next to her close enough that she can see him and she can see whatever he's doing. So she wa- he walks up to Caroline and he goes, oops, and he takes out, like, his wallet and throws it on the ground. And intentionally, he wanted to make sure that the the dollar bills in his wallet would spill everywhere. So, like, literally, like, a hundred dollar bill floats out of his wallet. Remember, this is a spoiled kid. If he wanted money, he could get money. If he wanted something, he'd get something. He could literally get anything. So he kind of figures that, he kind of feels as if he's a little bit entitled to Caroline, which, guys, don't feel entitled to someone, bro. That's crazy. But he's trying to flex right now by having a hundred dollar bill spill out of his wallet. So Brett and his friends notice this, and Brett's like, does he really think that that's going to get her? But Brett in the back of his mind's like, dang, like, what if Caroline actually falls for this, bro? Like, what if she's allured by his, I don't even know what she'd be allured by, but what if she's allured by something, you know what I mean? And so Brett and his friends are like, dude, like, that's not going to work. So Caroline sees this, and she kind of looks like, I don't know, she's not, like, intrigued by this, bro. Like, I think she's, like, kind of of some character, right? So she sees this and she's like, oh, well, this is a really low brow move. Like he's just trying to be like, oh, I have money. So you should like me, bro. But in this spoiled kid is like, oh, my God, how did this fall out of my wall? Like, how did this fall out of my hands? I'm so clumsy. Ha ha ha. Like, it's so cringe and lame and weird or whatever. And Caroline notices this and is like, Ugh, like, <laughs> like, this kid is weird, bro. Like, he's really out here trying to flex like the hundred dollar bill that his parents got him. That's the thing, too. Like. It's a little, it's, I can understand flex, uh, okay, flexing is always a little obnoxious, but I can understand being like, hey, I'm financially secure, especially when you're later on dating, because that's definitely like something that's nice, like going into a relationship with someone financially secure, that's something maybe you don't need to worry about. But bro is literally in like eighth grade flexing a hundred dollar bill that his grandma probably gave him for his birthday. Like, bro, that's just simply not a flex. And so the spoiled kid picks up and is like, oh my God, I can't believe this hundred dollar bill fell out of my wallet. Like, oh my God, this is so crazy. <laughs> Looks directly at Caroline, like waves a hundred dollar bill around. Oh my God, it's going to fall in my hands again. And he like drops on the floor. Oops, my hundred dollar bill fell out of my hands once again. Yeah, so uh, Brett notices this and is like, dude's going way too hard. And he's like, oh my God, the hundred dollar bill, it's on the ground. And the spoiled kid goes down to pick it up. It's like, oh my God, it's so much money. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe it or not, guys, this is actually not an attractive thing to do. This is not going to woo Caroline over. Um, Spoiler alert. She's not going to be like, oh my God, his grandma gave him a hundred dollar bill. I love you now. Like, bro, that's just simply not how it works, dude. I don't know how else to put it. This is not how it's going to work. So yeah, sure enough, um, uh, Caroline just kind of watches this, kind of is like, Ugh, whatever, right? And the spoiled kid moves on. So the next day comes around, and uh, so Caroline is in the hallways, and she's uh, hanging out with her friends or whatever. And Brett sees this as a decent opportunity. As her friends seem to be walking away, and it's like Caroline is, like, getting her stuff about to go to another class. So Brett is like, all right, cool, like, I can, because he's already been talking to her. This isn't some cold approach stuff, right? He's already been talking to her. He's like, okay, cool. Like, I can go up to her. We can chat it out a little bit. Word, right? Whatever. 
so Brett goes up to her and he's like, hey, like, what's up, Caroline? And she looks at him and kind of gives him this like nice little smile because she knows what's up, guys. Like she knows what's good. She knows what's going on right now. So uh, yeah, she's like kind of gives him a little smile like, hey, like, what's up? Like, how's it going, man? Like, how's it going? And um, uh, yeah, so they start walking and, you know, Brett's kind of like, you know, chatting her up a little bit, asking how her day's been, asking how this class they have together is going for her, all this kind of good stuff, right? And that's when the spoiled kid sees this. And the spoiled kid is like, ah, hell nah, bro. Like, I'm not letting this happen. So the spoiled kid, he gets, so he has a water bottle on him, right? The spoiled kid has a water bottle and he grabs his water bottle and he's walking down the hallway. So um, uh, Caroline and Brett are walking down the hallway in one direction and the spoiled kid is walking down the hallway as well. And that's when the spoiled kid is like, oops. And he acts accidentally, doesn't actually do it accidentally, but he tries to make it look like he trips And when he trips with huge quotation marks, I'm doing air quotations in the air right now, actually, because there are huge air quotation marks around this. When he trips, right, he spills all this water all over Brett. And it's funny because, like, it's it's very obvious that he did it on purpose. Like, he falls to the ground, but as he's fall, after he falls, he literally dumps the rest of the water bottle on top of, uh, on top of Brett anyways. So it's like, why did he even pretend to fall, bro? It's so obvious. Yeah, so it was super obvious that the spoil kid was trying to sabotage this on purpose. And I don't know why the spoil kid really thought that just getting him, like, Brett wet is gonna, like, somehow mess up his charisma or something. Or I don't know how, why the spoil kid thought that that was gonna improve his chances. Because if anything, dude, it literally just made it more obvious that the spoil kid was, like, desperate at this point. And the spoil kid literally just made it look like he was trying to sabotage Brett, and it just failed. So Caroline, the thing is, she notices this. She notices that because she knows they have a little bit of a rivalry going on anyways over her, lol. But she knows that they have, like, a little bit of a rivalry going on. But also, right... She notices that, like, who's playing dirty here? The spoiled kid's playing dirty. You know what the spoiled kid has not done? Really tried to talk to her, bro. Like, all the spoiled kid has done is tried to, like, flex his, like, lifestyle or whatever, when in reality his lifestyle is literally just what his parents give him. So, yeah, he's been flexing his $100 bills that grandma gave him for his birthday while Brett has actually been putting in the hard work and trying to have decent, good conversations with her. So who do you think she's going to pick, bro? I don't know about you, but it's a pretty clear situation in my mind. Like, it's pretty clear which one she's going to pick. But anyways, I do digress because, uh, you know, Caroline is like, oh, Brett, like, all right, like, do you need me to, like, get a paper towels or something? And the spoiled kid starts to realize, oh, my God, this is actually backfiring in my face because he notices that, like, Caroline is like, oh, Brett, let me help you out, whatever, right? And Brett's like, or no, the, sorry. The spoiled kid's like, oh my god, Brett, you got water all over you. How embarrassing. And Brett's like, looks at him, he's like, wait, how is it embarrassing that you tripped and spilled water on me? And that's when the spoiled kid realized, wait a minute, if anyone's going to be embarrassed here, it's going to be me because it makes me look clumsy because it makes me look like I just tripped and spilled water all over this guy. Like, if anyone here is going to be embarrassed by this situation, it's actually going to be me. And that's when the spoiled kid's like, well, um, no, dude, it's actually super embarrassing that you got water on you. Like, it's actually embarrassing for you. I feel so embarrassed for your behalf, bro. Like, that's actually so crazy, dude. Like, I'd be so embarrassed if I were you right now. Like, uh, 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 shoot. And that's when the spoiled kid realizes that he kind of messed up doing this whole thing. And Brett's like, oh, man, don't worry. Like, it's okay if you're clumsy. Like, I don't really blame you for being super clumsy. And the spoiled kid's like, I'm not clumsy. You're clumsy for getting water all over you. And the spoiled kid, and Brett's like, dude. You tripped and spilled the water on me. And Spoiled Kid's like, I didn't trip, I poured the water on you. And Brett's like, oh, so then you just intentionally poured water on me. And he's like, no, I just tripped. And then Brett's like, so you're clumsy then? He's like, no, I'm neither, I'm just awesome. Caroline, you hear that? I'm awesome. Yeah, uh, stop stop being so clumsy and getting water on you, Brett. Ha, huh, so clumsy, dude, goodbye. The Spoiled Kid literally gets up and leaves, trying to make it look like he won that whole altercation where it's just... So freaking obvious that he did not win that conversation at all. If anything, it just shows how embarrassingly desperate he is at this point. Because he, he, I think this boil kid is starting to realize that he is not winning this. He is definitely not the one who is going to be coming out in front.
Also, by the way, if you made it this far into the video, comment shoe down below. Completely random word, but I try and make them as random as possible. I just like to see how many people made it this far into the video. So while you're down in the comment section commenting shoe, check out the pinned comment as there's a link to the Spotify in which all these stories are uploaded as podcasts. So make sure to go follow me on there and listen there. As well, there are two links in the description to my other two channels. I will be uploading daily on there from this day forward. Make sure to subscribe as it really does help out. Anyways, right... So Brett and the Spoil Kid are start. It's starting to become like people are like spreading the word that Brett is winning. Like it is becoming like a popular rumor that Brett is absolutely bodying the Spoil Kid in the quest. Uh, the quest for Caroline. That sounds so stupid. In the, like basically in this little competition they had, and the Spoil Kid is very tapped into what the press is. What the press is saying. I can't believe I just said what the press is saying. He's very tapped into what everyone else is saying, as it is kind of like one of his best indications. Um, I mean, Brett knows he's doing well because he knows for a fact that he's actually putting in the work and talking to Caroline, and he knows that the spoiled kid is literally just, like, flexing his grandma's $100 bills and also spilling water on him and looking like a fool. So the spoiled kid basically has one last hurrah. He has one last major kind of, like, attempt before he has a freaking mental breakdown and calls everyone poor and says that his dad can literally buy Brett, which is... Just a great thing to say, man. Wow, that is top notch. You sound like a great person if you say that your dad can literally purchase someone. Bro, what the freak? What? Yeah, but anyways. Um, so his last real attempt, the spoiled kid in his mind was like, I need to do something big. I need to do something bold if I'm going to get Caroline's heart, which actually you should probably just start talking to her. Like, that's the one thing that, like, he refused to do, bro. The one thing he refused to do was actually talk to this girl, which is pretty ridiculous, in my opinion. He would always be like, oh, well, me, I just need to flex my Bugatti or whatever. It's like, bro, how about you talk to her, bro? Like, first of all, if you're a kid, everyone knows that, like, the stuff that you have is probably because of your parents, and that's less impressive. Like, it's at least a little bit more impressive if you have, like, a I don't know, like, fancy watch or whatever, because at least seems like you made that money in whatever ways you made it, so there's at least, like, okay, well, maybe he went through some struggle or something to get that, but when you're a kid, bro, it's like, all right, cool, your parents are dishing out the bread to you, like, that's literally not impressive, dude, and also, like, you gotta talk to her, bro, but whatever, so the spoiled kid is like, yes, the thing I need to do is a big, extravagant whatever, like, I need to show my, my love and admiration uh, I don't need to talk to her, bro. I don't need to get to know her because she needs to actually, actually, she needs to get to know me, not the other way around. Uh, I don't need to get to know her. I know she's fine or whatever, right? She needs to know how extravagant and awesome that I am individually. So yeah, uh, anyways, the spoiled kid is about to do something absolutely insane. So let's jump ahead to lunch. So Brett is sitting with the boys and Caroline's sitting at her table with her girlfriends, and uh, Caroline is, like, looking over, giving Brett glances. They're kind of looking at each other. They're being a little flirty. Love is in the air. Life is good, man. Brett knows that he's about to... He knows that he's about to close in on a, on a W, bro. Brett knows he's about to close in on a, on, a, on a win. He knows that, like, he's been putting in the work, he's been putting in the effort, and that his hard work is about to pay off. Basically, the rumor going around is that Caroline has more or less made up her choice and that she wants Brett to ask her out in the next few days. So the spoiled kid, hearing this, thinks that he needs to do something extremely extravagant, which he's about to in the worst possible way. So basically, um, they're all sitting at lunch, and that's when the spoiled kid... Okay, so basically at lunch, there is a kind of like a, a podium with a microphone... And what will happen is, like, when lunch is about to end, a teacher will go up there and make some announcements. It's kind of like, because they get the whole school there in the lunchroom. It's just a really easy way to get everyone together and make some announcements. However, the spoiled kid has decided to sabotage this for his own, uh, his own plans, right? And uh, sabotage it, he does. So basically, what the spoiled kid does is he goes up to the podium, turns on the microphone, is like, Hello, hello. Everyone, can I please have your attention? Please, I need your attention right now. And like, first of all, kids are not allowed to go up there. So everyone is like, whoa, 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 what's going on right now? It's like, ah, I need everyone's attention immediately. Like, no question about it. Like, Susie, can you shut up, please? Like, I need your attention. Like, literally calls out some kid in the back. Like, oh, okay. So he's like, okay, guys, I need this message to be super clear. Caroline. And immediately when he says the name Caroline, like, Brett is like, oh, shoot, dude, this kid's about to embarrass himself. Like, at the end of the day, Brett is only benef benefiting from, like, the spoiled kid looking like an idiot. But at the same time, like, 
He felt kind of bad, bro. Like, he felt kind of bad. Brett has at least a little bit of a heart. And so the spoiled kid is on the mic being like, Caroline, Caroline, I want to let you know that I know how into me you are. Which, like, first of all, hey, bro, what are you doing? I love how he opens it with, like, I know how into me you are. Like, dude, what makes you believe that? He's probably saying that, just probably thinking, like, oh, if I tell her, like, she's a sheep. If I tell her something, she'll believe it. So he's like, I know how into me you are, and I just want to let you know that I think you're okay as well. Like, I guess you're fine. So for that reason, I will be giving you the opportunity to go on a date with me this Friday. You, I mean, I know you're going to say yes, but uh, feel free to say yes in front of everyone so they know that I'm the winner and Brett is the loser. Yeah. And it is dead freaking silence for like a good couple seconds. I know you're thinking, oh, it's dead silence for a couple seconds. These were the longest seconds ever. These were minute long seconds, or at least it felt like these were minute long seconds. Like this was insane. So yeah, uh, sure enough, it's just dead silence. And then everyone turns their head. Like every single person turns their head to look at Caroline. And Caroline, I guess she was like, I don't know. Like she wasn't really happy. Okay, look, dude, you can, and it's not okay. Like these, like these, these big gestures, I think it's just like important for me to like reiterate. It's not a really okay thing to do, bro. Because like you're really putting this, like this is embarrassing for the other person. It's totally chill if you want to ask someone out, but do so in a more respectful way. I mean, unless you know for a fact that they love the attention and that they want to say yes to you. Like, something like this is just, you're embarrassing someone. They don't consent to you embarrassing them, bro. Like, anyway, so she goes up to the podium, and the spoiled kid's probably like, yes, she's going to say that I won in front of everybody. So Caroline goes up to the podium, grabs the microphone, looks at the spoiled kid directly in the eyes, and says... Sorry, but no. The whole, like, crowd is like, like, oh my god, she just said no to spoil kid in front of everyone. This means that her and that are, Brett and are dating right now. And she puts the microphone back. And the spoil kid is, like, just kind of, like, sitting, he's just kind of, like, there, bro. He's literally just there. So the spoiled kid is very angry about this. He's like, oh my God. <sighs> and instead of blaming Caroline, which first of all, good, you shouldn't blame Caroline, right? The only person to blame here is really yourself in this situation. But the spoiled kid grabs the microphone and in front of everyone is like, Caroline, you're making a huge mistake. Brett is a little poor kid. I am the richest. And everyone's like, bro, what did you just say? Like, that is the weirdest sentence to ever come out. And he's like, Brad is so poor and I'm so rich that my father could literally buy him if he wanted to and it would be literally 0.001% of what he has. Like he could buy him a billion times and still be richer than Brett, bro. And everyone's like, bro, hurt. What do you, hey, hey, bro, what do you mean by buy him, bro? Like, uh, what do you mean by that? And so the spoiled kid's like, Caroline, you're making a mistake. And then he turns to Brad's like, Brett. How much, like, what did you do? Like, what did you tell her? Like, what lies? What spells? What witchcraft? I am obviously the better one. Literally, I am the best. I have all the, and the spoiled kid literally is just having a meltdown, like an ego explosion. He's talking about how he's better than Brett, how he's like more attractive, richer, nicer, more humble. Like the nicer and humble part is just pretty ironic for having a mental breakdown on stage about how epic you are. Like you can't be like, I'm the most, I'm the most sexiest, richest, hottest, and most humble individual on planet earth. And I need to let you know. So this spoiled kid is like, and I had enough of this. He literally takes the microphone and chucks it on the ground and it breaks into like a bunch of pieces. By this time, the staff have made it to the stage and like take this spoiled kid away. And they bring him to the principal's office and bro gets suspended for three days and has to like literally make a, okay, not a public apology, but he needs to write an apology letter to both Brett and Caroline. Bro got owned. Today we get a story time of a Gen Z kid who wants attention so badly that they literally fake being disabled and in a wheelchair. Eventually the Gen Z kid does slip up and gets exposed and karma is proven once again to actually be real. I know you guys will enjoy this story, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new and let's jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber submitted today's story, Ryan. So anyways, in Ryan's class, there's this one Gen Z kid who loved attention. The Gen Z kid would always like post stuff on TikTok being like, I had a bad day or whatever. And look, it's totally fine to like 
want attention. However, it's definitely both the quantity of times that you ask for it and the way that you go about it. Look, attention is necessary, especially for human beings. They need attention from their other, you know, other human beings, right? It's good for your health, whatever. However, I think we all know that one person who just goes way too far to get the attention and or they're just super annoying about it. The Gen Z kid was no, like, was no different. And the Gen Z kid in this case goes way too far because look, I find it annoying when people uh, try and get attention in annoying manners, as most people do. However, it's different from being annoying and pretending that you are literally physically disabled in a wheelchair just to get attention. There is a very clear difference and the Gen Z kid very obviously crossed the line. So the Gen Z kid was never in a wheelchair. They were never, they didn't even come into school with a boot. Like they never had anything like that. But one day Ryan was sitting in class and just thought it would be a normal day in class. He thought he'd start off the day, you know, normal day, whatever. And that's when the Gen Z kid comes in in a wheelchair, wheels into class. Obviously, this is a really big deal. I mean, you should treat everyone the same, but when someone that you've been going to school with for a very long time just suddenly walks it, like doesn't even walk in, wheels in in a wheelchair, bro, you're definitely gonna ask some questions because it's not just like someone's like, you know what, I feel like, I feel like being in a wheelchair today. I mean, the Gen Z kid actually was like that, but no one would actually with this, no one with a sound conscience would ever do that, right? So anyways, obviously the Gen Z kid gets a lot of attention including the teacher kind of stops class because the Gen Z kid was a little late, but the teacher's not going to be like, should have wheeled her quicker, bro. <laughs> like the teacher's going to be like, oh my God, like what happened? So the teacher and everyone in class, you know, they were just like, oh my God, like what happened? Is everything okay? And the teacher's like, I didn't get a note from your parents about this. Not even, not in an, like an accusatory way, because in the very beginning, no one suspected even for a second that the Gen Z kid was faking it. Even though the Gen Z kid was notorious and had a history of faking things for attention, or not even just trying to, not even like faking things, but just trying to get attention at all costs, nobody possibly thought that the Gen Z kid would fake being like physically crippled in a wheelchair. No one would ever believe that. And the teacher, when, when the teacher said, oh, your parents didn't even tell me about this, more of a kind of a statement of surprise than a statement of, I think you're faking this. Obviously, in retrospect, this was the first in a major red flag, but no one at the time, not even Ryan, ever thought anything about it. So the Gen Z kid basically goes on to say, make up this fabricated story. No one at the time realized it was fabricated, but the Gen Z kid basically went on to say something along the lines of, yeah, like, I was, you know, I, uh, you know, I went to the doctor, I wasn't feeling good, and it turns out, like, my legs may never work again. And the thing is, that is a very serious thing that happens to some people. It's very uncommon, but it is very serious and your life will never be the same. If you all of a sudden like cannot use your legs, then your life will never be the same, bro. I think that's pretty obvious. And uh, yeah, using someone else's uh, situation, a tragic situation that they have to go through the trials and tribulations of life, giving you the biggest curveball ever uh, to your advantage because you want attention is pretty sickening. But uh Anyways, and also, first of all, the Gen Z kid could have been like, oh, I broke my leg. I'm going to be in this for months. But the Gen Z kid makes up a story even more crazy. The Gen Z kid, like, literally says that they might be, like, disabled forever, bro. Because the thing is, if the Gen Z kid really just wanted attention, say that you break your leg, you'll have attention for at least a month or something, then you can start walking normally again and no one will ever bat an eye, right? However, you know, the Gen Z kid's like, no, I think I might not be able to, like, ever walk again. And while the Gen Z kid didn't give a lot of specific details about their condition, well, because the condition didn't exist, no one really questioned it. Because why would you go about questioning someone who literally wheels in with a wheelchair? I don't know about you, but probably the first thing that would come out of my mouth would be like, hey, dude, like, if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. Not... I don't believe it. I think you're faking your disa like your disorder. Like that is not something that you'll hear coming out of my mouth. And so everyone was very just like, oh my God, like I'll let me help you. A bunch of kids got up to like make way. Every kid basically said, you can take my seat, like whatever, like, oh, I'll move my desk out of the way. Don't even worry about it, blah, blah, blah. All this kind of stuff. Everyone was being as good as they possibly could be to the Gen Z kid, giving the Gen Z kid a copious amount of attention. Little did they know, they were all falling into the Gen Z kid's plot. The plan that was meticulous, well, not very meticulously, you know, planned out because as you'll see, the Gen Z kid, you know, got, got the karma that they deserved because they made a massive mistake and exposed themselves, but that will be happening, happening a little later on. So 
you know, stick around for a second. It's worth it. But anyways, yeah, for a little while, everyone is just like giving the Gen Z kid the utmost attention, being like, whatever you need, whatever you want, we got you. However, as the days and soon weeks went on, one thing was very clear. The Gen Z kid was definitely using it to their advantage. One thing I will say is that most of the classmates didn't really care about this because if someone is, you know, genuinely comes in, and, you know, with a life-changing disability, then you will accommodate it for them. However, some classmates, including Ryan, were starting to believe that it just felt a little bit strange that the Gen Z kid all of a sudden was asking for people to do their homework or, you know, to go do, man like, certain tasks that you didn't really need legs to do. Obviously, no one really questioned it at the time and just believed that, you know, the stress of completely changing someone's situation was enough to, you know, just, you know what, they are going through enough right now, let me lighten the burden. Very, you know, reasonable thing to believe. However, this is where things began to, like, people weren't suspicious, but they were, begun, they were beginning to become almost suspicious to the, a little bit, a little bit. And also, the big thing is no one outwardly wanted to admit that they were suspicious because it just seemed like a really, I don't know, not a great thing. I mean, your classmate is going through a very difficult situation, according to them. I mean, they literally roll in with a wheelchair all of a sudden. You're not going to, your first assumption is not going to be, oh, they're faking it. Your first assumption is going to be like, oh my God, like that's terrible. What can I do for you? Yeah, however, um, Ryan was with his friend one Friday night, like two weeks after the whole, you know, Gen Z kid rolls in in a wheelchair, and he's having, like, a sleepover, and it's, like, you know, late at night. I don't know if you guys ever had these, but these were my favorite parts of sleepovers as a child. Basically, the late-night conversations with the boys or girls or whatever, right? But spe specifically, from my experience, the late-night conversation with the boys, right? You've already played your video games. You've already gone out. You've already got done stuff. And you're basically just staying up later than you tell your parents you're actually staying up. And you're just, like, you know, around by a flashlight or whatever. And then you just have really deep and meaningful conversations. Or just, like, the most interesting conversations that last way, way into the night. So Ryan was having one of those conversations. And he's like... I have a thought that's, like, kind of, like, bad, but, like, I don't know how to go about it. Obviously, when someone says that, there's a lot of things that they could be saying. So Ryan's friend's like, oh, what do you mean by that? And Ryan's like, don't judge me by this, but, like, can you hear me out? So Ryan's friend will call him Ben. Is like, sure, whatever. Like, just tell me. It's, it's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll use the caveat of, like, I'm not going to, like, go crazy if you say something weird, right? And he's basically like, look, I know this might be bad of me to say, but I'm a little suspicious of the Gen Z kid. It just feels like, I look, they might actually, like, I, I'm not saying that they're not disabled, but I'm also, it just seems weird how they're going about it. Like, it seems as if, like, they're asking people to do their homework when that doesn't make sense that they're disabled. Like, I understand asking people to go get their books or to move their books from class to class, but it just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And also, the fact that the teacher never got a note from the parent, like, that just doesn't make sense to me either. Like, I, I'm not saying that they're faking it, and it's funny because Ben didn't have a shocked look on his face. Ben didn't have a disgusted look on his face. Ben kind of had a very blank look. A blank look of kind of like, keep going, and I'm going to agree with you. So by the time that Ryan was done telling Ben about his kind of, like, his deep personal thoughts that you would only tell someone at like the very late nights of the boys' sleepover, mid-deep conversation, right? kind of very exposing himself and where, you know, he kind of, part of him was afraid that Ben was going to be like, how dare you say these things? Like, our classmate is going through such a difficult time, whatever, right? But Ben is just kind of silent. And there's like a couple seconds of silence until Ben breaks the silence by telling Ryan, like, hey man, like, I've been kind of thinking the same thing, but there's no way I could possibly say anything. So then they're both kind of more free to speak. And they start going on about all the anomalies and all the inconsistencies with what's going on. So at this point, the Gen Z kid has not completely exposed themselves. The Gen Z kid has not done the, has, okay, and later on in the story, the Gen Z kid exposes themselves so bad and exposes themselves in front of every single person. And it's so clear and so obvious that it almost proves karma's true. So stick around for that. But up until this point, the Gen Z kid has been fairly good about their act. However, there are a few inconsistencies. The things that are becoming annoying is the fact that the Gen Z kid is asking for more and more for people to do, which look, it's understandable. If you come in with some disability that makes life harder for you, then it is kind of expected for your community to, to kind of step up, especially if you ask. 
For example, I can only imagine, you know, maybe carrying a backpack from class to class or a bunch of heavy books when you're in a wheelchair would be difficult. Um, so asking a classmate to help you out in that department is not unreasonable or ridiculous or anything like that. However, asking classmates to do homework or like, you know, people would bring in their own food and the Gen Z kid would like roll over to them, give them big puppy eyes and be like, man, it's been so hard ever since I've been in this wheelchair. Can I have your cookie? Like very obvious emotional manipulation, like very blatant stuff that seems to be almost using the fact that they're in a wheelchair to kind of get stuff out of them. And I don't know about you, but I feel like people who actually have that, you know, disabilities and stuff like that wouldn't use it like that. It's something that they actually have to live with. Obviously, the Gen Z kid doesn't understand the gravity of, you know, the situation that they're basically cosplaying as, right? Because they don't actually live it. So anyways, if you made it this far into the video, comment chair down below. We'll make that the secret word of the day. And while you're down in the comment section commenting chair, make sure to check out the pinned comment because in the pinned comment, there's a link to my Spotify account in which I upload these stories as podcasts. Feel free to listen to them on there as it also helps me out. And also the second link in the pinned comment is a link to my second channel, uh, Connor Stories, in which I upload, which I read stories not from you guys submitting it to me, but from Reddit. Please subscribe to that channel as it is newer, and you know it. Your views will go so much farther because it's such a small channel. Anyways, let's get back to it. So, Ryan and Ben both have similar suspicions, and so Ryan decides that he wants to do a little bit of investigative work. So anyways, uh, the students are picked up after school every day. Some kids walk home, but a lot of them are picked up. Ryan knows that, you know, the Gen Z kid doesn't, you know, Ryan doesn't know exactly where the Gen Z kid lives, right? However, Ryan also knows that the Gen Z kid doesn't walk home from school, or I guess would wheel back home from school at this point. So, you know, I mean, if you're in a wheelchair, you're definitely not going to wheel like 25 minutes unless you're like, that's your life and you're trying to do it for exercise. I don't know, right? I don't know. But Ryan knows that this kid doesn't walk home from school. So Ryan knows that they must be picked up. So Ryan, while not necessarily expecting anything, is just curious. So Ryan walks home from school. So he kind of has all the time in the world that, to get back. Obviously, if he waits an hour, his mom will be nervous and concerned and be like, where have you been, etc., whatever, right? However, right, Ryan decides to basically follow the Gen Z kid somewhere, right? And the Gen Z kid kind of like, you know, wheels out of class. And Ryan is like very sneakily kind of like following them while being kind of far away, while not being too far away, and watches as they, they don't go out the main exit. Because one thing you noticed was the Gen Z kid basically disappeared after school and it was very weird. I mean, Ryan thought that, oh, they must have gotten picked up early or maybe they just got picked up somewhere else or something like that. And never really thought about it, but he's like, you know, I don't know, there's just inconsistencies with their story, and I just want to watch, right? He wasn't sure what he was looking for, he just knew that he was looking for something, and something he did find. So anyways, sure enough, the Gen Z kid rolls, instead of going out the front door, goes out the back door, which is just very weird, right? Very weird. And uh, starts, like, in, in, in Ryan, very carefully, right? He has to be very careful following her because he doesn't want to get exposed, right? Or he doesn't want, he, he wants to catch her in, in the natural act if she's doing anything, right? So he watches and, and he follows behind her. And the Gen Z kid is like wheels out the back door and Ryan sneaks out the back door, wheels down like a one street, right? And then there's this weird place. There's this like old garage, a big garage that would have all these like, has like bicycles and old rusted out equipment. It almost seemed to be abandoned, but sometimes people just store stuff in there. And the Gen Z kid wheels into the garage. This is very, very strange behavior. So Ryan, while making sure that he's not gonna get exposed, still follows behind closely. That's when, the, well, that's when Ryan sees something completely shocking. I mean, it's not as if he didn't see this coming, but he also didn't see this specifically coming. The Gen Z kid, walks out of the barn. Listen to me again. The Gen Z kid walks out of the barn. The Gen Z kid does not wheel out of the barn. The Gen Z kid walks out of the barn. Yes. The Gen Z kid wheels into this barn, a garage type thing, and then walks out of it without a wheelchair. Ryan watches as the Gen Z kid, right, once again, like, walks out and then, like, kind of looks in both directions to make sure no one notices and kind of, like, runs down the street to where, you know, their mom is like idling in their car. 
I can't assume what, I, I don't actually know the details, and by I, I mean Ryan does not know the actual details, but Ryan would love to believe that the mom doesn't know any better. Ryan would love to believe that the mom is not implicit on, you know, their, you know, child's, uh, you know, games, right, to get attention using other people's suffering. What might have happened was that the child's like, I don't want to be picked up uh, in front of everyone. It gives me anxiety or something. Like, please pick me up here. Please, mom, please. It's like, doctor says you have to do, I don't know, maybe some kind of guilt trip or something like that. And the mom's like, okay, you know, when I was a teenager, I was kind of weird too, so I'm just not going to question it. So Ryan immediately calls up his friend Ben once the Gen Z kid drives away. And he's like, Ben. And Ben's like, what's up, dude? He's like, Ben, you're not going to believe what happened. And so Ryan explains everything, and Ben is dead silent the entire time. You know someone's really interested in every detail of a story when they don't say a single thing. Like, when I like a story, I might pipe in a little bit and be like, dang, bro, like, that's crazy. But when I'm really, really locked in, I don't say a word. And Ben was the same. And by the end of it, Ben was like, someone's got exposure, bro. And Ben was, ben was being serious. He was like, this is, like, unethical behavior, and someone's got to put an end to this. So Ben and Ryan meet up after school and they meet up at Ryan's house and they're just sitting in Ryan's room and they're just kind of like trying to contemplate like, okay, how do we go about this? How do we like, how can we do this? Because like, we can't just like go up to her in school and like push her out of the wheelchair. Cause like, I don't know, she might fake it and be like, oh my God. And then we'd actually be expelled, right? Uh, we need to figure out a way to catch her in the act. We can't question her. And that's when Ryan's like, I got it. Assuming that she, you know, does the same thing every single day, uh, I was able to secretly follow her before, I should be able to secretly follow her again. And Ben's like, all right, that's genius. Just make sure to record it this time. So sure enough, right, the next day comes around. And once again, you know, the Gen Z kid wheels out in the back hallway, right? So Ryan decides that he is going to record the entire thing. So he starts recording and follows her out. So Ryan does what he did the last day following the Gen Z kid as they wheel out in the back of the school, go out, like, down the street, go down a couple streets to the abandoned kind of, like, garage warehouse type area, wheel into it, and then walk out of it. But unlike last time, this time, he's recorded the whole thing. He makes sure that he's recording, he makes sure the audio's good, he makes sure that, you know, I mean, he's sneaking around while recording, so it's not gonna be the best video, but especially in the most damning moments, aka when they walk in, or they wheel in and walk out, He's making sure that he makes sure that that is very, very clear and that is very, very, pre like that is like the video is not shaky at this point. So afterwards, you know, the same thing happens again. They walk into the car and drive off. Ryan calls up his friend Ben and Ben's like, well, how did it go? And Ryan sends him the, the, the video. And after watching it, Ben's like, all right, wow, like this is actually like bulletproof evidence right here. So they don't know exactly how to go about doing this. Um, they think, okay, well, maybe we could send it to the teachers or whatever. Maybe, whatever, we could keep this really quiet. Maybe we could send it to the Gen Z kid and be like, we know that you're faking it. Like, you need to, like, stop doing this and give them the benefit, give them the courtesy to be like, oh, guys, I'm actually okay now. Thank you so much. Whatever. But no. Ryan and Ben decided that, you know what, the... the the Gen Z kid did not give any courtesy or any, they, the Gen Z kid was not polite. The Gen Z kid did not give courtesy to the people who actually suffer with this stuff. The Gen Z kid did not actually, you know, care or give like, you know, any credit, like, I, I don't know. They just felt like, you know what? No, like the Gen Z kid deserves to be torched for this basically. Not literally guys, come on now. But so they decide that what they're going to do is instead of going to the teachers of the Gen Z kid themselves, they are going to disseminate this video across social media and not like try and get a viral TikTok, but at least try and get it on everybody's private Snapchat story. Try and get it like pushed around and try and get it sent to every group chat in the frickin' grade. And they do so pretty easily. So they text up a bunch of guys and a bunch of girls that they know and be like, look, you know the Gen Z kid, here is proof that they're not actually like disabled and they're faking it the whole time. And sure enough, the video spreads like wildfire. And by the end of the night, I'd say 90% of the kids in school have seen the video and 98% know about the video if they have at least have they, about 98% at least know about the video. So by the next day, when the Gen Z kid wheels into school, everybody is just staring at them with this look of like, I know the truth. 
For some reason, I think the Gen Z kid just didn't know that the video was circulating. Or even if the Gen Z kid did learn about it, I guess they decided to stick to the lie and just wheel into school, assuming that, you know, no one would actually confront them if they were in a wheelchair. Yes, yeah, so to say the least, uh, people stopped doing what the Gen Z kid said. When the Gen Z kid was, like, trying to get attention, trying to get people to do stuff, people ignored them. And, uh, yeah, eventually the video actually made its way to the principal's office slash the faculty staff. And the faculty staff suspended the Gen Z kid for an entire week. I mean, it's totally understandable. And uh, after the entire week, the Gen Z kid had to walk to the front of class, or not the front of class, but the front of everyone, because they had they had week they had like bi monthly meetings or whatever where they'd all come together as an entire school. And the Gen Z kid had to walk on stage, yeah, not wheel on stage, walk on stage and give a public apology, and was also forced to meet with someone who actually lives like completely disabled from the waist down to learn about the true struggle. It was a very harsh punishment, but it definitely fits the crime. I was gonna run today, we have a story of one of the cringiest Gen Z kids of all time. Basically, this Gen Z kid takes an IQ test, believes that he's genuinely a genius, and then starts to berate everyone else. And then he does a whole host of some of the craziest things you have ever heard. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim you free nothing, and let's jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted today's story, James. Anyways, right, James is a freshman in high school, and in his class, there's a kid who we're gonna call the Gen Z kid. And when I say Gen Z kid, I don't mean someone literally in Gen Z. It's kind of just a term given to people that spend all of their life on TikTok, that, you know, you know, cancel people on Twitter, that just do a lot of dumb stuff like that. Everyone, it doesn't mean just because you're in a certain generation, just to be clear. Anyways, though, this story all starts one day when the Gen Z kid does one of those IQ tests you find online. So if you don't know, uh, you can actually get like a, a official IQ test. And an IQ test is only so good for certain things. It'll, pr it'll figure out pretty good how good you are at solving problems, but intelligence has a bajillion factors in it and you can't just take one test and really decide how smart you are just based off of that. And also, those online tests, a lot of them are BS and made up. And a lot of them are just trying to get you to click so that you'll watch the advertisements on their website. Anyways, though, so sure enough, one day in class, the Gen Z kid clicks on one of these, like, it's just, like, on TikTok and gets, like, one of those, like, TikTok ad whatever things for, like, how smart are you really, whatever, right? So the Gen Z kid clicks on the IQ test and proceeds to take it. The thing is, though, that uh, none of the other subscribers, that the subscriber James and all the other people in the Gen Z kids class was aware of was that the Gen Z kid literally just put in the answers randomly. It was really, it was, it, one, it was a pretty fake IQ test. It was like 10 questions, right? It was 10 questions long. So like an actual IQ test would probably have a lot more questions. The questions would be a lot more difficult. But even though this was only 10 questions long and the questions were probably just like, oh, is this the color red? And then it shows the color red. The Gen Z kids still completely randomly guessed these questions, which would be revealed later on to James, the subscriber and everyone else. But basically after spamming in these questions, hitting submit on the IQ test, it came back with like, 10 out of 10 questions answered correctly, which is actually statistically pretty impressive um, to get them all randomly correct. Maybe this website just told you everything was correct anyways, and labeled them with the score of intellectual genius, genius level IQ, or whatever you wanna say. So look, the Gen Z kid who believes everything that they see on TikTok anyways, imagine they see an IQ test calling them an actual genius. So one, do you think that the Gen Z kid believes that, okay, well, I took it an IQ test, right? And I put in the answers randomly and it was a sketchy website that I found on TikTok. Maybe, just maybe, I'm not actually a genius. Or two, do you believe that the Gen Z kid, you know, saw the site, it said genius, and believes I'm actually smarter than Einstein. I am actually a genius. I am the smartest man on planet Earth, and I will let everyone know and berate them because they are not as highly intelligent as I am, or I see myself to be. If you guys answered the first one, well then, you know, you're a good person, you think the best in everyone else, but if you guys answered the second one, you might be a bit more cynical, but you are correct. Sure enough, the Gen Z kid, right, uh, they, they see this, right? They see this, this result that they did so well on this IQ test. And they immediately light up, right? Because now 
they've always thought they're always a little narcissistic, right? You know, it's a lot of, a lot of TikTok, a lot of Gen Z just tend to be a little bit narcissistic. I mean, it's kind of the environment that we put ourselves in, but now it's like, it's all been justified in this kid's head. Like, oh my God, I actually am a genius. I actually am the smartest man on planet earth. I need to let everyone else know. So this is where the subscriber who we're calling James really starts to play a role in the story. So a little later in class, James, they're put into groups. The very beginning was like 10 minutes of lecture or whatever, and that's when the Gen Z kid put, um, uh, basically put their, uh, you know, did the IQ test, right? And then about 10 minutes after, their like, teacher's like, all right, we're going to put you in random groups. And James, the subscriber, was grouped up with the Gen Z kid. So basically, they go into a group. And, uh, you know, Jane's a subscriber. It's like a very basic project or whatever, but it was a math class. So they were like, all right, class, like, we just learned this new topic yesterday. I went over it today earlier. And now try and solve this problem in groups. So in the group, you know, the Gen Z kid, James, and two other kids sit down. And immediately, the Gen Z kid is like, hi, like, I just want to let you know that I should be leading this problem because I'm actually a genius. And, uh... So everyone kind of looks at him, and, like, James looks at him. Everyone kind of gives him this really weird look because, I don't know about you, but just going around calling yourself a genius is kind of a weird thing to do. So, yeah, the Gen Z kid is like, yeah, I don't want any of you simpletons ruining this problem for me. Which, like, bro, what do you mean ruining this problem for me? Like, if they get the wrong answer, it's not even a big deal. This isn't, like, graded. This is just putting... The teacher's just putting people into groups so that, you know, if people don't understand it as well, they might be able to lean on their classmates and maybe two classmates that almost understand it are able to put their brains together to come up with the right solution. Not that it's graded and that everyone else who was in a quote-unquote genius like the Gen Z kid believes that he is is going to suffer some sort of, like, I don't know, consequence because, like, they mess it up or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty strange. So, basically, right, um, uh, the, the kids in the group are like, okay, bro, like, whatever. James, the subscriber, also kind of didn't care because James is like, okay, well, it's not like I want to do this math problem. It's pretty early in the morning. I don't totally know what's going on. So, yeah, not actually a huge deal that, you know, the Gen Z kid is like, oh, I gotta... I gotta be like, I don't know, I, I, I gotta make sure that, uh, you know, I, I do the problem because you guys are gonna mess it up or whatever. Like, it's just genuinely not that big of a deal. So sure enough, you know, the Gen Z kid starts to, like, hack away the problem or, or whatever, right? And uh, completely messes it up because it's not like the Gen Z kid has ever been paying attention in class because they're preoccupied with their, uh, their studies. Their studies in TikTok usage, bro. And you know who the test, the, the one person in their study is? Themselves. So yeah, sure enough, uh, the Gen Z kid says, oh yeah, the answer is going to be 28. And uh, the funny thing too, like this was a type of math problem where there was like, the answer wasn't just purely a number. It was like uh, Y equals 48 plus 10 X or something like that. So when the Gen Z kid just says, oh, the answer is 28. Like I think someone in the group, it wasn't James, but it was someone else in the group was like, hey man, uh, the answer has to be Y equals MX, has to be in like Y equals MX plus B format. And the Gen Z kid's like, are you questioning my genius authority? Do you really think that a genius like me would mess up a problem like this? And, uh, well, yeah, I guess. Because you're wrong, bro. But anyways, yeah, so the kid in the group that wasn't the subscriber was like, okay. Like, I don't know, man. It's like, you don't really want to fight these people. You don't really want to, like, you know, yeah, they can be ignorant. They can be annoying. But also, because they're both ignorant and annoying, like, what's the point? genuinely, what's the point in fighting these people to try and convince them that they're wrong when they are so full of themselves and truly believe that they are always, no matter what, in the right? Yeah. So, uh, sure enough, eventually the teacher's like, okay, well, uh, guys, like, I've given you 10 minutes to do this problem. That should be ample enough time. If you didn't finish it, don't worry about it. You know, this wasn't graded or anything. Let me go over the solution on the board. So the Gen Z kid is sitting in their chair, super smug, super like, oh yes, I already know the answer because my genius intellect solved it in 0.1 milliseconds, when in reality, I think they just, you know, pulled a random answer out of their butt and assumed since they are a self-proclaimed genius, that it must be correct. So uh, yeah, the teacher goes on the board, solves the problem, and the answer is like y equals 2 plus 48x. I don't know, something like that. It is not in the form, it won, it's not the answer the Gen Z kid gave, gave, but it's not even in the right form, right? It's a completely different format. So the Gen Z kid raises their hand, and the teacher, you know, 
expecting questions as this is new material. It's like, hey, like, Gen Z kid, like, what's up? And the Gen Z kid is like, teacher, I believe you made a mistake. And, you know, everyone looks at him like, okay. Because, look, here's the thing. Teachers sometimes make mistakes. Actually, all the time they make mistakes when they're writing on the board. However, most of the time they're kind of like clerical errors. They're really small errors that don't really matter, but it's good to correct them just in case a kid gets confused. For example, in math class, and I take some pretty hard, you know, calc series, linear algebra, discrete math, stuff like that. I've, I've taken some pretty difficult math classes. The teachers are always almost right with the topics that they're teaching, but sometimes they'll like add 25 and like 14 wrong together. Like sometimes they'll just add two numbers wrong together on the board and someone will politely raise their hand point it out, and then the teacher's like, oh, yeah, my fault. Apparently, when you're, like, teaching or whatever, you can do those, like, small math mistakes that just happen a lot more often. And it's a good idea to point those out so that people that are, like, barely following don't put down, like, because they're going to write down what's written on the board verbatim and then probably read back and try and understand it. Making those small corrections can actually help out a lot. However, it is a totally different thing when a student raises their hand and basically accuses the teacher of being wrong with the base material. This can happen, and I've seen it happen before, but it's a lot more rare, and obviously in the Gen Z kid's case, uh, no. The teacher's right on this. So the teacher's like, oh, did I, like, add something wrong? Which is a fair response, because the teacher knows that they're doing it fundamentally correctly, but, you know, is open to the fact that they might have added, made addition, like, little little mistakes like that. They're very open to the fact that they might have made those mistakes. But the Gen Z kid is like, well, actually, teacher, the answer is 28. And the teacher looks at him like, 28 what? Because remember, this was, I think this was like solving a linear equation or something. So it's like, you need it to be in y equals mx plus b form, or I don't know, you could have a few more formats, but you can't just have like 28. That's not an answer that works at all in any situation. Yeah, so the Gen Z kid then goes on to explain that the teacher has done the entire problem wrong and that the answer is actually 28. The teacher fires back saying that, no, they did not do the entire answer wrong as the answer can't just be 28 by itself. It needs to be associated. First of all, it needs to be Y equals format and that also this was not a flat line, so it wasn't going to be Y equals 28 or something like that. The teacher says it has to have an X component because it's like, you know, it's a function. It's not just a, it's not, you're just solving for one thing. It's like, it's a function, right? Uh, so sure enough, the, uh, the, the kid, the Gen Z kid, um, since they believe that they are actually a genius, says, well, actually, I don't know that you should be fighting with me because I recently did an IQ test and it scored me as an actual genius. So the whole class kind of looks at the Gen Z kid. I think some of them thought that the, the Gen Z kid actually, like, did really take an IQ test and did really get, like, I don't know, 140, 120, I don't know, something really good. And uh, some of them were like, whoa, because remember, freshman high school, who even knows? Other kids were pretty skeptical. Um, some of them thought that the Gen Z kid was flat out lying. Others thought that they were wildly exaggerating and uh, something along those lines. So the teacher's like, well, okay, I don't know that much about IQ tests. I also don't really know, uh, you know, how much that has to do with anything because I can tell you that what you did was incorrect. That's not how you answer this. You might have the largest IQ in the world, but this is math and this is how it's done. And I'm sure I'm going to get some, like, PhD math student from Stanford in the comments going, well, actually, there are multiple dimensions, dude. Okay. For the sake of this video, no. <laughs> right? For the, for the sake of this video, what I say goes. Anyways, so the Gen Z kid uh, is like, well, you shouldn't fight with someone with such a high IQ, like Mr. Whatever. Like, you should really just bow down and accept what I say because, you know what, I'm probably right. And I think the teacher was just having a bad day because I think in most cases, this teacher and probably other teachers in most cases would just like chalk this up to a kid being a little jerk, being like a little twerp or whatever, and just kind of ignore it and move on be like, haha, funny, whatever, and just kind of ignore it. Maybe some teachers would like penalize the kid. But uh, this teacher decides to go full savage mode. Bro actually decides that, you know, he's like, all right, well, then uh, let's actually see. So the, the, the teacher's like, all right, so did he do an IQ test online? And the kid's like, uh, yeah. So the teacher, like, goes into Google, types up IQ test, and pulls up an IQ test. And the teacher's like, you know what? Um, we're going to solve this debate. Whoever gets a higher score is right, which is completely crazy. Like, I, I don't fully side with the teacher on this one either. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. I can't really get behind the teacher on this. I think it's pretty immature, but I think the teacher was just genuinely having a bad day. And also, the teacher was kind of risking something, since these IQ tests, a lot of them are kind of like problem-based, like puzzles or whatever, and 
there's a decent chance that the teacher is genuinely much better at mathematics, but just happens to score less on this IQ test. And then he really did put up like, oh, if you score higher than me, then you're actually correct. But the whole class is kind of like getting really interested because they would never expect their teacher to say something like this. So the Gen Z kid's like, fine, okay, let's do it. And uh, yeah, basically what happens next is the teacher and the Gen Z kid both do the IQ tests and then the results are shown live in front of the whole class. Completely ridiculous. But in the meantime, I'd like you to, one second, comment down below IQ test. In the comment section down below, that'll be the secret word of the day. And while you're in the comment section, make sure to check out the pinned comment as there is a link to my Spotify page in which, I, in which I upload these stories as podcasts on there, as well as a link to two other channels which I post on daily. Please subscribe to both of them to help me out. Anyways, let's get back to it. And of course, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing. Of course, man, you already know. So yeah, sure enough, the teacher pulls it up. And I think the Gen Z kid was probably quaking a little bit in their boots. Like they were probably a little bit nervous for this. This, but they were putting up a front. They were putting up this look of like, oh yeah, I totally know what's going on right now. Like, uh, I, I'm not even worried since I'm actually a genius, right? So sure enough, the teacher pulls up an IQ test. Probably just one that they got from online. And once again, I do need to point out that there are probably some errors in this method of, uh, you know, approaching this problem, right? There's definitely better ways to go about this. And I don't think looking online and looking up IQ test and then after doing so, just like, I don't know, I, I don't think that's the best way to go about it. Not the best method to approach this. However, I will also say that who cares? This is pretty funny. So the teacher pulls up an IQ test and uh, basically goes on the, sp the kid's laptop and uh, says to one of the students, hey, make sure he doesn't cheat, like watch him. Because the, I, the, I don't know, I think this, the Gen Z kid probably would have like typed up every question into Google or whatever and just needed someone to monitor. So the teacher goes behind their desk and uh, starts taking the test and instructs the Gen Z kid to take the test as well. There was like 30 questions, which is once again kind of ridiculous that the teacher decided to use class time to do their little, basically, uh, basically dunk it on this kid in front of everyone, which is kind of a waste of time, but a funny story nonetheless. So I'll continue with it. But sure enough, the Gen Z kids starts, you know, typing up their answers. So, uh, yeah, anyways, guess who the kid who is instructed to watch the Gen Z kid is? Yes, James, the subscriber. So James watches as the Gen Z kid opens up the IQ test, and it's time, so they're supposed to take about 20 minutes to do it, um, and goes through the questions and uh, clicks randomly. Once again, uh, the Gen Z kid finishes within three minutes which he, that Gen Z kid is like, done. And the teacher's like, okay, if you really don't want to use that time, go ahead. I think for a second, maybe a split mere millisecond, the teacher was a little bit concerned thinking, oh my God, wait, is this kid actually a genius? Like maybe I am wrong. However, uh, yeah, the kid was not a genius. The kid just put in random answers. And James kind of looks at his classmates with a look of like, what? to kind of signal that the Gen Z kid was uh, doing something a little strange, which he was. He was just putting in random answers, and, uh, well, I mean, he did get the, you know, I don't know, I guess he got what he wanted, so maybe it wasn't too strange. But, uh, yeah, so sure enough, eventually the teacher's done too. And the teacher's like, okay, uh, don't hit submit yet, um, like, give me your computer. And so the Gen Z kid hands over the computer to the teacher. The teacher, you know, puts both computers, like, on the screen or whatever, and uh, decide, hits, like, submit on both of them, and the teacher has a little smirk on their face, kind of indicating that the teacher is somewhat happy with the results of this IQ test, which uh, however you see, that's however you see it. Anyways, right, so sure enough, uh, the teacher continues to be like, all right, well, uh, as I said, I will screen share the results to everyone and we can finally come to a conclusion on who is correct, which once again, there's a lot of issues with the way that the teacher went about this, I'm not going to lie. And also, an IQ test will not show who is correct, as, you know, the Gen Z kid could have potentially randomly guessed perfectly for 30 out of 30 questions. That is very, 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 very statistically unlikely, um, and I think the teacher was kind of aware of that. But, uh, yeah, you could kind of tell that the teacher was kind of rubbing it in the Gen Z's face without even uh, showing the score yet, as the teacher was like, well, I'm glad we did this so you guys can really, for once and for all, know if you can trust me or not. Because at this point, the teacher knows the results of both the tests. So yeah, sure enough, you know, the uh, teacher shows the first test result. And the IQ test is the first result from when the teacher did the IQ test. And I think the teacher got like a above average score. 
teacher didn't score and is a genius or whatever, but it says, congratulations, we estimate, remember, the online tests are pretty BS, so take this with a grain of salt. But, uh, oh, we estimate your IQ is 115 or whatever. You are in the 80th percentile. I took that out of my butt. That might be completely wrong, but it's probably close to being correct. Anyways, and the teacher's like, okay, well, that's my result. Let's see what the result of the Gen Z kid is. So now the teacher screen shares the, the computer of the Gen Z kid and, like, reveals the results. The results say, you scored, like, a 60 IQ you are profoundly stupid or something like that. And uh, like you scored in the bottom 10% of people. We don't know how you're functioning in society with an IQ like that. Good luck make getting a job. Okay, I don't think it said all that, but that was basically what it's implying. So the Gen Z kid, I don't think actually deserved a score like that, but remember they randomly chose all 30 answers. So in the first time randomly choosing got them a genius score on their IQ test. But in the second time, it got them a, like, lowest possible score possible, because guess what? When there are, like, four to five question answers per question, and there's 30 questions, and you guess randomly on each question, the odds of you doing well are just so incredibly low. If you guys are stats majors and want to give me the exact answer in the comments, you can... I'm not doing that in my head. I barely remember. I took stats a while ago. It's been a second. Also, I think we did that in discrete math, but it's been a second. So, yeah, the Gen Z kids' reaction to this is just pure silence. Because the Gen Z kid, just, I mean, you can't come back from this, basically. Like, the Gen Z kids might be like, oh, you messed with the results. But then James, the subscriber, would be like, nope, uh, he did not mess with the results. Or the Gen Z kid could be like, oh, this, this way of doing it is stupid. And then, you know, they'd be asked, okay, well, then how did you determine that you were a genius? And the Gen Z kid would have to be like, uh, an online test, right? So the Gen Z kid was just silent, basically admitting defeat. And the teacher's like, well, then. We can proceed with class after because if this whole debacle has been solved and finished. Today we get the story time of the cringiest Gen Z kid ever who tries to go viral on TikTok by licking the most disgusting places around school. This kid does some of the grossest stuff ever and ends up getting so ill in the final period that he has that day that he has to go to the actual hospital. This is a pretty crazy story, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim you're free nothing, and let's jump into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story, Luke. So anyways, right, there was a kid in Luke's class who we're just going to call the Gen Z kid. And sometimes people get mad at me being like, Connor, like, oh, maybe he's not actually in Gen Z. Oh, you're in Gen Z too. Dude, I know that. I'm not calling him a Gen Z kid necessarily because he is in the generation. He is like from Gen Z. I'm calling him a Gen Z kid because of his obsession with TikTok, canceling people on Twitter. You already know how it is. This kid needed to go viral on TikTok. No, he didn't want to. He physically needed to. Bro acted like he got a doctor's prescription that he needed to go viral or he would actually pass away. So, uh, yeah, and he, the Gen Z kid decided that he was going to go viral, and the way that he was going to go viral was going to be he was going to do something stupid, he was going to record it and post it on TikTok. So anyways, right, uh, some of the boys were just hanging out. Uh, Luke, the subscriber, was chilling with them, and that's when the Gen Z kid comes up to them. He's like, guys, you don't want to miss this. And, you know, whenever someone comes up to you and says, you don't want to miss this, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely, I'm definitely coming out to see what's up. I'm definitely like, uh, I'm definitely trying to figure out what, what, what's good. You know, if I don't want to miss it, then, man, I don't want to miss it. And so obviously the guys are like, yo, what's up? And the Gen Z kid was basically said like, hey, I'm going to be like recording this TikTok and I'm going to go around and I, I'm going to lick, like, really gross stuff. And Luke's like, dude, what? Don't do that. And the Gen Z kid's like, dude, no. I'm going to be I'm gonna be famous on TikTok, bro. I'm going to be rich. Which, like, by the way, uh, being famous on TikTok does not correlate to being rich at all. You make, like, $1 per 100 billion views on there. So, yeah, good luck, bro. Yeah, so anyways, right, sure enough that, you know, everyone's like, all right, well, we do have to go see this. And Luke is, like, says to the Gen Z kid one more time, he's like, bro... I'm telling you, this is a bad idea because I don't know about you, but like going around looking random stuff in a gross middle school height, like a, a gross middle school or high school. I don't know if they were middle school or high school. It was either I, Luke didn't tell me specifically, but I'm going to guess it was either late high middle school, like eighth grade or something, or maybe like freshman in high school. This is definitely freshman type behavior, if you know what I mean. So yeah, just think about it for a second. This kid